There we go. Now we should be live. Hooray! There, there's a slight moment there where I messed something up, but I, I fixed it. It is, it is all good. Everything is fantastic. Yeah, fair enough. Except how miserable I feel. Uh, well, at least we're all together, and misery loves company. Yeah. yeah I guess. Oh, yeah, welcome, chat. Welcome, everybody. Late. No, he actually started on time. I like, feel like right people are going to say late even when I start early. They've been doing that on the gaming streams where um, I start I, I start the streams early. I just have music playing for a bit, and people still say late. Um, especially if it hits, like, the scheduled time. So, like, if I schedule it for, like, 4 o'clock, and I start the stream at, like, uh, 3.55, and the music goes on past 4 o'clock, they'll still say I'm late. Even though the stream is live, so I'm not late. There's no winning. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, Cree. You'll always be late in our hearts. Yep. Ten dollars from Irish John. Thank you. Early Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks for making your workdays more enjoyable. Oh well, thank you. Wee. What video are you guys covering today? Something something playing evil in games is boring uh why is it hard to be evil in video games is the question the title suggests but the thumbnail, the thumbnail says something entirely different and the thumbnail says scroll up uh evil playthroughs are boring yeah in the chat i haven't gotten through a lot of this video i got through six minutes of this video and i was like oh my i i told kree and peggy and i think this video's giving me an aneurysm Hmm. Um, it's it's really really bad. This is this is one of those peak examples of somebody that doesn't understand what evil actually is, and they think chaotic stupid is also evil. When it's like, no, it, it's abhorrent and it's amoral. But I, I think evil don't give evil less of a standard. Evil should be like a very specific fucking thing, right? It should be like this really horrible horrible thing. Yeah, Man, I'd, just... I'd say evil is, like, acting with intent, whereas, like, someone can do something stupid that will be terrible, but, like, the intent isn't to, like, they they don't attend it, you know, so mm. it's, it's, it's different. I, don't, I, I think of evil more as, like, the corrupting influence, the, the, the like, source of wickedness and vileness. Not going on a random shooting spree in GTA. It's like, yeah, that's that's not good. You're not a good person who's doing it. You're a bad person, but I don't know. That doesn't that it doesn't scream evil to me. Like Jonestown would be evil. Paul Pot would be evil. You know, stuff like that. That is the thing I would associate with, like as pure evil. The ATF is a good example of evil. Yeah. yeah, I actually agree with that. I would extend that to a certain thing, but we don't want to get too political. Yeah. Um, I do kind of want to make it quick today. I know we picked a 20-minute video, but I want to get this uh, ML script recorded, and I want to work on both that and the Doctor Who video uh, tonight, because I'm going on the night shift tomorrow, so I have all night to do stuff if I can stay awake. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, and Chad, he's gonna he's gonna make a claim here. He's going to, for an example of why uh, people don't do evil playthroughs in games. Because again, we're getting a totally different one, like thing of like why don't people do evil playthroughs in games? Uh, he will he will make a claim that he let's look at, and I quote because this quote is insane. To I mean, answer that if... question. We are going to talk about one of the biggest moral choices in gaming well, we history. Just... So look out for that. I'm not telling what it is, Cree. No, I know, but I mean... Yeah, I'm giving a fucking thing of what's going to come. Be on the lookout. Listen out for that. 
because he actually made the claim of one of the greatest in gaming history. Sorry, one of the biggest in gaming history. What about the second part of your Skyrim review? Please stop asking about Skyrim. I'll get to it when I can. There's other stuff that take priority, and all these videos take a lot of time to make. I'll get to Skyrim. I will. But asking about it constantly isn't going to make it come faster. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what have you been up to for the last two weeks, Cree? <sighs> Stuff, I guess. I have a Team Fortress 2 server now. It's called Goat Server. Go check it out. There's only um, the default maps on there right now. I do want to add custom maps. Feel free to suggest some good maps on the server. Uh, on the Discord. Will you? Anything else to share for the week? No. What about you, Pagan? Mm, no, nothing really. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we had the Game Awards, which was a thing. That was uh, painful as fuck. And even more when you we learned stuff that happened behind the scenes of just how... Like, everybody kind of knew the Game Awards was a shit show. And terrible and just all about Jeff Keighley's uh, ego. But seeing the uh, the Kojima, like, deep-throating that was going on on stage. Meanwhile, like, the developers for... When Larian won Game of the Year and they were told to wrap it up in less than 30 seconds. Jesus Christ. It's Game of the Year. Let them have their speech if they want to. But uh, that was everybody. Everybody was getting, like, the fucking music was coming on to send them off. It was just absolutely just awful. Except Kojima. He got to do it for as long as he wanted. Yep. I'm so glad that uh, everyone, given their winning award speeches, uh, got 30 seconds before telling or being told to wrap it up when, uh, what's his name, um... I completely forgot his name. The guy who plays Falcon. Oh, yeah, he was in the Twisted Metal one as well. I can't remember his name either. Yeah, he, he gets to be cringe for, like, five solid minutes. Yep. And it, his was really, really bad. Because they were trying to do the you're beautiful thing. No, you're beautiful. But they, did, yeah. they didn't want to do it naturally. Anthony Mackie, so. that's it, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't naturally earned or anything like that. Like there, were, there wasn't like that spontaneous moment in the crowd. And then because Anthony Mackie has so much charisma, he could respond to it. No, you could tell he was just shouting random things at the crowd while the crowd wasn't saying anything. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, oh, that's really bad. Yeah. And then there was that really cringe Muppet skit that that went on for way, way too long. Yep. Uh. Like, but that's get... what we go to the award shows for, not for the, you know, the actual awards. Nobody wants to hear that stupid shit. I don't yeah. get it, man. I don't fucking get it. We have an awards show to celebrate, well, supposedly celebrate the game industry. We all know it's a circle jerk, but regardless. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, yeah, let's waste time on cringe and barely give the developers any time to actually say anything when they win their awards. Oh, yep. Cool. Good job. 10 out of 10. And again, I I don't know why I had spaced it, because they, they did it last year, too. For whatever reason, I, I just reset to that thing of, oh, they're not going to give away awards during the pre-show. That would be stupid. And it's like, no, they did. And I was like, fuck, I forgot that's what they did last year, too. Oh. The Muppet thing went too long by the simple virtue of having ever existed. Yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, normally I'm, I like the Muppets, but good God, it's... When they're just used to do a really cringy skit, it's just so bad. It's like, it's like so much worse because they brought the Muppets out. They keep doing it, too. This isn't the first time they had the Muppets there. I think last year they yep. had Animal and... And Beaker. And Beaker. Didn't they have another one the year before? 
Um, I think they they had a um, trash one. Um, fuck Oscar. Name. Oscar. Yeah, they had Oscar there. I feel I'm like pretty Ses- sure they. I feel like Sesame Street Muppets are discount Muppets because they're not part of the actual Muppets crew. They're their own thing. Yeah. Fair. Kinda. Yeah. I think they had those. Um... Oh, I forget what they're called. What their names are. The two guys that sit up in like the oh, balcony Statler and like and shout Waldorf. insults. Or yeah, like I'm pretty that. sure they had them, yeah. Yeah, the Swedish chef was there as well, I remember that. But yeah, it was it was a disaster. Um there were games that didn't get nominated that should have. Um oh amusingly, I'm super glad that Spider Man two and uh, Starfield won nothing. <laughs> that yeah. was exactly what they deserved. We're talking about this on the Team Fortress 2 stream yesterday. Like, it is both funny and weird how it seems like Todd Howard was actually upset when Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. Because it's like, Mm. okay, if your game was in the running for Game of the Year, I could understand being upset by like, oh, we didn't win, that sucks, whatever. But you're not even in the running, so why even care who wins or not? Oh, wait, it's probably because it's a real RPG that won. Yes, it's a real, actual RPG that directly competed with their <coughs> player base. I use that as air quotes because Starfield is not an RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah. it's like there's no it, excuse it, for Bethesda now. Flareon can do that with all this yep. choice, all this depth, all this good storytelling. And then you get Starfield where half the main story is radiant fucking slop. It's like... And this- and the story quests that actually have choice in them actually don't have choice in them. It's all a lie. Yeah. It's just wild. But I, I was happy to see uh, Todd sad. I was genuinely happy because uh, Todd, Todd is just one of those people where I'm just like, you just, you are such a pushover and you are so nepotistic. You just got to go. I'm sorry. If Bethesda is going to survive, if we're going to get anything good, you've got to go. So that hopefully there'll be nothing that stops uh, Emil getting his just desserts and getting fired. Because I guarantee Todd's probably the thing that's keeping Emil there at working. Yeah. Because they are friends. Um... Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Um... After that rant, I'm not so sure. <laughs> the, the Cope tweets were, were amazing. The, the Cope tweets from Emil were, were a thing of beauty because it was every, like, weak, pathetic, logical fallacy and argument you could ever think of. I had fun tearing those apart in the script for the Emil video. Uh, I'm going to be recording the rest of that after the stream. I, um, I got, like, six minutes recorded before the stream. Um, it's probably going to be close to around an hour long. Yeah, that was the funniest thing. Um, so Good Old School Game says, Hey, Setch, guess what? Baldur's Gate 3 is finally on console. Yeah, when Sven went to Twitter to give his actual, like, a- acceptance speech instead, and he did a bunch of quote tweets, and he's like, oh, uh, uh, of 16, you know, he's doing one of those threads, and then he puts a, a 17 of 16. Oh, by the way, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is now out on Xbox today. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. We also got to see a return to form for the Game Awards, where the bought and paid awards returned. Yeah, with yeah. Alan Wake. Yeah, Alan I, Wake. How too. Alan Wake got some of those awards? And again, I don't like, I don't dislike Remedy as a company. Uh, Control is one of my favorite games of all fucking time, and that's their game they made right before Alan Wake Two. It, it's a really, really good game, but like art direction. Oh wow fucking hyper realism yeah that's a great art direction in comparison to hi-fi rush like good god or eliza p yeah or baldur's gate 3 would have deserved it over alan wake 2 for its art design yeah but again i i just think like hi-fi rush is one of those games that like the entire world moves reacts and is colored to the beat that should have absolutely won art direction like good god Also, we got a gifted membership from uh, uh, Duncan McCockiner. Thank you. It's much appreciated. You know what's funny? 
So my channel's now monetized. Um, I, it just came out of the blue. Like, oh. there wasn't anything to tell me. YouTube just kind of was like, hey, you can try to go for monetization now. It's like, what? Why? Even, and then I checked all the stuff, and I don't meet any of the requirements. They're like, yeah, no, totally sign up. So I did, and I got it. Nice. Which is baffling to me. But uh, Duncan then goes to to uh, give a gift a membership, and he gifted it to himself. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a gift membership. It's gonna go to a random person. Well, I guess it does truly mean random because it randomly picked Duncan to get it himself. Someone in chat asked, "How do you accept gifted memberships?" I never understood how that works. It's weird. You have to like enable uh, being able to get one somehow. I don't know how that works. When they first rolled out gifted memberships. Um, like the the something would pop up on the chat. It'd be like, "Hey, you have to uh, accept this thing if you want to get them." And yeah. I I saw that on like three or four streams, and then never again. Mm. So it's like, oh. So there's there's a way to do it. I don't know how, and they, as far as I know, they don't make it easy to fucking find out either. <laughs> From me to myself with love. Yeah. I, I I was, again, the Game Awards, they were really bad. Just as bad as they are usually. But at least uh, there were games that actually deserved to win the award in their categories, right? Yeah. And that that is, you know, again, so the, the lowest point is definitely The Last of Us 2, where Last of Us 2 didn't deserve anything but the accessibility one. Because Last of Us 2 was actually, like, revolutionary when it came to accessibility options. It was insane, the level of options you had. Like, that's entirely fair. Credit where it's due, that was absolutely crazy. Um, but it winning anything else was a, a travesty. And I, I don't think, uh, you know, again, the this year was really bad, but it doesn't reach that low bar. Yeah, I feel like they kind of learned a bit of a lesson from that, where they were like, okay, we can't go that hard. Like... We could do yeah. some bought and paid stuff, but not to the point where it's literally so blatantly obvious that everyone's going to be super pissed off and potentially get this thing shut down. Yeah, because the vast majority were really pissed off. And yeah. rightfully so, because Last of Us 2 did so poorly that its sales dropped off by 80% in its second fucking week. That's yeah. staggering. Uh, two dollars from Danger Dave. Thank you. What's in store today, Stag Gang? Love the content. A video about why being evil in games is boring. Yes. Twenty-two. From a month... channel called Strictly Mediocre, and that's what a name. Yeah, I don't know why you'd call yourself that, like ever. It's like I'm gonna make my YouTube channel about talking about things, and I want people to like me. I'm gonna make my channel name Useless Fuck. It's like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, self-deprecation humor can only go so far before it just sounds like fucking... Oh, you you legitimately just do suck. Okay, okay, I'll leave. It yeah. also leads into the problem <laughs> where, like, people can just immediately dunk on you if they don't like what you do. Whether it's, like, mm -hmm. valid or not, it'll be like, Oh, your name is strictly mediocre? That makes sense because your content is awful. Yeah, that, that's what I even said. I even said strictly mediocre. Well, that's a that's heights to which he aspires because this content is dog shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, charlatan wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-two month membership message from the Wayfarer. Thank you. I don't know uh, who looked more humiliated, Todd Howard or uh, Nikki Haley and our goon Chris Christie on the GOP debate. Again, not to, I don't want to delve into it too much, but uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is like the fucking roast master supreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been going hard, and God, I, I hate Chris Christie. He's such a little bitch. He is. But yeah, again, let's not go into it just because. Yeah. Like, I would love to, but save that for my channel. If yeah, you I'm just. My stream, we can talk about it, absolutely. 
yeah, I'm keeping it on the level of like the same shit we do with like Mitch McConnell and, and the Turtle Man. <laughs> <laughs> he he is a turtle. Yeah. Uh, I guess besides the the Game Awards, uh, we watched the definitive Christmas movie, uh, aka Die Hard, <laughs> which was a fantastic Christmas movie. Of course, you know it's the best. If your family has never seen Die Hard, make them watch Die Hard. Tell them it's all it's a it's a heartwarming Christmas tale about a family reuniting together. And they can't do anything about it because, uh, you know what? You told them the truth. You just left out all the terrorists and bombings and stuff. I just checked uh, the TF2 server. There's one person on there right now. Hello. Oh. Uh, yesterday, we watched All Quiet on the Western Front, the Netflix version. And that was awful. That was, that was genuinely terrible. Hmm. They they didn't follow. It was a terrible adaptation of the books, and it didn't get anything right about World War One except that it sucked. And like that's like the easiest bar to to pass is the bar that it sucks. But they they had like this weird collective guilt thing for the Germans. It's like for for fucking what? I'm sorry. There were no there were no good sides in World War One. It was it was a complete meat grinder shit show all the way around. Just oof. Um but yeah, other than that, uh been playing more Warhammer Online because it's Warhammer Online. It's where my character's equipment comes from. So it's where the hat, the gear, all that stuff that comes from it. Or Warhammer Fantasy technically in general, but yeah. Uh, what else? We did some uh, Ready or Not, which is a bit buggy at the moment, but, you know, it is what it is. I'll, I'll cut them some slack. I've been I've been in a pen and paper role-playing campaign that Sir Ben is running. That has been uh, generally a lot of fun. Like, uh, good good times were had. Especially with my little, uh, my little Juan-Ti pure-blood companion named Thotshu, who is a complete fucking psychopath. And dances around and hops around and fires off Eldritch Blasts in the ceiling while screaming, Witness me. Is it streamed? No, it's not streamed. It's just fun for us. I, I might ask Sir Ben if he wants to stream those at some point that could be interesting but that'll be up to him like that, that'll be totally totally his call because it's his it's his world that he's written up it's his campaign he's running so um yeah let's see uh has there been anything else like super special um i i guess brief back to uh, the Game Awards. Was there anything you guys saw that you looked uh, you were really excited about? Because I know there was a couple games I, I thought looked pretty interesting. Honestly, I, I reached a point fairly quickly where I just I, I was zoning out because I... Eh. Fair enough. I barely even remember most of the reveal trailers, to be honest. There was like... I think there was one... That had me interested. It was like some Dark Souls esque style game, uh, with like really crazy looking enemies in it that looked interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll probably consider looking into that. But besides that, not really. The only thing I'm really interested in is Stalker Two, and that barely got mentioned. Actually, I don't even know if that got mentioned. It didn't get mentioned at all. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Which, which is weird. It's like. God, that's like the biggest release coming up and no one is talking about it. The weird one was Elden Ring DLC. Nothing. Yeah, I was also really surprised that about that. Weird. I thought for sure we were going to get some sort of like announcement of like 2024, you know, like, you know, with this date, you know, and at least yeah. one small snippet of something. No, we didn't get we didn't even get that. We got nothing in terms of Elden Ring DLC. Yeah, which is really weird. Um. The one I really was was interested in was when uh, 
was when uh, Sean Murray of Hello Games came up on stage, and the tweet thread about it was funny <laughs> as hell. Yeah. It was like, okay, Sean, we've got this new game we're working on, all right? So you just need to get up there on stage. Don't overpromise. Don't overpromise this time, okay? Keep it, keep it, you know, contained. Pull it back a bit. Sean Murray on stage. We've made the Earth 2.0. Hello Games. Dot dot dot. And the best part was Sean Murray actually responded to that tweet and was like, "Oh fuck, I did it again." <laughs> But no, uh, so the game's called Light No Fire, and it's supposed to be, like, they wanted to make it a single planet, but the planet actually feels like a world, so it has the appropriate biomes where they should be and everything. And I'm like, that sounds really actually fucking cool. It's weird to say that that's scaling back from their ambitions of, you know, endless planets, but... Again, they're they're putting their efforts towards no. Let's make it so that it's a world that actually looks like it's a it's a real planet, like multiple diverse biomes and everything, multiple uh, places to go, and it, pure multiplayer from the start. Go go deep sea diving for like wreckage and stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah, this sounds actually pretty interesting. Uh, of course, a, a big thing that helped was the fact you can tame dragons and fly around. I was like, okay, yeah, that's uh, yeah, you know, that's right in my wheel. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, I'm still. Yeah, I'm, ho I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. It, you know, it at the worst, if it does suck, and I, God, I hope it doesn't. I hope they've they've fully like learned their lesson from that. At least we know Hello Games from their track record. They'll stick to it and they'll work on it. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was the name of the No Man's Sky game? Uh, Light No Fire. So what would be the other one? Uh, Extinguish All Ice would be the Internet Historian video. No, that's what I was going to do. I was going to add the WAN to the Soundboard, or I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a, a a fun two weeks, honestly. Yeah, I don't remember 1911s being in Warhammer Fantasy. To be fair, that I I gave the artist who made this carte blanche to be like I I like any weapon because I didn't if they couldn't get a flintlock that looked right. You know, I wasn't gonna beat them up about it. I was like, any weapon you feel like you can you can draw well. And they actually made a nineteen eleven that looks really good. Like you got a lot of the details in on it too. So you know what? Fuck it. Oh, this is a nineteen eleven. It works. We you almost... watch the Armor Guys plagiarism video? I have not. I have I have heard about it. I've heard the situation is dire, but Oh, uh H Palm's video? Yeah, yeah, where he uses internet historian of plagiarism, and I'm just like listening to it. I'm like, this is pretty fucking mild plagiarism. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd need to see the whole thing because of the clips that people are sharing. It's like I saw, it's like you know, it, it feels more like being accurate to what is being said. And it's like, how how many ways can you re say a, a direct yeah. quote sort of thing? There's, there's there there is a few things to to mention about that since I guess we're talking about that now. Um, yeah. A lot of people believe that he did that because I guess because internet historian isn't part of the group. He made like jokes about Dashcon and stuff from like way back. Um, no, that's what some people have been saying, that, like, H-Bomb was targeting him, especially since he lets Hassan off, who steals, like, a metric fuck-ton more content than what Internet Historian allegedly did. Um, yeah, and actually steals content, not, we're not talking plagiarism, we're talking full-on theft. Yeah. Um, part of what you were saying, Such, is that, like, some of what he said in the video is just describing, like, facts of the event where it's like oh yes the the titanic is a ship that sunk in 1912 it's like yeah i'm sorry but anyone talking about that i'm just using this as an example too it's not what he's actually talking about in the video 
Anyone talking yeah. about the sinking of the Titanic will have search of facts of the case. Oh yeah, these people are on the ship. These people died. These people survived. Um, the ship was made here. It set sail from here to here, and it collided with an iceberg at approximately this location in the ocean. It sank on this day in this year. It's like, I'm sorry, that's what factually happened. Using that information isn't stealing, and that's what a lot of people are fucking pointing out as evidence of internet historians stealing content. Um, yeah, and it was funny because the thing that they were directly showing on the screen was like bits and pieces from multiple paragraphs like jumped around and everything. It's like, um, but but when you read the thing that's actually quoted, it's like those are direct facts of the case. Yeah. Like, uh, how do you, how do you remix that? Well, see, so you're supposed to do the Netflix thing and uh, race and gender swap all the characters. <laughs> oh. That's actually an interesting. Uh, apparently, Hasbro is trying to dewokeify themselves. Oh. They've started like just they've started uh, firing all the people in uh, Wizards of the Coast that were responsible for these big changes that have caused a ton of backlash. Nice. Hopefully, uh, that continues and they manage to fix themselves up. Yeah, I I hope so as well. Honestly, I've. I, I'm always uh, plus, you know, really pleased with stuff, uh, with uh, getting rid of this, like this, as it's called the the virus, getting rid of it. Because mm -hmm. I want, I don't want these companies to fail and die. I want them to be around. I want them to make good things. So, uh, Wizards of the Coast isn't gonna go broke. They're actually they had record uh, sales and stuff. They've actually been doing really well because of the good stuff. Uh, because of stuff like Baldur's Gate 3 and Critical Role and uh, the the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie. Like, they've, they've been riding high for a while. So that's why a lot of people are like, it doesn't make sense why they would get rid of them. But then you read why they're getting rid of a lot of these people. It's like, oh, no, that makes entirely sense. Because Hasbro wants to be a company in the next 10 years. They want to stay around. Yeah, the, the Honor Amongst Thieves movie was fantastic. I hope By it gets far a the best. Yeah. I I really do. I, I love those characters. And even if they don't do a sequel, if you just do another Dungeons and Dragons movie with that care and attention, I would I would be super happy. Yeah. Uh Mechanical Numbariero in chat says, Ah I just imagine the Half Life scientist sound. I think I need to put at least two Half-Life Scientist sounds on the soundboard. The, uh, STOP! And, uh, just one of the args. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Cloud Seeker, we know, we know that Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons have been doing well because we have their... They, they actually have to give their financing reports. So we know they were actually doing really well. That's why people were so confused about why, if you're doing this well, why are you firing people? And then you see that Hasbro was getting rid of the people that were doing like black Aragorn and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, no, they're, they're basically cleaning out all the, the Rossies from, uh, from Wizards of the Coast now. Hmm. They're, they're trying to get rid of, uh, they're trying to get rid of all the ideologues and everything. Good. Good. Yeah. Arch had a, Arch has a, a video going over it. Again, I, it sucks that Arch, destroyed his credibility with Baldur's Gate 3 really hard. Like, I don't I don't know what bug went up went up his butt to do that, but man oh man. People are plapping in chat. I've done nothing to deserve this wave of plapping in chat. <laughs> no. You know, besides encouraging it with your TF2 streams. <laughs> I encourage nothing. That's all on them. Yeah. Bug, it's called fluoride sitch. <laughs> Anyways, we're already half hour in, and I do want to get this video over with so I can start working on my own videos and stuff. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. You guys ready? Yep. Yep. No. Yippee. Oh, right. Oh, RPGs God, there's music. I forgot uh, he, about that. Yeah, he, he starts with it. I don't... 
I don't know how audible it'll be through him talking because he he does do the talk over and a lot. I didn't see any breaks where he had a bunch of just music going. Okay, I'll leave the volume a little bit low. We'll continue. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, if it need, if it's if I feel it's too much, I could turn it down. Fair enough. Played with the world, but sometimes. Oh my god. Play to be the monster of it. And again, okay, I so, am. Yeah, just say what he said because there there was a moment there where it was just going. And it's like. Mm. Oft, he says, oftentimes you play to be the hero of the world, but sometimes you play to be the monster of it. And it's just like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm I'm very much not a fan of flowery like stuff and doing these like putting on voices and things like that to emphasize it, points. I it depends. Not a fan. It depends on the context for me. Like what he just yeah. did there is the kind I'm not a fan of. But like, yeah. If, if you're doing it in almost sort of a mocking sort of way, uh, which I do, which I'm fine with, then it works. Because it's like, oh yeah, and they're doing this. Because isn't that super cool? No, it's not. Mm. But this is definitely one of those people that thinks that uh, do you shoot that random stranger you met in the face or do you not is a deep moral choice. So just keep that in mind, chat. This is, this is the level we're working at here. Many games give us the freedom of choice. If you want to go on a killing rampage in GTA, you can. If you want to disarm a nuke... I mean... Mm -hmm. I don't know why you even bring that up, because... I mean, yeah, you can do that in GTA and many other games, but, like... I don't think we're supposed to take that as canon as to what's, like, actually happening in the world or story. Because that's the player yeah. just doing player things. Where mm -hmm. it's like... You you play a game, the Grand Theft Auto-like, and, like... Uh, let's say Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico Bellic doesn't seem like the kind of person to... Like, randomly do a mass shooting and kill a bunch of people. But you as yeah. a player can do that. So, it to me... There's a separation of what the player decides to do and what the actual story is. Because I don't think even Rockstar would say that, oh yeah, it's totally in character for Nico to, to go shoot up a Walmart, you know? Yep. Yeah. I feel it should be more something along the lines of the choices you make. So if you get an option to spare someone or, like, you know, kill them, execute them, you're always choosing to, like, execute or ruin their life option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those, uh, like, for another example, where it's it's not this, like, go on rampage thing, it's the Yakuza series of games, where the storyline is taken entirely seriously, like, as it's supposed to be, like, they don't, they don't dip away from it, there's not a lot of comedy in it, it's treated as an actual drama, but then all the side content is, is funny, and it's funny intentionally so, in so much as stuff, like, they want to see what happens if you take this serious Yakuza character and you put him in a, like, weird, awkward situation. What what happens there? That's where the comedy comes in. But they're not meant to be taken as this is canon, right, in the main storylines. Yeah. Like, the main storyline doesn't make reference to the fact that uh, Kiryu was a little, uh, one of those kart racers. The, those little track racer dudes. It doesn't make <laughs> mention that he's a champion of that. The storyline never mentions that. Um, hey, Indigo. It's been a while. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, fantastic to see you, Indigo. Indigo's been coming around the streams a, a bit for me, and it's always good to see you around. Yeah. Is that little narrative dissonance? Dun, dun, dun. Well, actually, yeah. in this case, I, I wouldn't consider that because... For me, ludonarrative dissidence is where um, it's not the player choosing to do a shooting in GTA. It's the actual gameplay that you're forced to do contradicts the narrative or the story being told. With uh, The one a lot of people reference is that uh, Tomb Raider game from a few years ago where like mm -hmm. she gets upset about killing someone then spends the rest of the game killing dozens of people yeah, like without issue. 
And then in the sequel, she gets upset about killing someone again. And it's like, you you, you just did enough killing. Uh, again, a lot of it was self-defense. I'm not going to say it wasn't, you didn't have to, but you just did enough killing to basically fill your own graveyard. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. why now you're suddenly back to, oh no, I killed them. <laughs> yeah. You, you've done this already a lot. Doing okay, fellas? Just been busy. Working a bit, but I have some time off, so that's nice. Oh, well, good to hear. Um, yeah, I understand being busy. <laughs> time off is nice, yeah. though. And, and yeah, glad to hear you're doing well. Yeah, she goes from PTSD to Columbine in like 30 seconds. <laughs> Not even joking, either. Like, holy cow, the, the, the body count you get like, immediately after killing that first person. It's just like, oh, now you have a weapon. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> and again, I understand the situation. I, I don't I don't even disagree that she needs to kill these people. They are not good people. They are, they are trying to capture and uh, grape everyone and, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I, I fully get it. It's it's the fact that she gets upset over killing that first guy and is completely emotionless for the rest. Yes. She doesn't have those moments where they're like completely and she can't sleep or anything like that or she hears them and or she confronts one of them like literally saying, why did you shoot me? I didn't do anything wrong. You know, she doesn't have any of those moments. I, I wouldn't even mind her not caring if, like, it's a few years in and she's, like, been hardened against this. She's got, like, she's cold emotionally now. Mm -hmm. But w when you're getting upset about killing someone, then 30 seconds later you're fucking mowing down people left and right, killing dozens of people. It's, yeah, I'm sorry, that doesn't... Yeah. Really Kills one person, instantly becomes a stone cold bitch, goes on mass <laughs> shooting spree. <laughs> yeah, but then, then in the sequel to that, they tried to do the oh no, how could I do something so horrible? And it's like the last game, your body count was insane. How? How do you even remotely feel like you know? Oh, how terrible! How dreadful! <laughs> like you would, you should be numb to this concept at this. Tyler McDonald, killing bad, fires AK-47. More <laughs> accurately, killing bad, fires AK-47 into a crowd. Can be savior, we can. You did it, didn't you? You disarmed that thing. If you want to arm and detonate the nuke, well, we can do that also. Oh, I hate the flower. Uh, yeah, it's, this it's, is really crazy. It's not even flowery language here. It's like the tone he's putting on for us. It's like, yeah, there, that's know more accurate. That you can kill all those people. <laughs> and that is bad. Oh. Because people die when you kill them. <laughs> because people die when they are killed. <laughs> It, it, it's not flowery language, but it's a flowery way of, like, presenting this. Pretentiousness? Yeah, it's kind of that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just started watching. This guy needs to be on a list along with Neil Breen. No, how <laughs> could you do that? How could you kill yourself? Oh, man. Why? Why did you have to commit suicide? Why? Oh, why? <laughs> We shouldn't kill people. Oppenheimer, <laughs> Oppenheimer moments before his not a weapon. Jap Fryer fifty thousand is dropped on a city. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! What's with bad creators and their pretentious ass language? I don't know, but it's super common, and like mm. most times, it just it doesn't sound good. Um... That's kind of the annoying thing about watching some YouTube videos is you either have the people who talk like this or you have the people who talk like this for their entire video. I fucking hate both of them. I despise both those <laughs> kinds of people. 
Because oh. there's some people where, like, you turn on their video, and by the time you get, like, not even to the end, your ears are almost ringing because they're constantly shouting fucking everything. Mm. I hate it. Like, why can't people just talk, like, normal? And, and that's the thing, too, yeah. is I wonder if so many people do the soft, quiet voice that that's actually messed with viewers' minds to the point where they think anyone who talks normally or showing any emotion besides that quiet, calm way of talking is, like, anyone who doesn't talk like that is somehow being aggressive or whatever, because even... On that ML video I put up uh, yesterday or the day before, I had someone say, oh, you sound like uh, an early 2000s angry game ranter. It's like, I'm sorry for having passion about something. The fuck am I supposed yeah. to do? And, and I've gotten a lot of comments in the past, too, about like, oh, you just sound uh, aggressive. It's like, I I'm talking, I'm speaking. What do you want from me? Mm. If I'm genuinely frustrated about something, am I just not supposed to show emotion? Am I supposed to be a goddamn robot? And that's the funny thing, too, is I get people saying that. I also get people saying, oh, you sound monotone and boring. It's like, I guess there's no winning. Yeah. It can be what you want them to be. Good, evil, it's up to you. Embarking on a good playthrough is easy. Be nice to everyone. Don't kill innocent civilians. Don't steal. You get the idea. Again, it's a very black and white concept with this guy. Good is you have to do... You have to be nice to everyone. You can't kill innocent people. You know, don't don't steal things. It's like... It, it's like, sure, that's the most, like... Biblical sort of you have good, like goody two shoes level of good. Yeah, like paragon of virtue level stuff, where it's like Jesus yeah. Christ. That that's not just being good. That's Jesus levels of like good. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turn the other cheek to everybody, and it's like, no, I'm sorry, that, that's not gonna happen. Like, it, it, it's the whole thing that again, Yahtzee has a lot of shit takes. Um, but one of the things he did great and he specifically was talking about stuff like bethesda where your your choices are so cartoonishly black and white of either being mother Teresa or you know mother Ther a vampiric mother Teresa who eats babies and it's like yeah, there's no like in between whatsoever it, it's just either your goody two shoes or the most like insane like chaotic stupid you can imagine Uh, Kretosis, I like your voice. Thank you. Kretosis, if it helps, I don't like your voice. Oh. <laughs> Kretosis, your natural tone is aggressive because aggressive negativity is your brand. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> Kretosis, how the fuck does someone watch that video and think you sound like AVGN? I don't know. Again, yep. I think... I... The, the only assumption I can make off the top of my head... Is that, like, people's minds really have been poisoned by, like, other YouTubers. I don't mean this as an attack on other YouTubers. Not necessarily. But, like, if you show any emotion that might be perceived negative, that automatically means you're an AVGN clone or something. I, I don't know what else it could be. <laughs> Just a guy from Alabama says, So either Bob Ross or Funny Mustache Man. Yeah, basically. <laughs> No in between whatsoever. Um, well, even Clancy. Oh, good. Even the way Bob Ross talks, that's fine for what he does. Like, if there was an art YouTuber who is like doing paintings or drawings or whatever, and they talked like that, yeah, that's fine. It's the video essay stuff where I'm talking about a movie well, or a game. It's a cinematic work of art, and this is why you should feel this way about it. That that's the shit I really hate. T to be mm. fair, just a guy was talking about moral standpoint from oh. you know, between Bob Ross and and you know the the Austrian painter. Okay, see, I read that the other way where it was like tone of voice because uh, yeah. the funny mustache man, like he was the, the angry <laughs> shouty German man. Yes, the, sorry, the angry shouty Austrian man versus the the we have happy little accidents. Here's a happy little cloud. 
YouTubers shouldn't sound like movie therapists. Just speak clearly and honestly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I don't know why yeah. this is so hard for so many people. It was a thing for a while where it was just like... It was just expected that you would have no emotional response to whatever you're talking about because that would be perceived as, oh, well, you're biased. You're biased. You're showing emotions about this one part, so that means you hate it and shit like that. And that went on for a while, and it was really annoying. And I think people are still kind of yeah, they absolutely in are. that I mindset. Could, <laughs> I could tell you firsthand from comments I've received, people must still be in that mindset because if you show any emotion when criticizing things it's immediately oh you're too negative it's like yep. oh hey this is poorly written for this reason and that's really fucking stupid and annoying and i hate it it's like oh you're too aggressive it's like the fuck do you want me to say mm. like genuinely yeah. they basically expect you to not give any personal thoughts on it you just have to dryly state like this is what they do this is why it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Moving on. Like, you're not oh, allowed to say, I, that... I hate it, or it's so stupid, <laughs> or anything like that. You can't do that. That actually reminds me of something you found yesterday, Pagan, uh, that Such probably doesn't know about yet. Oh, no. The video we covered a couple weeks ago about how you can't uh, be objective in your reviews. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But he took it down. Oh. Yeah, he, he removed it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I was going through the uh, <laughs> suggestions and I saw it there again and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. And uh, I clicked on it to like uh, check something and it was gone. It was like, this is this video has been removed by the uh, the uploader. And I was like, oh! <laughs> I think that's the first time that's happened to a video we've covered. I believe so, yeah. Uh... Maybe. There might have been another one where it got removed sometime later. I don't quite remember which one it was, though. I do know we've had people come out and, like, make a video. Like, they kept the old one up, but then they make a new video where they were like, yeah, no, I was wrong. Yeah, which, which I honestly think is the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, correct, set the record straight. I would have all the respect in the world for pretty much everyone we've covered. Not everyone, but pretty much everyone. If they came out and be like, yeah, you know what? I fucked up here. I had a bad take. Whatever. Yeah. I would have a lot of respect for the likes of uh, many a true nerd in Oxhorn if they genuinely realized their mistakes. It'd be like, yeah, that thing, uh, Scientist Redcon Reality, that was a dumb comment to make, and I shouldn't just give these games a pass because I like them. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say that you're sick in the head for criticizing these games because... I I was I didn't see it back then, but I understand now that people who make these criticisms just want these games to be better. And I can understand wanting things in a series you'd like to be good. I would have all the respect in the world if uh, these people came out and said stuff like that, you know? Mm. I'm not even... No. like I obviously... You know, my thing... I don't want them to start hating the game. Like, if you like the game, you like the game. That's fine. I don't care. It's yeah. when they say things that just aren't true and have the potential to, like, influence a lot of people. Um, especially when they use disingenuous arguments that, that I really hate, where it's like, well, just take in ML's recent Twitter meltdown, uh, for example. Oh, you don't know what uh, video game development is like. Where it's like, okay, but you don't need to be a chef to tell that the soup is shit. It's like, yeah, yeah when... when Big people use arguments like that. Other people will, too. Like, because they have a lot of followers. And it's part of the reason why we still deal with the fucking issue of, oh, well, it sold a lot of copies. It's popular and successful, so it must be good. Yeah. I think there was another video that got, like, taken down or something. Wow, what was that one? I remember there being two. Oh, Right. It was the TKS Mantis video you privated. Right. I forgot about that. Well, we didn't cover that one. Yeah, we didn't cover that one. It was one we were looking at in suggestions, and I was going to preview it to see if it was worth covering, mm -hmm. and it's been privated, so can't do that one. Um, back towards the topic of the video we're doing, 
Yeah. Um, Clancy in chat, uh, Clancy Damon one two five says, Kotor two did this the best. I'm tired of these petty acts of evil. Where Kreia responds, "You think they're petty? Evil begets evil. It extends far beyond you." Yeah. I I seriously, Kotor two is fantastic. A lot of people that are diehard Star Wars fans, like that are really into uh, Jedi especially don't really like KOTOR 2 because it's KOTOR 2 is kind of a breakdown of how the Jedi way is also like idiotic. Both of them are idiotic, but to like the opposite ends. I haven't played KOTOR 2, so I can't really comment on it. I it's, will one it's day. really good. Like, one of the go-to examples I have is when you go to a planet where everybody doesn't have a lot, they're like desperate for any sort of food or money or anything, and a, a guy comes up to you begging, and if you give him credits, um, Kray is like, why did you do that? Well, it was a nice thing to do. It's like, oh, it made you feel nice. That guy is going to have a really bad time, and it shows you um, out of characterly he goes, and a lot of people saw that he got money, so he gets pulled into an alley and beat half to death, and they take the money that he got. And it was one of those, like, oof. It's like, yeah, again, you, you've you had a random act of kindness to make yourself feel better. You didn't actually help this person, because you just made them a target for everybody else. Because everybody on this planet is that desperate. Are you, are you going to hand out money to every single person on the planet? Hmm. I'll try to make sure I play KOTOR 1 next year. Because it has been a long time and I yeah. do want to play it again. Yeah. God, that does remind me of something, but it's completely off topic, so probably not worth going into. But it has to do with that concept where you're talking about like, oh, well, because you did this thing that you thought was good, it put made this guy a target. And yeah, basically... That new Disney movie that came out where they're supposed to be celebrating like a, their hundredth movie or whatever. Hundred years it's of Disney. Yeah, it's basically fucking that, but like portrayed as like, oh well, if you believe that, you know, restricting people's wishes, you know, no matter what might happen, is, you know, it's like that's a bad thing. So this person is automatically evil, even though they're portrayed as the good guy throughout like the entire film and he's he never does anything wrong but nope he's the villain but restricting people's wishes is a good thing because what if someone comes up and says i wish everyone was dead yeah exactly and he he even goes into it that's the fucked up thing he even goes into it where he's like it, it he doesn't do it through malice or anything like that he is completely like he grants people's wishes um but it's done in a way where it's like uh you know he picks and chooses where it's like yeah well if you know, this guy wants to be a conqueror and it's like, okay, you see how that's going to cause problems, right? Like, even if he doesn't conquer my kingdom, he's still going to go out and essentially cause wars. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that's a problem. I can't grant that wish. And the fucking protagonist of the, of the movie who is just like a one note Mary Sue, you know, the same archetype that Disney has been doing for decades now. And she's just like, no, you have to grant everybody's wish. You can't just deny them and stuff like that. And he's like, woman, it's literally <laughs> going to end everyone's lives if you just grant all of these wishes. Like, you have to pick and choose. And she's just like, no, you are a bad, bad man. And it's like, I literally created a kingdom where everyone lives peacefully of their own free will. They came here willingly and accepted these rules because they know it works. I'm yep. literally granting people's wishes so long as they don't fuck over other people. Mm. And you're getting upset about it. And he's supposed to be the villain. I don't know. He sounds pretty fucking based. Also. Exactly. Well, it literally just teaches kids like. Be self-indulgent and, you know, indulge in your, in whatever you want. Your, your dreams should always come true, no matter what. Demand it. And yeah. it's like, oh my god, that is a horrible lesson to teach kids. I, I like how you said, he's just like, woman, because my immediate follow-through was, silence! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, as Clancy puts it, just, again, you, you've, 
to destroy her entire philosophy, uh, Clancy says, I wish for insert race to be removed. You are bad for not allowing my wish. Yep. <laughs> the evil playthrough is the opposite of that. In some games, it's easy to do these things. GTA is a prime example of a game that allows you to be a sinister character and not feel awful about it. In that game, killing sprees of innocence is hilarious. No way! I'm not gonna do it! I, I, again, I, killing sprees of innocent civilians is hilarious. Like, I... is it? I don't really consider it hilarious. It's just a th it's just a mindless task to do when you're bored. Yeah. Yeah. In a yeah, video I game. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I can see. I can see some some of it being hilarious. Like again, the Biaz all getting run over by the truck was like perfect comedic timing. <laughs> that's yes. funny. <laughs> I, I had to process that for a second because it wasn't said like yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. That's a heist. Second, that's optional. Yeah. Part of that clip there of everyone coming into, like, the bank or the diamond store or whatever that fucking was. That's uh, your first heist. Yeah, that's a heist. I, is that in story mode or is that in online mode? That's story. It is story? Okay. That, that's the one where you have to set up specific things, and if you don't pick the the developer-approved choices... You fail. ...then you, you lose uh, more and more of your, your payout. Yeah. I think it's weird that this is, some of this is being framed as it allows you to, where, like, if you're playing the main story, you're playing the main story. You have to do these things, like, yeah, yeah. for the non-optional quests. It's not allowing you to. It's it's required to complete the game. Whereas, yeah, like, when, when, when Trevor's a piece of shit and tortures somebody, you have to do that. That's the story. Yeah. Whereas when, when you pull out your gun and shoot people in the street, which isn't part of the story, that is a choice, I guess? I don't know, this just feels like a yeah. false uh, equivalence or false dichotomy or whatever. It, it is mm -hmm. a choice. The problem is is that Strictly Mediocre here is um, is like over indulging in that choice. It's not a meaningful choice. Mm -hmm. I walk into a room and I see a person standing there. Do I blow his head off or do I say hello? It's not a meaningful choice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hate that this is what, like, being an evil character has devolved into, where it's literally just, do you play the game normally, or do you veer off and just go on a mass shooting spree that is completely, like, not... The game won't even, like, address that, really. Like, it's not a part of the game. Mm -hmm. It's just dumb. It's like, it should be confined within the choices of the game and the choices that you make that actually, like, matter like that actually play a purpose and have consequences down the line. Yeah. It's, it's what's, just weird. What's annoying is that he, he's going to understand that you can do these things in GTA so easily because there are no consequences and it has no consequences to the story or really anything. He'll, he'll get that point, but then, he, then he will drop the, the bombshell one. And it's just like, Oh God. I, I don't know how you could see it had no consequences and then this other one you think has all the consequences. Yeah, that's weird. Also, yeah, I just realized that. Because I don't want to say what it is. Uh, Kree and Pagan know because I, I had a moment of like, I can't believe it. Yeah. I just realized I did the thing when I specified in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> I did the fucking SpongeBob. Like, a, let me be crushed by a flying ice cream truck. And then he hears it coming. And live! <laughs> yeah. I, my, mind, my mind went the other direction. You were like, in a video game. And I was like... <laughs> in a video game? No, in real life! Yeah. <laughs> no, in real life. made that art of me. Which is so fucking good. <laughs> no, in real life. Video essayist when they see someone they could kill. <laughs> 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 uh, 
It's like, yeah, yeah, no, this is this totally makes sense. This is how I live my daily life. And it's like, what? <laughs> when I walk into the bank and I see someone and I see the teller, I just I just want to pull my gun out that I always keep hitting on me and blow their brains out. And it's just like, what? <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Trust me, it's going to get to that feeling of like, this sounds like a, a fucking schizo problem, not a... Uh... Not a deep moral choice. This is a this is like a, a deep moral choice if you're you know in third grade and you're a, a psychopath. Oh no. <laughs> Being chased by patrol cars and helicopters as you've reached five stars is thrilling. Stealing cars is a joy, and pointing guns at people gives the player an incredible sense of power. What? I know, right? Talking okay, look. When I play flowery as hell. When I play Grand Theft Auto games and like Saints Row, stuff like that, even fucking Morrowind or uh, New Vegas or Fallout Three or whatever, and I just I start killing people because I can. I don't think. Oh yes, this this gives me so power, power over oh. everyone else. Like, Free, you have no. become the chosen one with power. Oh. <laughs> you have become the chosen one. You must murder every single person in sight. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't get this mindset of like, oh yeah, when I go on a killing spree in a video game, I feel so powerful. It's a power fantasy, and I'm just like, I don't feel that at all from just random wanton acts of like murder. It doesn't make me feel powerful. It yeah. just feels boring. It, it doesn't yeah. feel like I'm playing the game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually even fun gonna mention. for a little Go bit, but it can get boring quickly. Like, yeah. 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 Like, it, I did. Just... I would do, like, the, you know, like, this stuff in GTA every once in a while, but it, it got boring really fast, especially once you got pinned down in a building by the cops, and it's like, oh, my God, I just want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Though these things are downright horrible, no one thinks about that. Players are smart enough to understand that it's just a game, and can disconnect their real-life morals when playing it. But <laughs> yeah, you see this what I'm talking about? So the level of pretentious. Fucking pretentious! Oh my god! Yeah, this is insane. <sighs> like, <laughs> I know he's acknowledged it, but. It's a fucking video game, my dude. It's not that deep. Yeah, again, like, it, do I they're... do I walk across the street and shoot that guy in the head or not? Is not a deep moral question. No, but it, it's just this is completely insane to me. It's like, you know, when you play video games, you can kill people, and most people don't really think about how horrible that is, because. They they turn off their morals for it. It's like it's fucking pixels on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that's kind of the point is that it, you're able to do and be whatever you want in a video game because it's not real. That's the whole fucking point. Yeah. Like this, this comes across as someone who wants to be a video uh, essayist, um, the kind that talk like this, and. He doesn't know what to do, so he's just saying fucking whatever. That's what it feels like to me. Or it's like, oh yeah, that sounds deep. You don't have the same morals in a fictional world as you do in the real world. Maybe because <laughs> what happens in a fictional world, especially when you do stuff at complete random, doesn't have the same consequences as real life. You know, you kill an NPC in a video game, okay, you, you've removed pixels. You can start a new game, you can reload a save, whatever. You kill someone in real life, they're gone forever. Yeah, there's a reason it's treated differently, and like he's acknowledged that yeah, it's a video game, but like it sounds, it feels like he's making something out of nothing. It's just frustrating. Ironically enough, like anyone else, when I see anyone else playing a game, and it's just you know they're they're just being normal, they're just playing the game normally without you know, and, and they don't have this kind of opinion 
after the fact. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's just, they, they just know it's a game. It's whatever. Yeah. Here, though, with the way he's talking about it, it's like, I don't know, man. This is the type of person I don't know if I would want them playing video games. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I genuinely don't know if they would be able to tell the difference between fiction and reality. <laughs> but for some the same cannot be said for other games. In games like Fallout 3, you have that same freedom, but the feeling is entirely different. You can kill- Is it? Is How? it? How? I don't yeah. think it's entirely different. There, it's literally just- There are just... no consequences. Yeah, like, you can just you kill- Yeah, boo-hoo, the same thing would happen in GTA. Oh, you killed the store clerk, now you can't buy things from him. The, the same thing applies in Fallout. It's literally I, just, okay, you killed an NPC that might have had a quest or some dialogue. Now you don't get to hear it. Well, yeah, same thing applies in GTA. Well, you don't get the difference, Pagan, because if you shoot a store clerk in GTA, he will respawn. But if you rightfully blow Moira's head off with a shotgun, she won't come back. <laughs> Unless, you know, you reload the save and... <laughs> yeah. You know, you <laughs> could reload back. the save. God, this is so stupid. <laughs> this is so dumb. How are you going to try and, like, fucking <laughs> separate these two games where it's like, it's the same thing. Wanton acts of random murder are the same in almost every video game. Like, the story doesn't <laughs> usually fucking address it other than, like, oh, well, you killed this NPC, so now you have to complete this other quest this way instead of doing it the way you were supposed to do it. That's it. That's, like, the extent of it. It doesn't, like... It doesn't, like, address the fact that, like, oh, well, now, because you killed all these people, you're a warlord, and now you have your own faction. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. <laughs> the game does not address that you're uh, being a fucking murder hobo. If I want to be a raider in Fallout 3, I can't, because no matter how much I kill innocent people and steal their shit, the raiders will never respect me. Exactly! There is no difference. Also, I need to grab this comment from Elstube. Top left, Kretosis. Credit, many a true nerd. We can't ever escape him. <laughs> I look over at the yeah. screen, I see it. It's just like, he can't keep getting away with it! <laughs> <laughs> In fact, oh, a nerd is here. Oh, no. <laughs> In fact, I would argue that, you know, it's actually, there's less consequences in Fallout 3, because at least in GTA, if you kill enough people, you get the military on you. <laughs> and... You know, you're getting chased by the police constantly, and then when it gets up to the military, it's just like, yeah, you're going to die eventually. In Fallout 3, the most you get is like, oh, uh, some guys in trench coats called the regulators show up, and they die super easily, and then you don't have to deal with them for, like, another three hours. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's nothing. That's not a real consequence compared to GTA, where you literally get the military on you. You can wipe out all of Megaton on your own, or close to it, um, no, on your own, yeah. Uh, on normal difficulty, with the starting equipment from Vault 101, I've done it. Without cheats, I've done it. Uh, or mods. And, uh, the, the worst consequence you face from this, aside from, like, just negative karma, which whatever, is the fact that a couple shopkeepers are no longer available to you. Yeah. Yep. In fact, I'd argue it's a benefit to do this, because any time I actually play Fallout 3 for the sake of playing it, which isn't often anymore, I would do that every single time. Oh, what? You can nuke the town and get a sweet-ass apartment? Okay. I'll do that. Get Jericho as a companion, kill every single person in town, take all the valuable stuff, and then nuke it. Yep. Because oh, it's and like, genuinely uh... more beneficial to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And like Caffeine Freak in chat says, not to mention Fallout 3 punishes you for being good, for being a good guy too. Yeah, you yeah. get the same punishment for being a good guy as you would for a bad guy. A group of like three or four people show up who Talon don't Marks. like you. Yeah, Talon Mercs. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, it's like regulators, Talon Mercs, they're basically the same thing. They, they literally and... are the same thing, reskinned. Yeah, it's literally just a reskin, and you're just dealing with the exact same thing. So there's literally no consequence, because otherwise, if you were the good guy, you'd have the exact same punishment levied against you. So who fucking cares? 
Every Labed choice in Fallout 3 is also made worthless by the fact that you can wipe out a city and give a tramp ten bottles of water to become the messiah again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the, the water beggars are literally just good karma dispensers. Kill whatever you want, but it comes at a high price. Living <laughs> yeah. It shows the karma system, one of the weakest, the most pathetic, like video I, game punishment systems ever created. It it comes at a high price. You've lost karma. <laughs> <laughs> You did an oopsie whoopsie. <laughs> the high consequences of your actions, okay. I don't even mind the karma system if it had been better implemented. Like, I, I think it does have a place in Fallout and maybe even other games. It's just they implemented it as is Bethesda Standard at this point in the laziest, cheapest way fucking possible. And remember, too, you can lose karma from stealing from evil people. Yep. The regulators kind of make sense since they're heroic. Who even hired a hitman for you doing good deeds? The other problem is that you can get both in a single playthrough at once even. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Um, so... This is part. This is one of the many problems with Fallout 3, and this piece of information actually comes from the strategy guide, I believe. But the reason the Talon Mercs are so, like, hostile to everyone and everything in the Wasteland is because a mysterious figure has hired them to keep the Wasteland in, like, disorder and chaos. So, assuming that's true, assuming that's Bethesda's intent and not just something made up for the guidebook, um, that would mean that some mysterious figure who has an absolute absurd amount of money saw that you were doing good deeds and was just like, yeah, this person's dead, let's kill him. Or, sorry, this person's good, let's kill him. Because they're, they're doing good things. Uh, it really yeah. fucking sucks. It's really lame. Yeah, that is really lame. Oh no, this person's helping. He might stabilize the economy. Kill him! See, it's frustrating, too, that it just happens because literally that you're a, a, a do-gooder or a good-doer or whatever. Where it's like, wouldn't it be more interesting if maybe the game had some evil factions and you could do certain quests that might be against them and then as a result, because you've wronged them, they hire uh, hitmen to come after you. Yeah. That would require better. work and effort. Can't have that. Not at Bethesda. No. Yeah. Can't have that... documentation about it either. Just fucking stole the words out of my mouth, goddammit. <laughs> I was literally about to make that reference. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you employ your clones, okay? <laughs> Oh no, the implications of that are terrible. <laughs> Being dangerous these RPGs isn't really what players want to experience. So, it got me thinking, why is it easy to be evil in games like GTA, but hard in other games like Fallout 3 and New Vegas? It's not hard in Fallout 3 at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it absolutely isn't hard in Fallout 3. It's actually advisable to be evil in Fallout 3 because it's just strictly more beneficial for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Fallout New Vegas at least actually fucking takes into account that, yeah, there's actually factions in the game. So if you piss them off, they actually have resources to throw at you, which causes a problem, which is actual consequences. Because dealing with Legion or NCR assassins is a lot more difficult than dealing with, like, three or four Talon Company mercs or regulators who have, like, basic gear. Mm-hmm. 
Also, it's worth mentioning, too, that New Vegas puts a lot more effort into, like, the world building and the characters so you actually care about them. No matter how many times I play Fallout 3 and I get the generic dialogue from, like, Lucas Sims or whatever, I don't care about any of these characters. The main story, uh, when you're escaping Project Purity, will fucking stop outright. Because one of the NPCs that you probably haven't interacted with and barely has anything to say and talks like a fucking robot is having a heart attack. And you have to go get him, um... You have to give him five stim packs so he'll survive. Which, by the way, you can literally leave the dungeon, walk all the way to Megaton, buy uh, five stim packs, and walk back into the dungeon to save him if you don't have them and can't find them uh, in there. Um, such a tense moment. Like, they, they don't do anything to make you care about this character. It's just a sudden invented notion that, oh my god, he's having a heart attack. We need to do... No, just blow his head off. There's no... He serves no purpose at all. Except for for that. Whereas New Vegas... Like... Each of the characters are given personalities where they feel like distinct characters. Where... Even in Good Springs... Um, Doc Mitchell and... Uh, I forget some other names. But like the store clerk... Um, uh, Judy, uh, what's her name that, um, Sunny Smiles, Sunny Smiles. Uh, they all feel like distinct, unique characters as opposed to, this is one of the problems with Bethesda's writing, everyone feels the same because it's, for the most part, it's like, I am character, this is what I have to say. Yep. And you yep. forgot the main character, Cree. Why didn't you, why didn't you mention Easy Pete? Oh, yeah. So hard on you now. The existence of Easy Pete implies the existence of Difficult Pete. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's just being evil in uh, New Vegas, I find, is more difficult because, like, they put the work in to make it matter when you do something. Um,. Worst yet about this comparison is it really is a false dichotomy because he's comparing a game with a linear story, like a very linear story with little to no choice in uh, Grand Theft Auto, where it's like, the point of the story is literally that you do evil, like you do bad things. Whereas uh, in Fallout 3 New Vegas, it's an active choice you have to make. It's not... I just feel like it's a really bad thing to try and make the comparison with. Yeah, it just doesn't work because one's an RPG where you can actually make choices and decide what you want your character to be. And the other one is a linear it's a linear story where your character has been decided already. Like, yeah. there's nothing you can really do to change I, that. I haven't played the main story of uh, GTA V, but if you take, like, San Andreas or GTA IV, there's times where your character does do things that can be considered evil where it's like that's just the story playing out it's literally the story happening you don't have any influence over it um like there's a, a quest in san andreas I'm, I'm trying to like i know there's a bunch of ones where cj does a lot of fucked up things um Okay, yeah, there, there's one quest where, like, you have to murder a reporter who's, like, doing a, a genuine investigation into, like, corruption or whatever. It's like, yeah, you can argue that that's, like, an evil thing to do because he could have exposed, like, something that's genuinely harmful to the community or to the city or to just, like, average people. And because he's dead now, that'll never happen. Um, you don't have a choice over that, where in, in these games, if you decide... To be like, um, I'm going to uh, do a quest so like the worst thing possible happens to these characters. It's, it's not comparable because you're actively choosing to do that. Yeah. yeah. Again, you, you shouldn't feel bad when you play the Trevor torture scene in GTA 6 or GTA 5 because it's forcing you to do it. Yeah. You have no options. You're on rails. You must do it. It's one, it's one of the biggest um, uh, uh, 
base plants of the game. Oh my god, I can't remember. Spec Ops the Line. Jesus. It's the biggest face play in Spec Ops the Line. When you when you use the uh, mortar to fire off white phosphorus, there is a part where you will just keep getting attacked over and over again until you finally fire off the white phosphorus to hit the Humvee that's above the trench line. Again, it, it undermines the point. If if the person is playing the game and they naturally do it of themselves and they don't realize the game is forcing them to do it, the the point and the theme of Spec Ops The Line hits way harder. If people do realize they are being forced to do this choice, you know, that really does undermine the the impact of the horrific fucked up thing you just did. Mm-hmm. I feel if you wanted to make this video, it would have been better to say, to present it as, why is it easy to be evil in Fallout 3 and not in New Vegas? Yeah. Because that's actually accurate to the situation. Yeah, that that's one of the things that annoys me. I wish they would have found a better way in Spike the Line to make you fire the white phosphorus at that trench line. But they just don't. Like, it, they, there's no alternate choice that could have led to something just as bad, right? They, you just get attacked over and over and over again until you finally launch the mortar tube and hit that that Humvee that causes the horrific loss of innocent life. This also just highlights to me how easily some people can be taken in, where it's like. If you put the most bare minimum amount of consequences in a game for doing evil, then that that just means it, it's automatically good or whatever. What's that? You you killed an innocent person and now uh, uh, regulators are after you? Oh, well, that's proof that this game does consequence well. There's a difference between having consequences and, like, having consequences done well. Like, technically, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, regulators coming after you for, uh, being evil is a consequence, I guess, by nature of, like, something happens because you did a thing, but it's, like, something extremely shallow and generic and pointless. Um, Senator Abby Strong, I will actually push back against that. I think you as the player have every right to complain about that. But, because uh, they say, he turned us into fucking killers. Sorry, mate, but the Elder's power called writers made me white phosphorus of civilians. You, the player, that that's totally fine for you, but your subordinates have every right because they're yelling at, at the captain. The captain is the one ordering them to use white phosphorus, and he's telling them where to aim. In universe, they are entirely right to feel the way they do about him. Like, that's not a writer's thing. That's That's how they should feel about him. The, the problem is, is that you, the player, know that you're on rails at that point if you don't happen to instinctively follow and fire a white phosphorus round at that Humvee. Yeah, it's just annoying how... Especially when you take into account stuff like Fallout New Vegas, where they actually give a shit, and they actually have factions that, you know, if you actually want to do anything with or be friendly with, you, your choices kind of matter, because it's very easy to piss off the Legion, and, yeah. you know, and now it's like, well, now you can't do anything with them, and they're going to hunt you down, and that applies to, like, every single faction, yeah. whereas in three it's like what is there like what what faction is there to even join outside of the brotherhood which is pretty much mandated that you have to join yeah i i, I don't know especially when you can join the regulators even after being you know having them sent after you <laughs> because again all you have to do is improve your karma and now you can get the perk and join them, even though they were just hunting you a little while ago, because now you're 
No, there's no consequences, really. Hey, people who are hired specifically to kill me, I want to join you. Yeah. It's one of the things that bugs me about Skyrim, too, because they have similar random encounters where, like, if you steal from a merchant or kill someone, you can get a Dark Brotherhood assassin after you, and, like, like sometimes you'll get a note that just says, We know, because uh, I remember that because it's been memed to death. But, like, you'll actually kill the assassin who has a note saying who hired, I think... Okay, I'm not sure if it's them or the mercenaries who have a note saying they were hired to come after you. Either way, um, it's weird that the Dark Brotherhood could be hired to fucking kill you, and then you can join them after that. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's especially bad with the companions. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it is the companions that have the note where like, it literally says who yeah. you know, hired the, the hitman to get you and shit, or like beat you up or whatever. And if you kill them, it doesn't matter. You could still go join them. It's like you literally killed a member of the Companions, and they're just fine with it. Same with the Dark Brotherhood. You killed one of their members, and they're like, hey, you want to join us? Person that we've been yeah. paid to kill? Like, remember that the Dark Brotherhood questline has you kill the Emperor, and, like, there's nothing he can do to get out of it. He can't just pay you off, but you kill one of their members, they've been paid to kill you and they're just like hey you want to join yeah <laughs> it's so fucking weird oh. the mercenaries are generic thugs not companions I thought I thought they were but I might have been mistaken something so I didn't say anything I could have sworn somewhere in the note it literally says, like, they've enlisted the aid of the companions to deal with this, you know, this thief or whatever. I could have sworn the note said something like that. Like, the Thieves Guild, they say they don't kill like the Brotherhood, but also never stops you from it. That's a good point. When I eventually get around to doing that in the Skyrim analysis, I'm gonna have to do a Thieves Guild run where I just fucking murder everyone I see. And see how much yep. that affects my ability to complete it. Because if it's like up to Bethesda standard, which I expect it to be, then it'll be like a slap on the wrist. They'll be like, no, you're not supposed to do that. Well, it'll be like the, be the extent Mage's of it. Guild. You know, the Mage's Guild, where somebody figured out you can do the entirety of the Mage's Guild without casting a single spell. <laughs> which is just insane. Because people, because people started thinking like, oh, well, what about the shield thing? You need to raise the shield thing. It's like, no, no, they found ways to get around that, too. All this talk about Skyrim is making me want to work on the video, but I've got so many other projects on the go right now. Yeah. I do genuinely it's so hard to play. It's so hard to play the evil route, and is being evil in games even worth it? Yes. The answers aren't as simple as you may think. <laughs> Here we- yeah. Oh my god. I have, I have super, super up its own ass. So fucking painful, just end my existence, I hate it. Mm-hmm. HATE! the first question. In games like GTA, it's easy to forget about morals when you commit crimes like mass murder and theft. Oh, that's depressing. Why? The people you kill are random NPCs, NPCs that have no effect on the story you play, nor do you interact with them in any sort of way. Oh, just on my way to a man's house, I'm gonna- There's another thing he's doing here when he's talking that really irritates me, and that's that almost kind of croaking sound to his voice. Where everything kind of sounds like this. That voice I just, fry? Yeah. I, I hate when people do voice fry. It is so annoying. Yeah. Just talk like a normal fucking person. Jesus Christ. Unless it's like an actual thing where you... That, that's, that is the way you talk normally. Like, just how you sound by default. But when people go out of their way to sound like... I, oh, I hate it! Yeah. Uh -huh. I hate vocal fry. It is so annoying when people do it. How the fuck does anyone actually, like, 
like listening to that. I don't know. Because any time I hear it, it is just the most irritating shit in the world. Young A levels of voiceover. <laughs> yeah, not not wrong. Ask him because I need some sex, okay? So when you kill one, sure you end up getting a star and a couple of officers sent after you, but that star can easily be removed by just leaving the area. Uh, again, which is more consequence than what you see in Fallout Three. When you kill someone in Fallout 3, you'll get negative karma, which can easily be removed by giving a bottle of water to a beggar. Yep. Oh. It's almost like they're the same thing. Yeah. I mean, sure. And honestly, uh, GTA is, is more of a punishment because you have to try to get out of the area. Otherwise, things will escalate more and more and more. Or you get arrested and you lose money and weaponry. Yeah. I don't know about that second part in the newer GTAs. But I remember if you got arrested in the older ones, you lost all of your, your weapons and everything, too. Oh, yeah, in San yeah. Andreas, which I played a fuck ton of when I was a kid. If you died or got arrested, you lost all your weapons. Yep. Yep. Um, the only thing I could really say is that negative karma is a bit more permanent than the uh, star rating in GTA because you do actually have to go over your way to get rid of it. But it also doesn't matter. It's, you could probably have a run of uh, Fallout 3 with negative karma without ever encountering the bounty hunters. Or sorry, the regulators. Same thing. Yep. So, it's and not you even... And you can have an entire run on high karma and never run the talent company because I, I did that. I, I didn't even know talent company existed for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, Talon Company has, like, very specific spawn points. And if you just don't go to those, they'll never spawn. In fact... Because... And there's, a lot of those places are out of the way in, like, side content. So if you're doing the main story, you'll never even encounter them. Yeah, in fact, there's some places where, like, there's it's a, such a reliable spawn point for them that you can force them to spawn if you want to. Like, yep. um... Near Tenpenny Tower, you know I have to go down into the Metro Tunnel to deal with the ghouls? And there's, like, a small, mm -hmm. like, plaza right there beside it? One of those buildings you can enter. And, uh, I think if you enter and leave, they'll be outside. Yep, they'll be out there waiting for you. Same thing with the, uh, the Metro near Arafu. Um, and the, uh, the Metro near... What is it? That... Ah, oh, shit. What is her name? The old lady that sells, like, meat by the river. Oh, um... Fuck, what was her name? I don't oh, usually I go to that area, but I do know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's near the, um, the Citadel as well. It's, like, in between the Citadel and her, there's a metro that if you go into and come back out of, they'll be right there waiting for you. <laughs> Grandma Sparkles, uh, Gibson? Gibson? Yeah. No, I think Gibson is the one who has the dog in New Vegas, isn't she? Yeah, that's... Yeah, uh, Grandma Sparkles yeah. is uh, the one from Fallout 3. Because she even tells you if you talk to her, she'll say like, Oh, I've seen some bad men around here. You better be careful. And then if you walk over by that metro... They'll spawn. <laughs> the most immersive Fallout 3 gameplay. Yeah. They punish you at any point in the story for this. So you can continue to commit these crimes and not have to worry about it. It's what, also... what punishment do you get in Fallout 3, my guy? Barely anything, if at all. That's only if you count, like, the regulators and your dad telling you off for nuking Megaton, which mm -hmm. is nothing. Yeah, it, it's literally nothing. I don't know why you killed that city. Also, oh. going back to the whole GTA story thing, you do face consequences for the actions you take in story that, like, you don't have a choice for. But, like, 
stuff happens in the story because you perform certain actions as part of the story, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which feels way more impactful than, oh, you killed someone good, here's some mercenaries to come kill you. Just feels fucking lame. Especially when they're basically nothing more than, like, walking loot boxes. <laughs> yeah. Because they're so easy to deal with, it's it's not even a challenge and you don't have to deal with them for hours on end. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's like, Oh boy, a good ammo refill. Come here. Uh, actually, Kratosis three dog says I'm an asshole. And that hurts more than any possible prison sentence. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking story of GTA five is the consequences of protagonist's actions. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you for blowing up a settlement full of innocent civilians. Don't let it happen again. Yeah. That's pretty much it. It's literally, I'm very disappointed in you. Now, go do this thing for me so I can get locked in the chamber and die horribly. Yep. <laughs> in a miracle radiation explosion that didn't liquefy you instantaneously somehow. I'm bringing that up in the uh, ML video script. Mostly uh, Colonel Autumn surviving because I'm talking about like the shocking twists and the bad writing of ML. Mm -hmm. and again, it, like, it explains so much when that <laughs> the person that, that said like he's he has described in his past that he's stream of consciousness writing. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's there's, super fucking bad. There's a couple good comments on that video that are going to go into the ML writing video. <laughs> People with fatherless behavior when they play Fallout 3 and their surrogate father in the game scolds them. <laughs> no. no, please, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll never do it again. Well, uh, fun son, I'm not, I'm not talking about your character surviving the radiation. I'm talking about the fact that your father survives without being instantly liquefied. When two people in, in full-on sealed power armor die instantly. Like, yeah, from the they die before Autumn and your father somehow, which makes no sense. <laughs> They're in a sealed fucking power suit. They that, should be way more protected. It has resistance to radiation. Mm. Yeah. It's so fucked. The fact that... <laughs> It's also funny to me that, like, Autumn goes down before your father does, even though he took a serum that protects him from the radiation. Protects him <laughs> so some... well that in the next quest, he's perfectly fine. Yeah, but somehow your father somehow, like, manages to crawl over to the window and have a small conversation with you before dying. And it's like, what the fuck? How? Yep. consequences. Morality is non-existent, but in games like Fallout 3 I'm and New so... Vegas... How the fuck can you say morality is non-existent when it's a big part of the GTA games? And their storylines, yes. Yeah, and yeah. their storylines, like... In fact, there, there's a fantastic one in GTA 4 where if you want to put aside your feelings and work, like, hey... We can work together. We can be professional about this. And you do that, the motherfucker kills your cousin at his wedding. Like, holy shit. Like, dude, it's like, you should have taken out that piece of shit before this happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, God, I, I hated that mission, that last mission so much, because the physics on the boat are so bad, and you're trying to chase a fucking helicopter. I hate it. I, I hate that mission for a different reason. Um, there's a part in that mission where you grab onto the helicopter and you're hanging off of it, and you have to press like you have to button match to stay on, and I couldn't yeah. do it because um, my computer was too good, so the FPS was too high, and it was tied to the FPS. So I had to fucking look for a solution online to lock the FPS at like what the game is supposed to run at, so I could actually complete it. I tried that yep. mission like five or six times before I gave up and searched for a solution. <laughs> oh boy, was yeah. I pissed. Yeah, that's why you need stuff like Reva Tuner and MSI Afterburner for <laughs> controlling your FPS on certain games. 
Yep. That's why, why V-Sync is a godsend a lot of times. <laughs> Story. So, why is it hard to be evil in those games, but not in GTA? To answer that question, we're going to talk about one of the biggest moral choices in gaming history. And that choice occurs in the post-apocalyptic RPG known as Fallout 3. Hey, Chad, I told you oh to keep your God. ears open for oh So now God. he is going to grace us. Grace us with, as he said. <laughs> One of the biggest moral choices in gaming history. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking, cringe I, so fucking hard. I just this, know I it. Called it too. <laughs> yeah, I, oh. I, I can't, I can't prove that I called this. I mean, we could if uh, the chat logs and everything, but I, I fucking called this super hard, and then <laughs> I, I had to explain to Kree and Peggy, like, you're not gonna fucking believe it. Oh, God. I feel stuff like this can be taken, like, as actual evidence as to how fucking shallow someone is. Yes. Yeah, this is why... This is this right here and his example that he's going to give is why I said that his channel being called... Uh, um, what is it? It's, uh, strictly Mediocre is him aspiring to get to such lofty heights because he is a fucking idiot and this is dog shit. In Fallout 3, you play as the lone wanderer of the capital wasteland, a character that, for the first time in their life, emerges from a pre-war vault and into a post-apocalyptic world set in the future. The objective at first is simple, meet people around the wasteland in hopes to find clues on the whereabouts of your missing father. Oh, your daddy passed through here already. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is exactly like the fucking like 60 minutes like mwah, dramatic recreation thing. Oh, I like the what? fucking sudden zoom into the black and white. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Is this a parody? Is this guy parodying <laughs> fucking, like, lame-ass video essayists? Or is this, like, legit in earnest? I have no idea. Because this no feels idea. like it's fucking... <laughs> have we been trolled? Are we covering a fucking April Fool's video? No. I, I, at least I don't think so. Oh my god. Hold on. I need, I need to check. The fucking <laughs> upload date to make sure. It's one month ago. So one yeah, month no. ago. What? <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Ah! I hate it. Oh, speaking of hate, I just one of the recommendations for the Act Man. Go away. Yeah, one month ago. This has mm -hmm. eight hundred and seventy-eight thousand views. Mm-hmm. What? What the? F Fuck, man. And a very positive like to dislike ratio. This is when this is how you know that the overwhelming majority of Bethesda's are idiots. It it does feel like Bethesda fans are fucking desperate for people to say their games are good, so any video saying so will just automatically do well. Yep. Cuz oh my god, how the f And this isn't a big channel either. This is this guy has like 8,000 subscribers. Uh, and he has a video that's probably going to reach a million views really fucking quickly with this pretentious, lame-ass fucking nothingness. Mm -hmm. This this reminds me of a meme I saw earlier today where it's just, the caption was uh, 2019 to 2023 be like, and it's just that clip from Tropic Thunder where he's talking about like, Oh, yeah, like, I studied real hard to get into the retard role. I watched them do all their retard things and all the retard <laughs> stuff that they liked and all <laughs> Never go full retard. Never go full retard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because cause that was his whole, that was the whole thing where he played a, a retarded character, but he was, he went too retarded. He was full retard. He... 
he was so indistinguishable that no one could tell that he wasn't in fact retarded but that was apparently like really a good thing to all this this little asian warlord tribe or whatever <laughs> it's fucking weird <laughs> smiling jack <laughs> yeah <laughs> they worship him <laughs> yeah cuz it's the only movie they have yeah, yeah. god that's actually kind of depressing the video this fucking garbage gets that many views like with no effort and with this lame editing mm -hmm. what the hell man I'm gone got what he came for and then left I'm assuming you'll do the same correct when you're thrust into this world you're likely to make your first stop at Megaton a city made of and surrounded by metal scraps. Yes. Do you realize what the problem there might be? Especially yeah. a working jet engine 200 years after that plane fucking crashed. Yeah. There may be quite a lot wrong with Megaton. In fact, it is probably one of the worst video game cities ever created. One, I, I should mention, that's not designed to be terrible intentionally so like the world is taking it as a total piss take this is supposed to be taken seriously yeah if i was trying to do a parody of like a post-apocalypse world of like mad max or even fallout or whatever megaton is the kind of city i would make and it would work because it's a parody yeah you're you're poking fun of and and Highlighting the good and the bad of something. Like, that's what parody used to be. It used to be, like, reveling in the stupidity and the greatness of what you were parodying. That's why uh, Spaceballs is so good. Because it, it revels in the stupidity of Star Wars, but also in the greatness of Star Wars at the same time. Yeah. The sheriff and the people of the city welcome you in with open arms. The citizens there seem friendly. I also want to point out too, on my video on Fallout 3, by uh, uh, where I cover many a true nerd, uh, I get a bunch of comments from people saying, Bro, the game is 15 years old. It's over a decade old. Why are you talking? I bet this guy doesn't get those comments because he's saying positive things about it. Of course he is. Yep. Yeah, I bet he doesn't at all. Remember, you can talk positively about anything for infinity, but if you say anything bad about something and it's more than five minutes old, why are you wasting your time on it? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, this this thing came out last year. It's like, yeah. Those those people are just those are just inane like squawkers. You just gotta filter those people out. They have nothing to say. Yeah. They're they're the literal no thoughts head empty must speak. Yeah. Yeah. The best way you can respond to them is literally just saying, well, I'm just responding to this video that was made like a month ago or a week ago. Because <laughs> then it's like, well, you're not complaining about them doing it. Because <laughs> if they then bitch like, oh, that's different. How? How is it different from them doing it? Like, I I'm not allowed to do it, but they are. What do, what do you mean? Well, they're being positive. Well, that just sounds like toxic positivity to me. Now, don't it? Yeah. Because Mania True Nerds video came out a decade after uh, Fallout 3 did, so... Yep. Yep. Share Bolt uniform and understand that you probably have no idea what's going on. Many of the town citizens are rather fascinated by your arrival and want to know more about you. This helps the player feel attached to the city as you gain a sense of belonging from their kindness. <laughs> oh god again how how little needs to be done for strictly mediocre to feel attached to a place oh also said hello to me this clip he's I showing that. right here feels like it's disingenuous because i don't think this is gob's first line to you mm. 
I feel like this, like, I'm pretty sure this is one of the lines that come after you've already spoken to him. You've, like, treated him nicely before. Yep. Yep, because he, he's like, uh, he calls you a smooth skin and uh, is worried that you're going to be mean to him. And you have to either, you know, you can either be mean to him or be nice, and then this is what you get if you're nice to him later. Yeah. I've never felt in any time playing Fallout 3 that the people of Megaton cared beyond the most basic, like, curiosity of, oh, hey, someone from a vault. Anyways. Yep. yep. Now, back to what I was doing. Yeah, I never felt like they actually gave a shit about me. Has this guy never been treated well his entire life? Is this like those men that think basic kindness isn't just basic decency and should be rewarded with free plapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I held the door open for you. What do you mean you won't go out with me? Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone is nice to you. You have your handful of those that don't take kind to your presence and to those you detest. While you're talking to people in hopes of getting info on what you're following. Like who? Who who says they hate you or something like that? Why do you detest them? Uh, strictly mediocre. Why? Because they weren't, didn't immediately give you meaningless platitudes? That's the thing, is I don't even think that's true either, because uh, Jericho just kind of has a rough personality in general, even when he's your companion. Like... I wouldn't call him friendly towards you in the way he acts. And Moriarty is just like... I don't even want to say a dirty businessman, but he's just like all about himself. So he's like doesn't really care that much, you know? Yeah, the only thing he cares about is whether or not you can pay him. Yeah. That's it. He doesn't really care whether you stay, go, what you do. It's literally just, do you have the money... To pay for my information. If you don't, then leave. This feels like the equivalent of, like, someone uh, tells a joke and you go, because <laughs> it's like, it, it, it prompted that much of a response. And then the person who told the joke describes it as like, oh yeah, you absolutely fucking died laughing at that joke. Yeah. Because it feels like everything is being stretched to the nth fucking degree here, where it's like, Oh, hey, Moira said, hey, you're the one from the vault, so now most of the town is curious about you and friendly towards you. Or Moriarty wants money, and Jericho is kind of a general asshole all our way around, so there are people who are not happy to see you now. It's like, what? You need better references than, like, just some basic dialogue. Yep. An ominous man in a suit stops you. He informs you of a nuke in the center of town that can go off at any point, and that there is another town filled with rich folk that wants it blown up with the people surrounding it. In return- That's not even true. There's one person, uh -huh. technically two if you count Burke himself, who wants to blow up the town. No, yeah, one else the in, town. no one else in Tenpenny Tower seems to give a shit or even fucking acknowledge that it happened. No. Yeah. This is... If I made a video criticizing games, and I made stretching claims, or even outright fucking making shit up like this, I would get fucking torn apart by these people. But because he's being positive, it's just a free pass, it's a great video. The yep. fuck they're man. allowed to stretch the truth because they're being positive about it. So it's fine if they're not completely honest about it. This is actually frustrating with the way just like people work. Where it's like, yeah, if I made misrepresentations like this. I would never fucking hear the end of it. it. It would be, like, almost deadly for my channel. 
Whereas someone like yeah. this can stretch to absurd fucking lengths, taking like the slightest things and turning them into the biggest deal. And it's like, no, nah, it's fine. He's being positive. It's good. It's great. Turn lots of money. The offer is essentially immoral. The sheriff hesitated, but he also requested you to work on the bomb. Only instead of detonating it, he wanted it disarmed to save the people. He couldn't offer much money because there wasn't much to give. The town isn't exactly rich. So you're given three choices. Which again doesn't make any fucking sense. If this is such a big trade hub and so many people come here, this town should be fucking loaded. Mm-hmm. Like, realistically speaking, this is your trade hub for the Capital Wasteland. Why in the hell is this town so poor? Yeah, this should be, like, the most well-off town in the entire Wasteland. Mm. The town doesn't want to blow up? I'm shocked. Yeah. Well, some, most of the town doesn't want to blow up. You have the fucking weirdo children of Adam that do because they're stupid. The biggest travesty of Fallout 3 is that the nuke blowing up and destroying Megaton wasn't canon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it allowed those fuckers to spread. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how, as Danger Dave puts it, how is everybody in Tenpenny Towers rich? Yeah. How? What do yeah. they do to get that wealth? Yep, that's one of the points I bring up, is they're, they're rich because the game developers say they are. They don't actually do anything to gain wealth, they're just wealthy because reasons. And yeah. this is a big part of world building, is you can have these rich characters if you want, if there's an explanation for why they're rich, that would help fill out the world and make it feel like more believable. Oh, mm -hmm. this guy runs oh. a weapons factory that makes new weapons from whatever scrap they can find. They melt it down and they use pre-war blueprints to make new, uh, 10 millimeter pistols or, uh, assault rifles or whatever. And because mm. of these new weapons on the market, they're highly valued, highly useful. They're like the top tier you can get of anything. And that's... Excuse me. And that's why he's wealthy. Yeah. There, you've just filled out part of the world that was desperately needing substance to it. What do we get? The rich. Why? The rich. Yeah, it's... Which, which sucks. This easily could have tied into the main storyline and main theme of the story. When I, when I talked about the rewrite of this and going with, like, the water guilds and things like that, stuff, people that would, like, hold this knowledge sacred, have that be, like, this. these are all members of the waters guild, the dowsing guild, or whatever. The ones that bring fresh water. So, of course, they're fucking rich. Everybody needs to pay their ransom or they all fucking die. That could have easily been tied into it. Yeah. Like, so fucking easy. And that also could have tied into why Megaton was actually poor, even though it's a massive trade hunt, uh, because they're being extorted by the Water Guild. Yep. It's just so stupid that... It's like, you could have made how they're getting their money a part of the, like, moral choice, where it's like, yeah, these people are stuck up and kind of assholes, but, look, but like, they're rich for a reason. Like, look what they're doing. They're actually improving the wasteland, even though it's in a manner that is maybe not the most friendly. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but they're, they're also needed because they know how to maintain this stuff. Yep. Exactly. So getting rid of them would be a problem. Oh, it's just so annoying. And they have a factory right next to Tenpenny tower that they could have used as like, Oh yeah, that's where we make our weapons. Or anything and shit like that. Anything. And it's just like, yeah, that's how they get their wealth. But no, they literally just made it a fucking random robot factory that has no use in the actual story other than Moira's stupid fucking, oh, my, my book, my book to help people by giving them wrong information that'll get them killed. Yeah, I, I 
don't even like the fact that Moira Brown sends you on a quest to step on a fucking landmine immediately should tell you that this character is mentally fucking retarded. Like, the, the the grocery store thing be like, okay, she's just being fucking cheeky. You can play that off. The stand on a landmine thing is like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing a book I... for the mostly illiterate wasteland. Yeah. I, yeah. I just... <laughs> You said the landmine thing. The one that popped into my head was, oh, get irradiated. Uh, and I, it just made me think of standing in the puddle in Megaton. Plap, 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 get irradiated, get irradiated, get irradiated. <laughs> <laughs> click, 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 get irradiated, get irradiated, yes. get irradiated. <laughs> <laughs> one, you can help neither and just let it be. Yeah, but uh, no one, no one really does that. Most, the vast majority, just do that because both of the quests are stupid. One requires you to destroy a town for reasons. The other requires you to have specific capabilities to even do the uh, the disarm to begin with. So if you don't have that, if you're, that's not your character, just leave. That's the majority of people. If they're not gonna disarm the bomb. They're not gonna blow the bomb up. Kratos is so dumb. Kratos is always plapping on the mind. Hey, it's a joke. Also, this idea that, like, nobody does this. It's like, yeah, there are. There's plenty. I've seen plenty of people do, like, streams and videos and stuff where they played the bad guy in their video where they made like all the most evil choices they could in the storyline. I and think stuff. what he means is nobody does this as in nobody does the quest or sorry. Most people I know, don't. but, but he's also in general been saying throughout the video that like, Oh, why do people do this? But they don't do this. And oh, it's like, yeah. but they do, they do. They literally do. In fact, when I'm playing Fallout 3, which I don't do very much anymore, I always pick the evil stuff because I hate these characters. <laughs> I want them to suffer, so I always pick the most evil one. I don't do it in New Vegas because I actually like the characters in New Vegas. I like being the good guy in there. In Fallout 3, I love being the asshole because fuck all these characters. When I'm in a disingenuousness contest and my opponent is a Bethesda fan. <laughs> yeah. <maybe>. Yeah. <laughs> You don't understand. Long, I God. want to hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> Made the bomb, killing hundreds of innocents and getting rich off of it. Or three, disarm the bomb and leave the town forever in your debt as they worship you as their savior. Remember, chat, this is what he said was one of the biggest moral choices in all of gaming history. This. This literal third grade kindergarten bullshit. Like, I'm I'm eight years old and this is deep. This is deep and philosophical. Yeah, it's crazy too. The the like split on this as well, where like there are Bethesda shills who will defend Bethesda to death, but still say that yeah, this is dumb. And then you have the other half who think it's like the most in-depth like deepest choice you could ever have in a video game it's insane. it's like what the yeah what the hell like how is there just this many people who think that this is just so amazing when there are bethesda shills who defend this game who don't think it's a good thing it's so weird biggest moral choices you make in the game. On one hand, you're completely broke and could use a large sum of money. But on the other hand, you just met these people who welcomed you and were friendly towards you. You had you, time. Oh my god. I'm sorry, That's when this, so bullshit. This is so it's fucking overblowing you. all of this. To, god, it's, it's actually what? dishonest how much he's overblowing fucking everything here. It's frustrating. Yeah, because again, you... 
You how how do you know you're fucking broke? What if you are considered rich? What if a hundred caps is like an insane amount of money? Because like, you stepped you out of the vault the and came to Megaton. That that's that's the premise here. You stepped out of the vault and walked into Megaton and you have no money. What if you didn't go straight to Megaton? What if you went off adventuring and you found a boatload of stuff to sell and you come back here and you're fucking loaded? Yeah. What if you looted a bunch of stuff from the vault before you left and sold it like most players do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I'm also, sorry, Jack Rat is a huge thing that people do all the time in these games. Yeah. Also, did Tenpenny Tower is friendly to you as well. Like, once you get past Gustavo and get into the actual building, when you first walk into the areas where they're selling stuff, they're really friendly to you at first because they want you to buy stuff. It's only after you start questioning stuff that they start to be like, oh, well, hmm. <laughs> this is so dumb. It's like, oh, well, when this town, when this town throws platitudes at me, oh, they're the greatest guys ever. But when this town does it, well, they're just naughty, naughty, naughty. I don't like them. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck off. The amount of dishonesty by misrepresentation here is actually staggering. This is the kind of thing that might be worth poking at with, like, a scripted video. Where, like... Yeah. The, the, just, the amount that shit is overblown here to try and make this game sound good and deep. It... <sighs> exceptionally dishonest. I, I'm even tempted to call it lying, because... What he's saying just isn't there. Like, basic... Yeah. Like, friendliness from a character does not equate to, oh, they see that you're from a vault and they're being friendly to you and that, that's a good thing. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yeah, it's so dumb. God, Tempe Tower, it's such an enigma with people who like this game. <laughs> It's just crazy to me sometimes because it's like they portray them like a lot of the people I've talked to who like this game whenever they bring up Tempe Tower, they're like, oh, well, yeah, but they hate ghouls and, you know, they, they shouldn't. They, it's wrong of them. That That's horrible. And it's like, OK, the ghouls they're keeping out will kill them no matter what you do. They are completely justified for getting rid of them. Yeah. They are within their right to preserve their own lives because... If you help Roy his way, he'll unleash ghouls into Tempe Tower to kill everybody. And he was going to do that with, with or without you. So they were completely in the right for kill, for having you go take care of them. Worse and if yet. you do it yep. your way and you actually get everyone to agree to let them in, he just kills them all and throws them all in a fucking closet anyway. Yeah, it it is bizarre how people treat that quest, that area of the game in general. Because you'll see people justify it as, well, even if everyone is killed, it does become a home for ghouls. So that's that that makes it all right that all these people died who maybe didn't deserve to die. And all these yeah. innocent Someone... people that weren't part of the fucking plot to blow up Megaton. Someone being a full of themselves stuck up rich person doesn't inherently make them a bad person or deserving of death. Just because Tenpenny and Burke are fucking evil doesn't mean everyone in that tower deserves to die. Yeah. Especially when one of them is literally an advocate for like ghoul rights and stuff. He yeah, he's literally like life. a yeah, he's literally like considered a hero of the wasteland and was friends with a ghoul and actually wants ghouls to be allowed to live there. Oh, well, yeah, he dies too. Fuck him. Hey, but it's fine, though, because ghouls get to live there now. It's so fucking dumb. I hate it. I it's how do people who like this game even like do this shit? Shouldn't they be like, oh, yeah, but. Yeah, th see, but this makes it so much more in depth. Like these characters are actually decent people, and when you it, it, and what you thought was the good thing to do, it's actually the bad thing to do. Oh, but no, they don't even do that. They don't even try to spin it that way. They literally are just like, 
fucking empty headed smooth brain take of oh but uh, they didn't immediately support the ghouls so that makes them evil so they deserve to die like, fucking what I, and I would just ask these people, like, so if a stranger came up to your doorstep one day and just asked if him and his friends could move into your house and you know nothing about them, you would just you, you would just do that. You would just let them live there for free. I'm willing to bet they'd probably say no. And it's like, OK, well, now that God. you've told them no, they're now going to plot to kill you. God, OK, you... they're going to kill you and take your house. Is it wrong for you? to call the police and then they potentially get into a deadly shootout with them. Oh, no, I, I, that, that would make me a bigot. Oh, shut up. I really, really, really do not want to get political, but it does remind me of like the border crossing crisis where it's like a lot of the rich elites are saying, yeah, just let them in, just let them in, be kind. And then a bunch of the people being let in, get shipped to like Martha's vineyard or whatever. And they all flip their shit that, these dirty pores are in our area. Yep. Yeah. It, it very much reminds me of that, where it's like, yeah, the people uh, who praise this game, they don't actually have to deal with the consequences of an entire tower full of innocent people, aside from, like, three at most that are actually evil, uh, being wiped out just completely for no good reason. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even consider Chief Gustavo to be evil because he, he's right. He ends up being right. Like yeah. whether it's by happenstance or not, he is right. And outside of that, he never says anything about supporting the plot for to blow up Megaton or anything. He's just kind of a a gruff security guard who actually wants to protect the place that he lives because he likes the place that they live. I would have to double check his dialogue to see if it's like just general racism towards ghouls or whether he feels, uh, um, God, why, uh, why can I not think of the word? He, um, he sees Roy as a threat either way. Like I, I'd have to look at his dialogue, but even then, like, yeah, it's, it's, he, I, I agree with you. He, he's not necessarily evil because he's he's right. These people do mean him harm. They will kill him if given the chance, as evidenced yeah. by the fact that they kill him given the chance. I'll be right yeah, back. Yeah, I think I think he is generally racist towards ghouls. I do think that was a thing, but he does have a suspicion that because he's been so like adamant about not letting Roy and his friends live there and to go find somewhere else to live, which they could easily do that he might do something. So he, he has you go take care of him because he doesn't care because they're just ghouls in his eyes. It's not a big deal. They're just ghouls. Just go kill him. However, happenstancely, he does turn out to be correct that they were plotting to kill everybody in the entire tower. So it's like, he's not exactly the best person. He's not a good guy. But he does end up being proven right, and he does end up, like, because of his actions, saves everybody in the tower. So, yeah, not exactly a good character, but not evil either. Now, let us continue. I know Kree said B or B, but let's, let's get through a little more. Because I guarantee we're going to stop before Kree gets back. I know the citizens, whereas you have no idea what the other people are like in this other town. When you make the choice to just The good choice. As if, you know, you needed the intention of not blowing up a fucking town is a good thing, right? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Just just in case you were so stupid you didn't realize that not nuking a city of innocent people is the good option. <laughs> you mean the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good or bad, it's still wrong. <laughs> yep.
yeah his voice is annoying that vocal fry he does is oh it's very grating <laughs> despite only making a small portion of the population or a, a small portion of the timpani tower population ghouls were solely responsible for mass murder yeah. <laughs> what did emil mean by this <laughs> <laughs> The townspeople are forever grateful. If you're given keys to a house, every now and then the citizens will stop you to show their gratitude by giving you all sorts of loot. Wow, way overselling what they do for you. Yeah, they give you like random bits and bobs like, oh, here's a soda. Here's here's maybe a stim pack at best. Here's a can of beans. Yep. Like my guy, no one gives a shit. Mm hmm. Also, what you're describing, Tenpenny Tower does the same thing. They give you a key to a house to live in. They they shower you with praise. They give you stuff. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like the only thing different between between these two places is that one asked you to blow up the bomb, the other didn't. That's it. They're basically carbon copies of each other. Yeah. If you're good, stay within the town. Your kind act circulates across the wasteland as radio stations spread the news. At radio stations? You mean the only one who sits in high judgment of anything you fucking do like a piece of shit he is? Yeah, again, we've been over this. There's no way that he should actually know that it was you, and only through, like, piecing together loose bits of possible evidence, he concludes that you are potentially the one behind it, putting you at serious risk. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and outside of that, you know, what does it matter? If you just never turn the radio station on, which I rarely do, because I don't really care for listening to the goofy music while doing stuff, because that's not how I like to play Fallout. It, other than that, it's like, you would never even know that you were, like, implicated, because... Outside of one random event where there's some like megaton survivors and they will attack you if they see you. That's it. That is the only consequence of blowing up megaton. And they are literally just like people in rags with like a 357 pistol or a no, they don't have 350, a 32 pistol or a lead pipe and they're wearing cloth armor. And it's like, oh, okay. What a big consequence. Such such amazing. Yep. It's it's so dumb. This character also gains a large amount of good karma, which will help you in many interactions later on in the game. Such as I don't remember good karma helping anything. Everyone has the same generic dialogue. Especially in the storyline. Like, does, does karma actually affect anything in the storyline at all? I don't believe I don't... so. There's like... In fact, the only karma check I can think of is for negative karma to get into Paradise Falls. Where if, like, you're... Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're evil enough, they'll just let you in for free. Yeah, and the only other thing I can think of is companions, but it's like, at that point, it's literally just flavor text. It's like, do you want the good companion, or do you want the morally good companions, or do you want the morally bad companions? Either way, you're getting companions. Mm. Yeah.
to gain from doing this, but the same cannot be said for the latter choice. I'm sorry. Just when he's uh, <laughs> rotating around his character and he's got that mouth open, no thoughts, head empty expression on his face. That just feels like this entire <laughs> video. Yeah. What did I miss while I was gone? He said, the good choice, save Megaton. It's like as if you needed in big, bold letters that not nuking the town filled with innocent people is the good choice. <laughs> kind of like the one on screen here. The bad yes. choice, destroying Megaton. Thank you for spelling that out for me. I wouldn't have known if you told me. Yep. No one ever could have possibly got that this was the, the bad guy choice. Yeah. See, that's truly the genius of this quest, is that it is so morally gray, it's hard to tell which of the two options is, like, the morally good one to choose. And it's something you have to figure out for yourself by, like, really digging into it and looking at, like, the context clues and stuff. Yeah. It's... <laughs> it is really funny to me that a lot of the people consider this, like, morally gray and it's such an in-depth thing, and it's like, okay, so then if we were to ask basically anyone who's played this game what they think the good choice is and what the bad choice is in terms of like morals we're gonna get a good even split right because it's such a morally gray thing right <laughs> it's yeah. like i'm willing to bet 99 percent of the people would say like oh yeah no obviously fucking blowing up megaton is bad it's like hmm almost <laughs> like this isn't a morally gray choice it's like the uh, trolley problem but more retarded where, yeah. um, with the trolley problem, the trolley's going down a track towards five people, uh, who cannot escape. They will die. You can hit a switch, and it'll change tracks to kill one person. People legitimately pick not hitting the switch, because they'll feel directly responsible for that one person dying because they took part in it. Whereas, if they just ignore it, it's, like, they can... I, I don't agree with this, but they justify to themselves that they're not responsible because they were not part of it. They just happened to be there. Which is I, so stupid. It, it is like, stupid, but yeah, I can at least ugh. understand that reasoning a lot more than you can either kill a bunch of people for no reason or you can save them. What do you do? And that'd be treated as like a big moral choice. Mm. That's why this is worse than the trolley problem. Yeah. Yeah. Everything in Fallout 3 is great, except for the choices. <laughs> Ten Penny Tower is a wonderful place to live. Do not get near. Let me in, goddammit. Again with the ghouls. It was all a matter of time. They were told they can't live here. Again, he's trying to make it sound ominous, but... Uh, <laughs> do you... Hey, hey. Strictly mediocre. What happens if you let the ghouls in a ten penny tower? Describe to us yeah. how the scenario plays out. I'm very curious to see how he's going to try and frame this because if he tries to say like, "Oh well, they they're all clearly like bad the people ghoul. because they don't let the ghouls in," and it's like, but they were right not to. The yeah, game makes pagan. it very clear. We haven't considered the argument that some of these people might make. They deserved it for being racist. Of course. It's just so fucking dumb. Stop with the cinematic sound of Yeah, it's over the top. I hate it. Yeah. It's Everything really about this video I despise. The over the top editing, the the way of talking and presenting things, the fucking misrepresenting things to the point of fucking lying. Like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. God, yeah, this is gonna be very interesting because like we discussed, Tenpei Tower is such an enigma where it's like it almost actually has depth to it, but nobody who likes this game will ever acknowledge it. Yeah. Which is really funny. I complained offhand one day about how I thought that heap of metal on the horizon was a bit of an eyesore. I assure you. Again, and the big problem is he can't even fucking see it from where he is. Yeah, can't even it's see it. Times as much in death. I didn't mean to press that, sorry. I fucked up there. I meant to unmute and I forgot to move the mouse. Um, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, this fucking movie 
sound effect thing is really, really fucking lame for, like, when it's applied to this lame-ass quest. Mm hmm Like, oh my god, I hate it so much. Can you just present things like a normal fucking person? And stop fucking jerking yourself off over how cinematic you're making everything? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it just comes off as pretentious. Pretentious and indulgent. Yeah. Yeah, it's such as right. You can't see it from. You can't see Megaton from the tower. Yep. I complained offhand one day about how I thought that heap of metal on the horizon was a bit of an eyesore. I assure you, they're worth ten times as much in death as they are in life. Think of it as helping speed along the process of natural selection. Don't lose any sleep over it. I do hate the film stuff. He put more effort into making this uh, explosion seem significant than Bethesda themselves did. Yeah, because yep. it, it's such a dud. Yeah, it really fucking hurt. It's it's so conflicting the dialogue with the actual like editing he's put over. It. It's so unfitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like putting like an epic theme around a wet fart. It's just like what the fuck? It is. He's trying to make this look like, like an epic movie trailer for like well I, I guess just think of it like a really epic action movie where they do that sort of editing. Um yeah. he's trying to do that for for this. Do you, do you want to kill a bunch of people for no reason or not? The fact that he thinks this deep is fucking astounding. Yeah. Pleased. I had help, of course. Quite right. And you are to offer him the reward we discussed. Now, all this bright light and wind has given me quite a thirst. Where's my scotch? To them, what you did was a show. A grand display of lethal fire that reached the skies was viewed with beauty rather than horror. The thought of the atrocity they committed went entirely over their heads. They didn't care about the people that died because they never really met them. Yeah. But you did. <laughs> oh, come on! Oh my, oh god. my god, I you hate think... this! Oh, it's so pretentious. I hate it! But you did meet them! Yeah, what if I didn't like them? What if I met them? Because they were all but... insufferable one-note pieces of shit. They yeah, what if nice that's the reason you. I... They were nice to you. Did you ever consider that? <laughs> what if me meeting them is what made me consider blowing them up in the first place? Like, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't have done it, but because I met them, I'm just like, oh my god. No, you know what? Yeah, blow these fuckers up. Yeah. Oh, YouTube, why do you punish me? YouTube popped up its recommendation, ice cream pancakes, and then my stomach growled at me significantly. Like, oh, I fucking hate you, YouTube. <laughs> Probably doesn't help by the fact that I'm eating right now. <laughs> if I had my model on screen, I'd do that little smile and look at the camera thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fucking cringy. Yeah, it's really bad. This... <laughs> We've covered a lot of bad videos. I'm not going to say this is uh, the worst because it's so far it isn't the worst in terms of like what's actually being said. As far as the presentation, this is probably one of the worst. I don't know why it's so difficult to just talk like a normal person. Why you have to do all this flashy, showy bullshit that fucking. You know? Yeah. It just comes off as manipulative, too. It's uh, And it is. Again, he's it is. super ominous. He tied in the ghoul thing, which is unrelated to Megaton entirely. And he's trying yeah. to show, like, everybody in the town thinks this way. And when it's only these two jackasses that think this way. Yeah. 
Tree really needs to include his VTuber model on stags at some point? No. Uh, no, that, that, it's being completely separate. Uh, the model is for the gaming streams. It's for the VTuber streams. Stags are not VTuber streams, and actual videos aren't VTuber streams. Uh, I'm keeping these things separate. Yep. The uh, the VGAs are like the only <coughs> exception to that. Well, it's not a stag either. Because yeah. I also use it on um, the the streams where we cover like chills and nuke, which aren't stags yeah. either. Mm. So fair. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Uh, pretentious doesn't feel like it's nearly strong of uh, bleh, sh nearly strong enough of a word to describe this trash. This guy is huffing his own fart so hard that he's in danger of an OD. Yeah. Yeah, this is fucking awful and I hate it. Is there a word for pretentious that's stronger than pretentious? I feel like we need Probably. one. When's the next chill stream? I don't know. I don't have a plan for that right now. But I do plan on doing the chills binge stream at some point. We are getting pretty backlogged with nuke videos. <laughs> yeah, he's uploading a bit faster than uh, he has for the rest of the year. We've got like three now, four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, he's probably got a Christmas list he wants to fill out. <laughs> I gotta go Christmas shopping. I need more video content out now. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus Christ. I nearly choked on a french fry there, because I tried reading a comment. Please do it on Christmas. The day people spend with their family? <laughs> I might be busy that day. Yeah, no. We could do it before or after, but we cannot do it on Christmas. We're going to be <laughs> very yeah. busy that day. Tree fucking oh, dies on stream. I, uh... <laughs> I got my nephew this uh it's a it's a semi truck, right? But it's shaped like a dinosaur. So it's got it like it, it's like the T-Rex bones that make up uh this truck and it's so that he can put his other dinosaurs and stuff in it cuz he loves dinosaurs. I cannot wait for him to see this thing. It is fucking big too. Like it was it was <laughs> I was doing all the wrapping. I'm like, "Oh, thank God the 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 wrapping can actually fit around it." Jesus. I can't wait! I can't wait to see it on uh, Christmas Day. When he when he comes by, his presents. He's like, "Oh, Uncle!" I'm like, "Yeah, here's your present." Um, I still can't get over that. <laughs> the choking. What choking? Dude, I just I just love that. you. <laughs> yeah, just that. <laughs> he fucking scared me. Actually, it was so loud. I didn't expect it. I thought uh, I thought you were being garroted or something. Like you were. The fuck you, you are know, you guys talking Agent about? Agent Forty Seven showed up to your house and he's taking you. Out. I think these guys are going <laughs> schizo. Nothing happened. <laughs> well, the chat's also going schizo because they're literally asking if you're okay and like, what the hell was that? The first thing, of course, they're going <laughs> schizo. Have you seen the things they've said about me for the past two months? <laughs> I'm starting to think maybe they're right. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing happened. It's on your heads. <laughs> Um, I haven't done my Christmas shopping yet, but I'm, uh, I'm going to go to the bookstore next week and, uh, actually this week, because today's the first day of the new week. Um, my niece likes to draw, so I'm going to get her, like, a book for learning to draw. Nice. Yeah. Like, the only gift I know to get anyone is that. Everyone else is like, I guess I'm just going to default to getting them chocolate or alcohol or both. That's one thing I like. My grandmother, I like getting the Whitman samplers for her because when she was a she was a little girl, her uh, her grandfather would give her Whitman samplers back in the day. So I like giving her that for uh, Christmas. Anyways, you guys continue. I am going to get something for my belly because it's fucking growling. Wow, this guy is going AFK on stream. Yeah. I would Mr. never do that. Not AFK on stream. I would never do that to my audience. 
<laughs> I mean, besides the fact that you just did it a few minutes ago and we went on without you. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. I also have a BRB screen for the VTuber stream, so I haven't used yet. <laughs> Actually, I probably should have used that when I was eating yesterday. Yeah, it probably would have been the <laughs> best time to use it. <laughs> For being given your own room in the hotel, and the loads of caps that were promised to you. Once you receive those things, you're off to continue your journey in the wasteland. Over the radio broadcast, you're the suspected reason that the bomb went off. Regulators, wasteland vigilantes that target the evil in the area, begin chasing after you. This is, again, one of the most frustrating misrepresentations people make, and he showed a Many a True Nerd clip earlier. I almost wonder if he took this idea from Many a True Nerd. They do not come after you for blowing up the town. They come after you for low karma, whatever the source of that low karma may be. If you max out negative karma purely by stealing tin cans, they will come after you to try to kill you. This is not a reaction. <clears throat> it's one of the most frustrating fucking things ever with people defending this game. If you blow up Megaton, bounty hunters will come after you. No, they won't. They will not. Not for blowing up the town, for the negative karma you get, which can be negated. If they're coming after you for blowing up the town, They'd come after you regardless of whether your karma was uh, negative or not. In fact, it's even worse because if you do blow up the town and then you uh, donate a bunch of water to one of the water beggars and get uh, uh, good karma, you'll get the Talon Company coming after you for being a good person. So it makes even less sense. If you have max karma before blowing up the town, your karma goes to neutral. Yes, because the range is uh, negative 1,000 to positive 1,000. And nuking Megaton removes uh, 1,000 karma. So if you're at neutral, uh, like pure neutral zero, it'll uh, max out your negative karma. If you're positive, it'll bring you down to zero, which is like perfect neutral. God, it's the same shit every fucking time with these people. I'm so goddamn sick of it. Why can't they just be fucking honest for once? Um, are you still there, Pagan? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm... I hate this. <laughs> I just hate how disingenuous everyone is with this game. Yeah. Because it is every time. It's like... Anytime someone defends this game, they don't... Try to use what's actually there. They have to do this stretching and twisting bullshit. And misrepresenting fucking everything. To make it look like the deepest, most in-depth fucking greatest game ever. And every time it's the same shit. The bounty hunters come after you for blowing up Megaton. No, they don't. They don't. They factually do not. Shut the fuck up. Yep, that's a lie. You're just spreading misinformation to try and get fucking sympathy. I hate it. Uh, what was that other thing that they... There was something Matt and Miss. Oh right, the fucking terminal thing where he was like, um, he he mentions like, oh goddamn, why am I forgetting this? It's been it's been a long time, but still. There's a whole bunch of things, so I don't even know what you're referring to. Uh, it has to do with uh, Canterbury Commons and the fucking right. Superhero okay, so stuff. the one with that is. He's explaining how there's um, lots of, like, people assumed that there was little choice in this game because they didn't go out in the world to uh, explore and find all the hidden choices that are out there. For example, the Superhuman Gambit has a secret uh, extra ending where if you read a certain terminal, um, 
a terminal entry pre-war where a fan mail says that uh, they want to see the ant uh, the ant ant bleh where they want to see the antagonizer um redeemed you can use that to make her uh stand down and uh like become a good person and th this is the reason why uh people assume there's a little choice in the game is because they didn't go out to find these uh, hidden choices it's the only fucking one that exists in the entire game yeah yeah that that's the one the fact that it's literally the only one in the entire game and he tries to portray it as like the norm like oh yeah this is just how it is and people just aren't going out of their way enough to find it it's like motherfucker it's one instance in the entire game where that happens it doesn't happen for any other quest fuck off yep In your travels, you'll find Megaton refugees that attempt to kill you for revenge. Besides, that one has always been weird to me because how does Megaton have refugees when everyone except Moira died? Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to be implied that, like, oh, they were outside of the town when it happened, so they weren't in the blast, but it's like, but we never see anyone leave. Yeah. <sighs> then in a new video, he flat out admits that that's the only instance wishing there were more. Yeah, I point that out in my Fallout 4 analysis. Besides earn caps Megaton would have offered you, there really isn't much to gain from taking this route. The consequences are far greater, and while the reward may seem big, perhaps Megaton in chasing after you. On rare occasions in your travels, you'll find Megaton refugees that attempt to kill you for revenge. Besides earning double the caps Megaton would have offered you, there really isn't much to gain from taking this route. There literally is. You got a better looking apartment. Yeah, you get a better house. Are, are you seriously just going to leave out the fact that you basically get a carbon copy of the reward you would have gotten from Megaton? <laughs> Bruh. And also, I, hold on, I, I need to look this up. How much karma do you get for disarming the bomb? I don't know. Okay, uh, rewards, 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 uh, bomb is disarmed, 200 karma. Okay, that's not as extreme as the minus 1000 karma, but, like, <laughs> it, it just, it seems to me as though, like, Again, it's just a misrepresentation. He cites the bounty hunters. You're going to get bounty hunters if you're, like, really good or really evil anyways. If you do, like, literally... I, I don't know if 200 karma is enough to get the bounty hunters after you. But if you do, like, one more quest and get good karma, guess what? Bounty hunters are coming after you for being too good. Yep. I know it's very easy to get the bounty hunters after you with good karma because I barely did any of the quests in Megaton and when I left and walked down the road to where that uh, Metro was the um, the talent company Merc spawned and attacked me and it's like they were calling me a goody two shoes and I'm like I, I haven't even done anything yet like I've talked to a couple of NPCs at Megaton and done maybe one or two quests for them and then left. That's it. That's all I've done in the game so far. And I'm being called a goody two-shoes. Worthy enough of being hunted down. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, they're so anal about that. It's to the point where it's like, Oh, you put, a, you put some change in that homeless man's cup? Well, aren't you just a goody two-shoes? We're here to kill you. 
Like, it's that level of insane where it's just like, you do one good thing, no matter how minuscule it is. Yeah. And that's enough to be deemed like, oh, you're he's, a goody two-shoes that needs to be killed. Here's actually the perfect example from uh, Father Elijah Cole, like, years ago. When he exited the vault, uh, Vault 101, he didn't do anything in the wasteland. He traveled uh, west and ran into regulators who were already hired to kill him, even though he hadn't done anything outside of the vault to gain or lose karma. He gained that much karma in the vault to get reg uh, uh, Talon Company after him. The fuck? It just goes to show how insanely shallow this is. I also looked it up. Um, I can't find an exact level for uh, Bounty Hunters coming after you. But the follow wiki lists uh, good and evil karma. So, like, just getting into those areas from the neutral zone is uh, plus and minus 250. So, Megaton uh, quest gives you 200. Literally, a couple more good deeds will push you over and you'll uh, get uh, talent company after you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I have returned. Welcome back. I assume the video did not magically get better while I was gone. No, it did not. He he just finished saying that uh, besides getting some more caps, there's no point. There's no real benefit to blowing up Megaton. And keep in mind, he's looking strictly at the quest rewards too. You can make an argument that if you properly like loot Megaton before blowing it up, it is far more beneficial. Because if you're going to destroy the town anyways, why not loot the entire thing? What were you worried about? Your karma? It's like, yeah. I just joined. I can't believe that some people still think Fallout 3 is deep. This feels like intentional misrepresentation at this point. Because, um... Like, the, the level he's stretching things... Reaches into what I would consider, like, outright dishonesty and lying territory. Where, like, I think it's a really hard, a high bar to cross, like, to claim that someone is lying. But when you have someone misrepresenting something to the absurd degrees that this guy has, it feels like lying. Yeah, because there's no way he does not know about the fucking alternate uh, house that you can get. Or like player home, I should it's, say. It's possible he might just not be counting that because um, they they cancel each other out by existing, you know. Kinda. Because he's, he's. But then he used. But he used that as a thing earlier because he said, "Oh, they they're so nice. They give you a player home to live with them." It's like Timpy Tower does that. He he did mention that you get the apartment too. To be fair, he's just not bringing it up now with. Uh, what benefit is there to nuking Megaton? Also, uh, two dollars from Chuckles Honeysuck. Thank you. Who has more Riz? Sech, Pagan, or Femtosis? There's no such thing as Femtosis. Well, I'm gonna be the one out. What the fuck is Riz? I assume that means, like, style? Uh, rizzing someone is basically like, you know, trying to woo them. Okay, like so... To, like, how, how good are you at being, like, a person who gets, you know, women or whatever? Riz or is booty. charisma Riz is slash charisma swag. swag. So I've got a charisma of zero, so I'm already out of the race. <laughs> you know <laughs> it is funny some of the comments I've gotten on the uh, many a true nerd video is oh so speech 100 zero charisma is possible it's like <laughs> it's like that image of like the crying cat with the thumbs up it's like 
thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is are far greater, and while the reward may seem big at first, you'll realize how insignificant the amount you earned was as you earn more caps throughout the game. God. It, it, it actually feels disingenuous that he isn't even considering looting the town. Because yeah. you get so much out of that. You get some decent weapons, especially if you raid, like, the armory. Um, you get a lot of caps from selling shit. Like, again, every time I play Fallout 3 and I do that route, I'll load up what I can in my inventory, travel to Tenpenny Tower, sell it, and then fast travel back and forth until the entire city is fucking pillaged for everything it's worth. Like, yeah, I'm not going to sell tin cans, but anything worth taking, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... it's just so weird because it's like, yeah, obviously you're going to do that if you're going to blow up the town. You're a bad person. There's nothing stopping you from just stealing everything, selling it, blowing the place up, getting a big profit off of it, getting a new, a nicer place to live... And it's like, and what do you lose? A tiny bit of karma that you can easily get back by just giving some water away. And a couple of shopkeepers who are basically replaced with the tinpenny shopkeepers. So you basically lose nothing. I wouldn't consider it replaced since they exist. Regard like, if you don't blow up Megaton, both sets of shopkeepers exist. But, like, yeah, you lose a couple of shopkeepers who aren't that significant when there's a bunch of others in the game. Yeah. It's like you don't really lose anything and uh, what he mentioned was like oh well the town's in a radiated cesspit okay i was never planning to go back there anyway it doesn't matter and oh you get you get uh some megaton survivors that will attack you okay they literally have shovels and cloth armor i i don't care and they are so rare they are such a rare encounter you likely will never even encounter them in the game I've seen them a grand like, total of once when I've nuked Megaton probably like 40 times. It's not yeah, to say I've exactly. played through the game all the way 40 times, but like doing uh, research videos and like testing things and uh, the old playthroughs I did when I still liked this game when it first came out, um, I I've seen them a grand total of once. And that was like Same. since I made my YouTube channel and started making these videos. I used to play Fallout 3 back in the day a lot because, you know, I wasn't as critical as I was back then. When I did a run where I blew up Megaton at the start of the game, I that playthrough went on for a very, very long time. I saw the Megaton survivors once that entire playthrough. And it was such a nothing run into because it's literally just people that immediately attack you and they have like n basically no weapons outside of like melee weapons. So it's just like one, two, three and you walk away and it's like, okay, that was nothing. And then of course he tried to conflate the whole fucking, the regulators will come after you, even though we've already established that it's karma that makes them come after you. Not your, not specific things that you do, not specific actions. So you'll get them no matter what. If you're playing a bad character who gets a low enough karma, which you don't even need that much, they will come after you regardless. Yeah. I want to grab the super chat quickly, then a comment. Two dollars from Chuckles Honeysuck. Thank you. Megaton has fallen. Uh, bleh. Megaton has fallen. Billions must crash the desktop. <laughs> <laughs> Kratosis, if you were to remake this mission and you had to keep the bomb, how would you make more nuanced options? You would have to turn it into a quest line. It can't be a standalone quest because I don't think you can build enough nuanced options for this to make sense with a single quest when we're talking about destroying an entire town. Um, you would have to justify why there's a bomb there. But you could come up with, like, a scenario where two towns are in competition with each other or a conflict for some reason. Where, like, you build up to, like, again, you have to justify the nuke being there. But you can have it be, like, an ever-looming presence in the town where, like, people 
refer to it and talk about it. It's like, okay, like, okay, maybe you do a raid on the town. It's like, be fucking careful around the nuke. We do not want this thing to go off because obviously it will vaporize us or whatever. And then through the course of the quest, you build up and build up and build up uh, the conflict to the point where maybe like the opposing side wants to just blow it up to get rid of these people where it's like they're too much of a threat to us I know there's innocent people in there we have to blow it up or you have a character that is full radical like no these people need to be destroyed you know but that's far more thought than Bethesda put into it and of Excuse me. Obviously, that's not a fully flushed out idea. Yeah. All right. Since both of you have walked away from the stream to go get something to eat, uh, it's now my turn. I'll be right back. All righty. Five dollars from Chuckles Honey Suck. Thank you. It's game breaking because the game only has one ending faction: the good guy Brotherhood of Steel, who treat you like a good guy, even if you're a mass murderer or slaver. Yeah, that's another problem with this game. Everyone just treats you pretty much neutrally for the most part. Unless you're in uh, Paradise Falls or I think it's Megaton. Where, like, if you have good karma or negative karma, um, characters in the town will give you stuff. Like, if you're a bad guy, random slavers will be like, hey, here's some ammo or whatever. Um, otherwise, no one seems to care, which is insane to me. You can be the monster that nuked Megaton, sold a child into slavery, um, burned Harold, uh, whatever else, and you can still walk into Galaxy News Radio and 3Dog will treat you like you're a friendly person. As if you're not, like, the worst person in the wasteland. And as if... It, bleh. And as if... It, fuck! And as if he doesn't spend all day, every day, talking shit about you for the evil that you do. It's just complete insanity to me. And people think this is a good game, by the way. Some minor quests that are exclusive to Megaton, but... Hold on. Realize how insignificant the amount you earned was as you earn more caps throughout the game. You lose out on some minor quests that are exclusive to Megaton, but... Minor? Like, what? You mean turning in scrap metal Walter? That's nothing. God, he, he really is doing the fucking many a true nerd thing. Why does it always come back to this? Now, he did clarify Minor there, but I need to point out that there is one named quest that relies on Megaton existing to be completed, and that's the quest in which you blow it up. Maybe there would be a bit more consequence if there were several quests locked behind the bomb being disarmed, where they only become available, even if it's completely arbitrary, where they only become available after you disarm the bomb. So completable, somehow. Oh, yo, bro, I messed this place up, man. Well, you know what? At least I don't gotta see that one lady no hey, more. What the heck? You're still you? alive? Now that you're caught up. Hate. You there, such? Oh damn! I really am alone. You're putting actual thought into quest design and roleplay. We don't do that here at Bethesda, Cree. Yeah, I know. I know. The Am speech of hate? That's... <laughs> I love Am's speech about hate. I'm going... I, I have plans to use it in two videos that are far, far, far off in the future. Let's really answer the question. 
Why is it so hard to be evil in these games compared to something like GTA? He keeps asking this question and he keeps not answering it and making it fucking... <sighs> what happened? Sorry, I had to run again real quick. But what, what, what just happened? He just asked again, after a really cringe joke, why is it easy to be evil in GTA and not in these games when he just spent the last fucking seven minutes completely misrepresenting Tenpenny Tower, Megaton, and Power of the Atom to a degree far beyond what I, I've fucking ever seen before. God, I... Ugh. Hate. Hate! Yep. It, it, it is a genuine question. Why the fuck can't people just be honest? I'm so tired of these kinds of videos where it's just apparently perfectly fine for people to fucking lie and misrepresent things to such an extreme degree simply because they're being positive. Yep. It is it is perfectly alright on YouTube and within like fan communities to say any kind of dishonest shit you want and exaggerate things to the point of them being completely dishonest as long as you're being positive about something. It's perfectly fine to do this. And you'll be rewarded for it. Yeah. Two dollars from Chuckles Honey Suck. Thank you. What does Cree call a game he dislikes? Bad. <laughs> I thought sheep bah and goats don't. Um, goat bleat. Yeah, goat. Uh, I've seen videos of goats and they they're more like just. <laughs> it's not like someone stabbing them. They're just like. <laughs> it completely muted you, such. <laughs> nice. Yeah, these are some of the more most frustrating videos we cover. There's people getting things wrong. There's people like even using flowery language to describe basic things, but this this is probably one of the worst examples of dishonesty I think I've seen in videos we've covered where he takes something really, really small and minor and insignificant and just runs with it to make it seem like the biggest thing ever. I think the example I used earlier, the hypothetical I used earlier, is like the perfect way to describe this. It's like, oh yeah, you barely chuckle at a joke and they say that you you died laughing. It was a gut buster for you. It's like, no. When you kill an NPC in a town, you kill them for good. What have you... This is... People die when People they are killed. They are killed. Don't spawn back like they do in GTA. Your actions will have consequences until you improve your karma. And depending on the action you commit, it may take some time to get it back up. Until it, it, by the way, it won't. Just give water to the water beggar. That's it. <clears throat> it's worse than that. The consequences stick around until you improve your karma. Unless you go too high, then you get the same consequences back. Where are the consequences? Yep. Three lame-ass bounty hunters will show up occasionally. If you happen yep. to step near one of their uh, spawn points. Otherwise, it's fine. Yeah. And it's the exact same, just reversed on the other side. Karma too high, bounty hunters. Karma yeah, that's too what low, I'm saying. bounty hunters. Yeah. 
th this is bad enough that I might actually do a video on it. I know I said that before, and there was a fallen through like the uh, Rainbow Hog video, but this is a special kind of bad that needs to be countered. Yeah. No, I have to wait for after the Starfield review though, because I've pushed that back enough times already. Let him you reap what you sow. The NPCs are also interactable, unlike in GTA. You feel like you build connections with many of the people that pass by you. Oh my fucking god, shut the fuck up, you obnoxious, disingenuous fucking cunt. I hate you, I actually hate you, you dishonest piece of shit. Yeah, somebody said hello to me. Wow, we have a deep bond and connection. Someone at the grocery store said, what's up? <gasps> we must be really, like, close. Oh my god, I never knew. Even most of the big characters you encounter in this game don't have that level of interactability of, oh, I'm so connected to this character. I, I talked to Elder Lions for a couple quests, and now we're best friends. Like, no! Even the big characters that doesn't apply to, let alone the fucking, like, random NPCs that serve no purpose and barely have anything to say. Hold on. I doubt this video will get taken down, but I am grabbing the link right fucking now and downloading it so I can cover it in a video. Like, I... <laughs> God, this might actually... This is quickly reaching one of the worst videos we've ever covered. Mm -hmm. There we go. Actually, wait, that's audio. I didn't want to download the audio. I want to download the video. <laughs> It'll take like, hold on. Okay, yeah, I'll take like a minute to download, but it's downloading. Fuck, I, oh my god, I. I'm gonna say it again, because I don't know what else to say. Why the fuck can't people just be honest? Why, why is this like such an issue for people? For me, when I'm making a video, and if I find something I've written into my script, or even recorded for the video, if I find something that I feel is, like, really inaccurate and looks bad, I, I am fucking obligated to take it out. Like, I cannot let that pass. I cannot let that go through. And then yet people like this will just say whatever the fuck they want and exaggerate to absurd degrees and it's perfectly fine. There, there's no issue for them. To fucking... To, to say some of the most dishonest shit I've ever seen. Video's downloaded. Nice. <sighs> That's gonna be a project for fucking January. You immerse yourself, they feel like real people, and that's all. What people have you interacted with if you think these feel like real people? Like, what the fuck? Like, how does Moriarty feel like a real person? How, do, how does King here feel like a real person? Like, what the fuck? What, what is happening here? Worse than that, he showed clips of, like, random Tenpenny Tower NPCs. Uh, not the literal nameless ones, but some of the named ones. It's like, how do these people feel like real people? Yeah. What do you do to these characters? Even with all that said, the game still gives you the liberty to go evil. 
but why is it still a challenge to take that path knowing we're going to take it? What makes it so difficult? If we look at the option of choosing evil, we'll notice that with this choice, the consequences far outweigh the rewards. No, they don't. They literally they fucking don't. don't. What are you talking about? You get way more of everything if you go evil in these games. If the consequences really outweigh the rewards, then actually list what the benefits and drawbacks are to each one. And no, saying fucking bounty hunters doesn't work because that happens regardless because of their karma levels. The only time you don't get bounty hunters is um, neutral, uh, yeah, neutral karma. If you're too high, you get reg uh, talent company. If you're too low, you get regulators. Yep. So that's not a consequence that you can fucking count because they cancel each other out. They completely negate each other. So you're trying to explain why one thing is worse than the other. You have to take the pros and cons of each. And if you have a similar opposing thing on the other side, um, or sorry, the same thing on the opposite side, they cancel each other out. So if you have a quest where there's a good option and a bad option, and they both reward you 500 caps, and that's the only thing you get for both options, they cancel each other out because neither one is strictly more beneficial than the other. If one quest gives you a thousand caps, or even fuck it, if one quest gives you 501 caps and the other gives you 500 caps, there is a benefit to doing the one that gives you 501 caps. Because between the two options, you come out one cap ahead. So, when you're comparing and you're trying to explain why um, being evil is bad in this game, you have to take the all the stuff you have to deal with and compare it to the... To the uh, bleh, fuck. You have to compare all the benefits and drawbacks to being good and cancel out everything that is identical. So getting bounty hunters for evil cancels out uh, getting bounty hunters for being good. It's not a strict drawback. It's not um, a strict consequence for being evil because you get it for being good. So, yep. with that in mind, what do you do in this game that is evil, that has more consequences, significant consequences, um, than, like, being good. Because I've already made the argument that if you're going to nuke Megaton, you can loot the entire town and sell yeah. everything or use that equipment. That is already a massive bonus alone over the good choice of uh, saving Megaton before we even factor in the money you get from uh, completing the quest. I guess I should make clear, because technically consequences also means the stuff you get that, like, as a consequence, you know, here's $50,000. Like, technically well, consequences aren't strictly negative. So no, I know, but it's to, being... To, it's to being... emphasize, we're talking negative consequences. Yeah, what are that's... the downsides? That's why I made the distinction of what benefits and consequences do you deal with. Where are the ups yeah, and downs Yeah, but again, you're using... Yeah, I know, yeah, but people understand what I mean. The chat was specifically saying consequences are include the rewards and everything, too. That's why I specified we're talking the negative one. I mean, it's obvious... The chat it's, literally it's, said that. Yeah, I know chat said that. It's obvious what I'm referring to, though. Like, by the nature of how I'm describing it. Good, then continue on. $2 for Chuckles Honey Suck. Thank you. Walk into the purifier and hold down the A button. God. It, I, I fucking despise these dishonest videos. We're only halfway through this piece of shit, too. How much worse is it going to get? Alright, I'm back. What did I miss? Room. Oh. Nothing. Uh, just, yeah. Just stupid stuff. I okay. just so, went on a massive fucking rant. Oh, so the, the video got a lot better then, I take it. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. I could hear everything. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> How much worse? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, not looking good right now. Though this could be one of those, I'm not going to lie, they had us in the first half things. Who fucking knows? But it's not looking good. 
I don't expect no. that kind of twist when you put this much flowery bullshit into the first half. Yeah. Like, it, it would have to be quite the fucking twist to suddenly turn this into, oh yeah, this is shit, by the way. Because, like, he's done everything possible to prop this up and make it look as good as possible. And now, if he were to do yeah. that twist, he has to undo all of that and say, like, yeah, I was lying the whole time. Yeah. It, you gain infamy that will forever haunt your playthrough, even if forever oh haunt God, your playthrough. Shut the Jesus. fuck up! You switch and only make good decisions afterwards. When you finally meet your father and get a chance to speak with him, he asks about what happened at Megaton, and when you tell him about it, he can't help but be disappointed with your actions. Wow, you such a fucking devastating consequence. I wish this impacted literally anything that matters. Wow, your literal one-note father actually says he's disappointed. Wow. Devastating. Cree, be an asshole. This guy deserves it. He does deserve it. I'll be an asshole in the video. Um, You know what would have been more interesting? If your father would have fucking... Taking off his belt and being like, alright, clearly I didn't raise you right, and fucking start whooping your ass. That would have been the appropriate response to you just nuked a fucking city of innocent people, you dumb fuck. No, the appropriate response would be to fucking of mice and men your character. Just just look at the bunny and fucking blow your character's brains out. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, if you wipe an entire town off the map for, like, pure greed, killing all those innocent people, yeah, you deserve death. Fuck you. Yeah. Like I said, your your father here should only spare you for familial love, that's it, but they should be beating your fucking ass. I raised her than that. Better than the wastes. We'll talk more about this later. There's too much work to be done now to let this get in the way. Way, way. Huh, that's it? You also lose out on Okay, so you acknowledge it. You acknowledge that that's shit. Yeah. What a consequence. Good job. On exclusive loot. There are these things that you collect all over the map called bobbleheads. Oh and my god. the strength god. bobblehead can only be found in Megaton. If you blow up Megaton without retrieving it, it's gone forever. Without oh retrieving god. it. I, I hate Notice these that people. I, fucking, I actually, actually hate these people. They're <laughs> so fucking stupid. So then get it. Yeah. Before it's, you blow up the town, you fucking retard. It's literally many a true ar uh, nerd's argument again, where if you don't take the thing before wiping the town off the map, you'll never be able to get it. And that's a consequence of destroying Megaton. Fuck off. This is so goddamn frustrating. Little companion by the I fucking hate this so fucking much. Little companion by the name of Jericho that will die in the explosion unless he joins you before blowing up Megaton. He's you will lose all this stuff if you don't get it before you blow up the town. Wow, fucking... Sage yeah. fucking wisdom there, thank you. Hey, do you know if you uh, go to the store and you don't buy a thing, that thing might be sold out next time you go to the store? What a consequence. Hey, did you know that if you make a sandwich and then don't eat it, it'll eventually get moldy and you gotta throw it away? <laughs> hey, did you know that if you firebomb your local Walmart before you buy the things you want from it, you probably won't be able to get those things. <laughs> Snatch has a consequence. That's so deep, I know. The Pippa sandwich. Oh, God. He's one of the best companions in the game. A lot of these things... Is he uh, uh, no. That's Sharon because his shotgun is a fucking sniper rifle. Or is he even going to say Fox just because the fucking laser minigun?
Yeah, and Fox. Big, oh, yeah. <laughs> the minigun and the fact that he has an insane health pool. Yeah. Yeah, no, Jericho is like mid in terms of companions. It, he barely ever gets mentioned as like one of the good ones. So I don't know where the hell. Well, I know exactly where he's getting this. It makes my my theory sound better if I say that he's one of the best. Yeah. Even though you can literally get him before you blow up the town, so completely invalidating the whole thing. He's probably a decent companion if you're just starting the game and like, like you just came out of the vault and you hire him as soon as humanly possible. Otherwise, yeah, you could do better. Again, also keep in mind you can only get Jericho if you're an evil character. So you already have to be doing bad stuff to lose karma anyway to get him. Don't think about that, Pagan. He's up the city, but if it's your first time playing, you're on. God, now he's shifted the goalpost. If it's your first time playing, you won't know about these things. Therefore... <laughs> consequence. Oh my god. What if it's not your first time playing? Like, what's your consequence for being evil then? In this. Like, name a consequence to being evil in this now. I'm like... The pros of being good, however, are more beneficial compared to evil. The city stays alive and views you as a savior. Tenpenny Tower can still be accessed, but it's just not immediate like the other option. You're yes, it is. But yeah, it's hardly immediate. Yeah. yeah, you can go there right off the bat and get in. You, you can get access to Tenpenny Tower before you get access to Megaton. Yeah. Literally, yeah, if you travel there, like, straight from the vault, Roy will do his thing with, uh... The security chief, once he goes, you can hit the thing and be like, hey, can I come in? And they'll let you in. This video is evil for how stupid it is. <laughs> I, no, it's just chaotic stupid. I obviously can't say for sure if that was a lie or not, but given the rest of the video, I, I fully believe that that was a, like an outright lie. He could just be wrong. I'm basically obligated to give that benefit of the doubt. He could be wrong. But I fully believe that was a lie. I have no reason to believe otherwise. When the entire rest of the video is spent jerking off this game and misrepresenting every single element of it to seem a thousand times more deep than it actually is. You're able to city alive for trading. Although they're small, you're able to complete more quests. <laughs> yeah, oh what is it? God. Two? Two more quests? Uh, the one with silver is one you have to do for Moriarty if you cannot convince him, can't pay him, and um, don't steal the information for him about where your father went. Um... I guess you could do it out of order if you want, maybe. And, like, you get the information from him, and then you'd be like, hey, do you have any jobs that he might send you to that? It's not a marked named quest, though. It's just an unmarked one. Hey, go to do this thing for me. It's really small, really short. Over and done with pretty quickly. Um, the guy who runs the water plant, Walter, he wants scrap metal. This is a repeatable quest. I think he gives you, like five or ten caps for every scrap metal you bring him and that's the extent of it and the last one I'm aware of is uh, Leo Stahl uh, he has a drug problem and you can talk to him to convince him to quit and I wow. believe that's all the like side the unmarked small side quests in Megaton Wow. So many. So many of them. All of which you can also do before you blow up the town. Yep. Like, I'm sorry. The whole argument that you lose all this shit if you blow up the town is meaningless when you can do all of it before blowing up the town. Yeah. 
Because it's, it's less a consequence of blowing up the town at that point and more of a consequence of your own stupidity for not getting this done before blowing up the town. Your car leading to better interactions in the world. When you make the evil decision, you get the opposite of all that. You play in a world that absolutely hates you. No, you don't. No, what? No, nobody gives a shit. Oh That's one God. of the worst yeah, parts this, of... This is outright lying. Times. This is outright fucking lying at this point. This person is lying. Yeah. The world Nothing does not happened. hate you. Most NPCs don't give a shit. People, for the most part, except for a few extremely rare examples, will even comment on whether you're good or evil. You have three dog. On the radio. Purely on the radio. Not in person. On the radio. You have... Your father, who only comments on Megaton, and if you haven't blown it up and you do have negative karma, he will say something to the effect of, oh, it seems like there's a dark cloud hanging over you or something. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the extent of it. That Iron in... City doesn't treat you any different. The Citadel doesn't treat you any different. The Enclave don't treat you any different. Nobody gives a fuck that Megaton got nukes, and they really should. I'm 100% doing a response to this video at this point. Yeah. Like, it, it is out know, of the question. This is so exceptionally dishonest that, yeah, I'm, I'm responding to this. God, I'm going to have to play Fallout 3 again. Just mm -hmm. fucking kill me now. Lose out on certain companions like Fox who I would argue is the best companion in the game in terms of dealing and receiving damage. Whoa, 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 whoa. If... You said Jericho was the best companion in the game. I, to be fair, he said one of the best. <sighs> Still. I, I know, but, you know, that's the how they weasel out of it. It, it, it. But that's still annoying, because then it's like, oh, well, Jericho's one of the best ones you can get in the game. However, there's another one you can get that I think is personally even better. Well, then who fucking cares? Yeah, and, and again, you don't, you won't lose Fox if you just go to fucking water. Like, Megaton being nuked or not does not immediately shut Fox out forever. It's your karma. Yeah, it's your karma. And again, just, what is Megaton worth? Well, I, I'm just going to turn in 25 water bottles. I don't know if that's the actual number, but that you know that feels about right for the the karma system. How easy it is the game. It's it's worse than that. You can um, donate money to the church in Rivet City and steal all that money back and donate it again for good karma and max out your karma. It's not even like abusing the system or like breaking the game in a way like it, it, you're using the game mechanics to play the game. So it's not like yeah. a glitch or an exploit or anything of the sort. Yeah. And also, the losing out our companions thing is a disingenuous argument, too. Yes, Fox uh, has the most health and deals, like, high damage. Okay. You have a point that he's better than other companions. However, there's two companions for positive karma... Two companions for neutral karma, two companions for evil karma, and two companions that don't have any karma requirement at all. You do not lose out on any number of companions than you would for any other style of gameplay. There's always four potent. Well, I should say always because uh, Butch is in the vault, so you have to complete that quest. But if we're just take talking strictly numbers, there's always four companions available to you, no more, no less. Mm -hmm. If you were to... You would still miss out on Jericho since he'll only join you if you're evil. But if we compare Jericho and Fox, Fox easily takes the cake as... Oh my god. You know, at least he does acknowledge that. At least he does acknowledge that you lose out on Jericho if you have high karma and get Fox. 
Yeah, but now he's just saying because you know that's this is the consequence of Megaton. It's like no, but it's it's evil playthrough. I I guess he is trying to conflate it into like just being evil playthrough in general now, right? I think so, because that is the question at the center of this video. It wasn't Megaton. It's why is it so hard to be evil in Fallout Three in New Vegas, but not in Grand Theft Auto? Well, it, also, it feels weird that he brings up New Vegas and he's talking about Fallout 3 yeah. as, like, good moral choices and when Fallout 3 is infamous for really bad moral choices. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking goddamn it. As a player, when you look at the perks of each karma level, it's fair to say good karma typically has better rewards. And we all no, 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 you it's not fair. You have to prove that. Yeah. Actually you show the numbers. Show what you get for being good that strictly outweighs being evil. Yeah. Also, I, I gotta agree with Box Fox. Wow, it's easy to be evil in the game about being a villain. Crazy. Yeah. want during our playthroughs. We want to experience more rather than be barred from it due to our evil doings. And I'm what? I I mean I I would I honestly prefer I be barred like cuz th then it would show that the world is actually taking my choices seriously. Yes. Like that's again that's what makes Baldur's Gate 3 so fucking good cuz it feels like when you play a bad guy, the world reacts to you being a fucking bad guy. What's that video we watched the other day, Pagan, where um, someone was playing Baldur's Gate 3 and I think they found Karlak and they couldn't recruit her because they killed the druids who wanted to kill the child. Yeah, that was that Pong Sifu video we watched. <laughs> Which is already more consequence than anything in Fallout 3. Yeah. It's not just that you lose a companion, because a companion in Baldur's Gate 3 is not a companion in Fallout 3. A companion in Fallout 3 is like a very simple personality with a backpack and a gun. Whereas a uh, companion in Baldur's Gate 3 is an entire character with depth and a, a lot of nuance and personality and like their own set of beliefs and so forth. Wants and desires, goals. Yeah, I think most, if not all of them, have, like, a quest related to them, right? Oh, yeah, then it weaves in and out throughout the entire story. Like, having those characters there has different uh, consequences for things that happen. Yeah, so not being able to uh, recruit Karlak is actually a genuine, massive consequence for attacking the druids in um, the, the starting area, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm remembering stuff from that video again. <laughs> that that part in particular, because they want Carlac, and they don't know like what exactly they like, why they can't get her. They decide to go back to the people who hired uh, him to kill her, and kills all of them, thinking like, oh well, if I kill them, then she'll come back on but no it was because they wiped out the druids so now they can't turn in the thing to like turn in her head but they kill her anyway and cut her head off and keep it with them as like a trophy <laughs> he just carries it around <laughs> with them throughout the whole game <laughs> oh god that's a that's a fucking dark urge moment right there <laughs> I, lo I love a lot of the Dark Urge's interactions. Like, holy shit. The squirrel one is the most infamous one because everybody knows the squirrel one. <laughs> like, what a cute... This little squirrel might be the most adorable creature you've ever seen. It would be ever so twee if it was climbing a tree and then <laughs> you fucking kick it into the tree in full force and break its little body. It's like, Jesus! <laughs>
Mob Evil just isn't fun for many people. Maybe it is when we've played a game after a number of times, but rarely do we ever play an RPG and make our first playthrough an evil one. There's a lot of people that do evil playthroughs, like, as their first playthrough. Especially Dark Urge! By the way, the Dark Urge playthrough is the best playthrough to do. And I don't, I don't mean even mean just to, like, embrace the urges and go fucking wild with it. I mean, even the Resistance playthrough, which I feel is the canon playthrough of the game. Like, holy shit, the, the Dark Urge Resistance playthrough is fantastic. This feels like an example of, because I do it, that probably means most people do it. Um, a lot of people do like playing the, the evil path because like a lot of interesting things could come in it, uh, come from it in a game with depth, like Baldur's Gate 3, not yeah. from a game without depth, like Fallout 3. Is that just talking about his urges again? Oh no. I did have you guys asking what type of playthrough you enjoy playing first, good or evil. A part of me thought I was the only one that didn't enjoy playing evil, but I was greatly surprised when I saw that many of you thought the same as me. 90% of you guys said good, and 10% said evil. I also feel Wait, like well, that's a bad setup to the poll. Yeah. Because first of all, the choices there are kind of biased. Like, in the way that they're uh, written. Yeah, I'm like, oh, chaos is fun. It's like, but what if people want to be evil for other reasons? Mm-hmm. Like, and and good, you want to be a saint. It's like, oh, okay, what if I want to be somebody that just... I, I attack anybody that attacks me. That's it. I'm, I'm totally self-defense, but I don't care what your alignment is. If you, if you come at me, you know, if you throw hands at me, I'm going to fucking put you in the ground. Yeah, there's also no neutral option either. Yeah, I feel like that's um, not a great pull in the way it's set up, and it's probably a really small sample size, too. Yeah, did we see the sample size at all? Hang on. Well, I know he that's has 8,000 subscribers, so that's a relatively small sample size. Yeah, but I'm, I'm curious surprised when I saw that if he many showed of you it for even a 40 second. votes. 40 votes? Jesus! Bruh, come on. Yeah, that is... That is not a that is not a sample size. I'm sorry. Like if if you had a thousand votes and it was like this, given your your relatively small channel, then I would be more like, mm, that's interesting. But it's forty fucking votes. Breath. Seventy percent of you guys said good, and 10% said evil. Pyfeg left a comment stating that being nice makes me feel nice, not Wow, how oh. fucking simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's so deep and complex, guys. Look at this. This person said being nice makes him feel nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> This man is truly a simpleton. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is literal, like, smooth brain, head empty. <laughs> yeah. Dude, there's, there's a reason some of my favorite playthroughs are... And most people that watch me do, do, do Baldur's Gate through my first playthrough, I was generally good. But there were times when I was like, no, motherfucker, you, you deserve this. It's like, you deserve the level of ass whooping I'm about to unleash on you. <laughs> to many of your RPGs, such as Disco Elysium, don't exactly incentivize me to choose chaos over kindness. 
This comment really reinforces my point. Most RPGs reward good behavior rather than bad. Uh, and you show KOTOR 1, which actually rewards you quite significantly if you play bad because you get Bastila back. Like, easily, I should say. <laughs> she, she fucking straight up joins you. I don't know, man. Oh. It's not just a dishonesty. It's video essayists who make videos and just they they don't know what the fuck they're talking about at all. Mm. Like I I know you can get Bastila back as well on the good path. It just there's more work you've got to do. But man, oh man, going evil Revan. Oh, like I'm Dark Side Revan, bitch. Basta's like, oh god, that's so hot. Like, I'm gonna join you and let's kill the other Sith. But like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yoni sent me the um the link to the poll. It currently only has 108 votes now. And this is after <clears throat> his video that got over 800,000 views in less than two months. Yep. Well, right, what are the numbers? Is it still 90 10? Uh, oh, I have to vote in it to see. I hate that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go bad route just to fuck with this thing. Uh, 85 good to 15% bad. Hmm. So it is shifting more towards the bad route. It's almost like you should have a bigger sample size and not count the votes of 40 random people as fact. Yeah. Yep. Five dollars from Chuckles Honey Suck. Thank you. You can enjoy Fallout 3 without misrep uh, bleh, without misrepresenting and lying about its issues. People make the mistake of trying to make the game better than it is. Yeah. yeah. And here's the other thing, too. What if you are someone who has never heard of Fallout, and here you are for your first time hearing about this game, and hearing about how wonderful and amazing and in-depth it is, and you get hype as fuck for this game. Like... It, it sounds like the best goddamn thing ever. One of the, the greatest moral choices in all of gaming? Sign me the fuck up. And then you start playing the game and you get into the game. And you get Fallout 3. For what it actually is. Hmm. It sounds pretty fucking disappointing to me. Yep. Um, Thief says, didn't Mass Effect still have the same ratio most uh, people picked at Paragon? Rather than Renegade? No, that see, the problem with those lists for, like, Mass Effect and everything is that there are times when the Renegade options are the objective correct fucking options. Like, decking the fucking reporter is the correct option. Holy shit, she has it coming. Like, my god, it's one of those things like, okay, so does that weigh against you if you're normally a Paragon, but you take a couple Renegade options? Or is that just going to be lumped into it, your pure Paragon still? Because that's all the game decides. Or on the flip side, if you're a Renegade and you're like super destructive towards your enemies, but you do nice things for people that you're friendly with or who are like your buddies... Does that is that going to be a pure renegade option, or is that going to have uh, paragon options with it? Or is it going to take into account that you you can do both? Yeah. yeah. And also, and renegade also isn't strictly evil. Renegade is a lot of like fuck the rules. We need this shit done right now. The, the one reporter who ambushes you on uh, the Citadel when you're there the second time? I can't remember when she ambushes you. But she, she basically jumps you when you come out of an elevator and she like asks all these really disingenuous fucking targeted questions and one that's like really incredibly disrespectful and that's the one where you get the, the fucking renegade option to bitch slap her. <laughs> I'm tired of your disingenuous assertions. Wham! <laughs> exactly. Yep. And that is, like, you... the correct choice, because she is being an absolute piece of shit. You don't hate journalists enough. You might think you do, but you don't. Yeah. <laughs> My god. <laughs> you know what? I, I, would, I would absolutely, if Alex Jones 
starts doing like live streams, things like that, I would 100% super chat and be like, please, Alex, just say this. Just say <laughs> it. We need, we need the clip. <laughs> $10 from Chuckles Honey Suck. Thank you. New Vegas has some aspects to criticize. Hot take, but the one dimensionality and lack of nuance with the Legion mean no moral character can join them at all, unless they're fine with Segul slavery? I have to assume that's an autocorrect. Well, no, when it autocorrect to. Uh, it was going to be an X. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things I had to get cut, unfortunately. Yeah. It's all nice to think that our special perspectives paint the the entire player base of games, but when the stats say most people pick Paragon options over Renegade, that's the case. Okay, is that what the stats actually say, though? That's, that's my issue I'm taking with it. What do the stats actually say? Because there's a lot of those stat things that are just fucked. Like... Again, sorry using it as an example a lot. Baldur's Gate 3 did the who wiped out the grove, who didn't wipe out the grove, who sided with the druids, who sided with the goblins sort of thing, right? And the vast majority sided with the grove. It's like, that is a very clear, defined, which one of these two did you pick? Or, like, did you did you take in uh, scratches or... or his name is Scratch, right? I think his name's Scratch. I don't. I don't yeah, know if it's the dog. Yeah. Did you take the dog or did you not take the dog? Did you pet the dog? Did you not pet the dog? Did you play? Did you play uh, fetch with him or did you not play fetch with him? Woo! Like I need to know what their thing is. If it is genuinely like they just looked at every single option, right? Of in this option, did they take a Paragon choice? Did they not take a Paragon choice? Did they take a Renegade choice? Did they not take a Renegade choice? Like, well, what's the criteria? Yeah. Um, 100 PLN from Kitten. Thank you. Also, I want to bring up Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. When most of the quests are messed up, and good options can give you less reward, uh, rewards. Masquerade uh, breaches, no karma gain, etc. Like a uh, self land slasher or a Vivi quest with movie script. I have no context for what any of that is. So, like for example, um, the the good nature one. There's a like film crew. Think of Taps or Ghost Finders, things like that. They go into a building that has an ancient Egyptian vampire like monster in it, right? And one of them gets away and she tells you, hey, to not break the masquerade, I need you to convince him to come back here. That's all a prank so I can kill him and eat him. <laughs> like, that's a pretty fucking dark option. However, mm -hmm. he would expose the masquerade if he goes like wild and crazy and actually reveals the tapes and everything that he has of, you know, his friends getting, you know, nommed on. Yeah. You should you should play Vampire Arthur Great Bloodlines. I should. Eight dollars from Dialiocon, thank you. Hey Stag, what's y'all's favorite manga and anime? It can't be Berserk, Vinlon Saga, or Fririn? Fr fright for for that word? Fririn, I believe. Fririn? Um So I've never read is. like a full manga all the way through. But uh, I do like Helsing, uh, for what I've read of it so far. Um, favorite anime? Again, I, I haven't watched a ton of anime. But um, I do really like Jojo, and I like um, Kanasuba. It's fun. No, I, Thief, now you're just being disingenuous. I never said that the majority weren't going to play good. We're questioning the ratio of people, and you just said that the, the whole thing is fucked because it's only counting people who purely stick to 
Paragon. So if they make one Renegade option, they're immediately thrown out. Or if they or if they're Renegade and they make one Paragon option, they're immediately thrown out. That is an entire that is a fucked pull. Those are fucked stats then. Anyway, uh screw you for saying you I can't choose Berserk or Vinland Saga. You're a bastard. Uh <laughs> God, Villain Saga and Berserk are so good. I haven't seen Free Rin yet. Um, I've heard good things. I'll have to check it out sometime. Uh, I don't really have a favorite of either. In fact, I don't really read a lot of manga, to be honest. Um, I'm more of an anime guy. Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I can give a short list of ones that I highly recommend. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh... Yeah, Konosuba. I can recommend Konosuba. It's pretty good. Um, and uh, Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man. Oh yeah, I forgot about yeah. Cowboy Bebop and One Punch Man. Those are really good too. I would, yeah. I would definitely have to say Mob Psycho 100 for probably my favorite manga. Just because yeah. it's really fucking good. Now, there are some really obscure ones I could get into, but that would take a really long time, so I'm not going to mention those. But there are some, like, really good obscure anime and manga that you can get into as well. Yeah. Um, hmm. Anime, though. I don't know what my favorite one would be. Like... I, it uh, it'd probably be Mob Psycho 100 again because the anime is also fantastically well done, and the they knew how to land the jokes properly, like the jokes that are set up in the in the manga. They're they're actually executed properly. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> quiet, uh, Setch. You're interrupting Setch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're actually set up properly in it. Like again, the the they go to a super haunted evil tunnel. And there's this like sound coming from the tunnel, and fucking Mob and his um, um, master in air quotes scream out "run," and they go to run, and it's this this fucking like eighty year old grandma runs past him, from past Mob, and he's on the ground and he's like in tears and stuff like that, and that's like what what's wrong, Mob? Are you hurt? And he's like. I'm so out of shape that an 80 year old grandma beat me. It's so <laughs> fucking good. Yeah, I, I love Mob Psycho 100. I don't know if I would say, again, I can't really choose a favorite. I'm not even going to try, but it is definitely up there in like my top like five easily. It's worth pointing out quickly that uh, chat couldn't hear the cat meowing because I was muted. Because I was oh. eating. So, you guys look like schizos now. <laughs> oh, they couldn't hear the kitty. No. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to have to get back at you for that. Uh, chat, if you would, please uh, spam the chat with uh, Cree, you're muted. Yeah, wow. You <laughs> <laughs> you're eating the cat? The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so of the people who played the original infamous game for example of the 80 percent of people that got to a certain point in the story 50.69 percent did the good option 30.03 did the bad option wait of the 80 percent that got there where, where's the... You're missing, like, 20%. So, so what did the 20% do? Did they pick neither option? Hmm. Cree, you're purple. Thank you, I didn't notice. <laughs> I like the one right below that. Cree, you're unmuted. Please mute yourself. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> muted, you're creeded. See what you did, Pagan. Now this will never go <laughs> away. Good job, Chet. Yeah. You get a cookie. Yeah, exactly. Again, yeah, as you said, you, you've emphasized now, of the people who made it there, 
So the 80% that made it to this point, not the 100% of people that played the game, but the 80% that made it to this point, of that 80%, 50.69 of that 80 chose this, 30.03 chose that. So you're missing 20%. You're saying of the 80. That's how fucking percentages work. I, I think we're splitting hairs here at this point. He, it, it, he clearly means the um, the eighty percent is split, where fifty percent, like from that, like we're not counting the twenty percent that. So it's just really bad wording. God. Well, yeah, it's, it's. I think it's obvious what he was saying. It's like. No, it's not. It's yes. Just fucking wording matters. I don't know. I understood it perfectly, like, right away. He was talking about 80% of people made it to this point of the game. Um, or of the 80%. And then he, like, he wasn't saying 50%, as in half of the 80%, so 40% of the people who made it... You know what I mean? It just seems like 80, 50 and 30, that's 80. Again, I think it's poorly worded. This is the same fucking okay, but it's it's US it's the question. internet. It's YouTube chat. You're you can't like it, you're you're breaking down percentages on percentages, which is fucking difficult to do in like no, it casual isn't. conversation. No, that's easy to do. Yeah. Okay. So that point then. If the, it would break down fully like that, that that's that's a lot more reasonable of a split. Like that seems more accurate to yeah, the majority picks good, but th it's not like an overwhelming, insane ninety percent picks good. Anyways, let's get back to the video. I like how all the time this is going on, we're just looking at Mission's dead fucking body from KOTOR. <laughs> That's what she deserves. <laughs> Fall prey to this level of writing, as there really isn't much depth in an evil choice. This statement is made obvious when we look at Fallout 4. When you pick evil, you just say horrible things to people or cause havoc for the sake of it. Why are you even bringing in a game that doesn't have any, like, morality to it? <laughs> While you can choose to be evil, you can't side with the evil factions in the game. One of its biggest villains are the Enclave. And also, is he saying the Brotherhood are outright evil in Fallout 4? I guess so, because otherwise, why would you show the Institute? Yeah, he... The Institute is the only, like, objectively evil faction in that game. The Brotherhood does questionable things. I, I don't like the way they're portrayed. But I wouldn't necessarily say they're evil. Because, again, I feel like evil is a high bar to pass. Doing something yeah, bad or wrong doesn't inherently make you evil. But, like, killing scores of people who are completely innocent experimenting on them turning them into super mutants uh yeah that's evil god i i hope this isn't one of those people who genuinely thinks the institute are the good guys oh god they might be because they when they play them then, you know, they don't do anything bad. Oh my god. Even though that doesn't matter because you're not really in charge, they, they just keep doing whatever they they were already doing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a stupid fucking... <laughs> I hate it. I hate that people do that shit. Mm -hmm. I hate that people, like, don't even go that far. They'll be like, yeah, they're... Humanity's only hope. They seek to uh, better humanity, and they just don't look at anything they're actually doing. Yeah. They just take the evil 
faction's word for it. <laughs> it's just, it's literally like taking the Nazis at their word. It's like, eh. <laughs> okay, but are you looking at what they're doing? <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. They yeah. want to make Germany better. Okay, but how <laughs> do you look out the window? Did. Like the it, the the factories are working. People aren't starving anymore. The they we've got proper roads now. It's like, yeah, I, I, I agree. All those are entirely fantastic, good things. Uh, what else is going on though? Pagan. Uh, that's the that's the local uh, uh, wood burning factory. Yeah, that's what's going on. Totally. Pagan reminds me of that joke from the other uh, day. But he said he's sorry. It's okay, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he feels really bad about it guys so it's okay <laughs> we forgive him um <laughs> we we found a berserk version of that too <laughs> yeah we did that was real funny hold on i i actually want to scroll through our chat so i can uh grab that for seth so he can see it <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, where is it? Where is it? There it is. <laughs> it's okay, he said he's sorry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was telling Kree, I was like, wait till you get the context for this. It makes it so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. God, he, what, a, what a scumbag piece of shit he is. Holy fuck. I'm gonna put this one up on was. screen. Like, it's just funny. Like, the only thing that kept him remotely, like, not cartoonishly fucking evil was that he was hot, you know? <laughs> and I'm just saying that, like, like, that was his personality. Like, he always got his way. Because, you know, he was good-looking and good with a sword. Mm -hmm. There it is, chat. I I have no idea the context of this, but, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <But it's> just, <laughs> the, the moment he faced adversity, he suddenly spiraled into, like, a fucking total clown freak show. The moment his boy toy left him, he just immediately threw everything away. For a one night stand that immediately fucked him and his entire battalion over. Yes. His it, the entire mercenary company he was in charge of. Just because Oh no, that's who left me. I'm gonna go fuck the king's daughter now. Wait, what the what? No. Yo, why are you doing this? The Steven Universe context or the Berserk context? I think you could guess which will actually I don't know much about Steven Universe as an ugly art style. I've always like hated seeing those characters, but don't they have like actual genocides and stuff in that show? Yes, he so he literally does this near the end of one of the seasons where an actual genocidal monster who has wiped out like billions of people. Billions must uh, die. Yeah, basically they they're like, oh, that's a bad thing. Oh, oh, it's literally like the computer meme, like you know, the guy showing him the computer. Oh, it's literally that. And then he's just like, oh, it's okay, guys. She said she's sorry. She's good now. And she literally just becomes like a normal part of the cast. It's really fucked up. It's 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 very bad. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. Just to be an opportunity when you can join them, they shoot you in the face. It's not. What? Wait, did he like no clip through that or? What he had to have. Do? Yeah. Or he glitched out somehow. I don't know how though, because you don't have control at that point except for looking around. Yeah, because. He's just supposed to. He's just supposed to leave, and then the computer lets you out, right? Or Doctor. Well, no, here. that's what happened. There is, um, you give him the code, and he immediately shoots you and kills you. Like hmm. if you give him the correct code, because he yeah. doesn't need you anymore. And this was after his offer of you joining the Enclave. Yeah, yeah that's stupid. Yeah, I, it I is. I hate that it. happened. 
character for them to do so, in the context of the scene. But the fact that we can't join them is disappointing for those doing an evil playthrough. It's another reason why I don't pick evil. Well, I mean, the Enclave aren't necessarily evil. Again, what, what Colonel August wants is actually really noble and good. What President Eden wants is genuine is genuinely fucking evil. That's unforgivable. Yeah. Like that's, oh, I, that's cartoon. That's Saturday morning cartoon. Like twirling my my spiral mustache. Evil. <laughs> I do find it funny. <laughs> he just said like, "Oh, it's not out of context for them in you know in this scene." It's like, ah, it kind of is though. It the fact that is. August, yeah, the fact that August shoots you instead of accepting you because <laughs> you actually helped him, that's out of character for him. Yeah. That is, yeah. That is genuinely out of character. So this is something that I'll obviously have to explain in the video when I get around to it, but uh, Colonel Autumn is a very inconsistent character because he, he, ha he both has to be the main antagonist, but also has to have an ideology opposed to Eden, who wants something even worse to happen so what colonel autumn actually wants is um to have the purifier to have like so they can have the water and gain influence for the enclave which sounds bad maybe it is bad we don't know what direction it'll take if he wins but he still considers like the random wastelanders to be american citizens he considers the normal people the wasteland to be, like, the people. It's not that the Enclave are the only ones who get to exist. It's that uh, there's still people out there, and they're Americans. Whereas uh, Eden obviously just wants to kill anything that's mutated, which includes all those people. So with that in mind, <clears throat> there's very much the portrayal that uh, Bethesda apparently didn't even know that they did, that Colonel Autumn isn't actually that bad of a guy because if we assume well we have no reason to assume his intentions are pure but based on what we know he appears to be trying to do the right thing because if the enclave really does have the kind of power where they're shown to have then they could genuinely provide protection to the people of the wasteland and bring some semblance of law and order back however because he is the, the big bad guy, the main antagonist, the final confrontation, he has to be absurdly cartoonishly evil and, like, strut around like a villain and, like, do evil things even though, like, he's, by his very goals, is not evil. Um, by the time you get captured by the Enclave after Vault 87, or at the end of Vault 87, you know what I mean. Um, you haven't actually done anything against the Enclave personally, it's, it, bleh, except for escape from them when they're trying to murder you. So, he captures you for the password, gives you the chance to join them, and then when you give up the password, he kills you. That is absolutely out of character. Yep. Yeah. And they had to do it that way because, oh, well, we didn't actually bother to make, a, make it a thing that you could join the Enclave, so uh, we can't just have the player, like, go free and actually try to join them because we didn't actually program that. So uh, j j just have him shoot him. Yeah. I hate it. It's so dumb. $2 from Chuckles Honeysuck. Thank you. House is objectively the best option is objectively the best option in the game. I, uh, I would agree, honestly. Yeah, probably. Because, again, he, his whole... He has a proper plan for the future. He's not just trying to gain territory or anything like that. And he believes in a meritocracy, which is always a fucking good thing. You want the competent people to be the ones in charge. Yeah. Five dollars, uh, again, from Chuckles Honeysuck. Thank you. Panel, what is your advice for someone wanting to get into content creation when it comes to the genre of game commentary that y'all do? So, the first thing I'm going to say about getting into content creation is make sure it's something you're actually, like, passionate about and care about and something you want to do. Because there's a lot of people who get into YouTube because, 
Oh, some people make money on YouTube by making videos. I want to do that too. And then they, they put themselves in the position of, oh, well, now I need to make content that I'm not actually interested in making because I'm a YouTuber who makes content. It's, it has to be something you actually want to do. Because, you know, if I wanted to do YouTube purely for the sake of, oh, I want to earn money, I want to live off of YouTube, then there's so many other things I could do that would probably be better for me in terms of, like, content creation. Uh, you could go, like, the chills and nuke route where you do, you know, shitty top ten horror videos. Uh, not horror videos, but, like, spooky, paranormal, real-life ghost encounter videos. There's a lot of channels out there that do that, though, so, you know, you probably won't get far unless, like, you're really good at it. Um, you could do, like, political commentary. You could do so many different things. You could do historical documents. There's a bunch of channels I follow that talk about, like, different disasters or, um, like, cases of hikers going missing in the in the mountains or in forests and stuff. Um... But none of those things are what I'm interested in doing. What I do, making videos criticizing video games and movies and TV shows, that's something that I actually like doing because there, there's a bit of catharsis there where, like, here's this piece of shit game and then you get all your thoughts out on it and you just absolutely tear it apart. Uh, I enjoy that because, well, again, it's catharsis, but I also like digging through media and explaining like why something works or doesn't work especially stuff that doesn't work because that's actually easier to do than like pointing out why things are good um at least for me i should say so yeah the the first tip i'd say is make sure what you're doing on youtube is something you actually want to do um oh and don't don't quit your day job to make videos on like fallout 76 or anything like that uh, not a good plan. That, that's going to be my second piece of advice, actually, is, um, it's probably a good idea to not focus on one single franchise, because, um, there's a lot of people who do, who where it's like, oh, I'm the Fallout guy, I, I talk all about Fallout and nothing but Fallout, or, you know, World of Warcraft or Elder Scrolls or, uh, Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever else, um, if those things happen to start dying out, it's not going to go so well for you because you could branch out into other types of content and it won't get as many views. Um, I'm not even a solely dedicated Fallout channel and even I'm having that kind of problem where because I have made a lot of Fallout content, even if it isn't what I'm solely based on or focused on, um, non-Fallout stuff tends to get less views. Um... So, that's something to be aware of. Um, you also might just get bored of talking of one subject forever. Um, you don't want to get into a position where, like, you're doing a lot of positive content on something, then it starts going downhill, and then you start losing some of your audience because you're not being mindlessly positive all the time. Um, third piece of advice... Uh, decent microphone quality. It doesn't have to be the best, but remember that even though you're making a video, you're going to have more people listening to you than you're going to have watching you. Because some people just put videos on and listen while they're playing games, while they're working, while they're doing whatever. So, it doesn't have to be like the crispest audio ever, but it has to be decent quality. Um, edit out little mistakes like mispronunciation of words. Like if you have to re record lines, do that. Uh, try not to have too much popping or uh, background noise and stuff like that. Um, there's another point that's going to add there. What was it? Fuck, what was it? Do something you want to do. Um, God, I even forgot the second point that I went in on. There's another point I had and I forgot what it was. Um... Don't do one type of content. Do something you want to do. Microphone quality. Um, 
Fuck, that, that's gonna bug me that I forgot what the fourth one was. Don't quit your day job. I mean, look, if you genuinely get your YouTube channel to the point where you can live off of it, then you can. But that's something you have to figure out for yourself. Don't quit your day job if you're making like $300 a month on YouTube. Um, and that, that won't be able to support your lifestyle or ability to keep a roof over your head. Um... Also, keep notes and design docs. It's not a video game here. When the goon already does the missing hike, it's, there's someone out there that's doing what you want to do regardless of what it is. There's plenty of channels that do missing hiker videos. There's plenty of channels that do media criticism and analysis. Um... Fuck, it is really going to fucking bug me that I'm not remembering that fourth point. Because it was, like, one I felt was important. I was about to do that one before I swerved to the, uh, the microphone one. Yeah, I don't know. It's gone. Uh, Patrician TV talked about having design docs for his videos, which includes notes and scripts and stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, scripting your content is a good idea for the most part. Like, there are some people who could sit down and just go, and sometimes that works out for them, but I do recommend scripting your videos. Um, I script my videos. Sometimes I'll, like, ad-lib something in, but otherwise, um... Pretty much everything is scripted from top to bottom. There's a script I have for the Fallout 3 uh, Menu True Nerd response that is like 170 pages or something. And that includes both my portions and a transcript of his. So it's good for organizing like how your video is going to be. Um, there's many ways you can format your video to like come across as interesting or whatever I normally excuse me I normally go by like chronological order because I feel that's just the most convenient for my style of video where um again using many true nerds video as an example I could have started out with maybe stronger points against his video and maybe my video would have done better for that but I feel it makes more sense in general to start at the beginning and go all the way through in chronological order. Because if you start jumping around, things start getting mixed up and... Yeah. I will say, for because the, the talk about Christian TV taking notes and doing the, those streams and everything, there's a big problem with doing that as well. So you got to be very careful and, and Pat's fallen into the trap a couple times where you'll take the note for what's happening in the video at the time with the, with the correct time stamp and everything like that. Uh, but then there'll be something later on that uh, either notates that or builds upon that point. And unless you're being mindful of it, and again, we how, how we knew Pat fell into it was because of the his Skyrim video. When he showcased Kratos is talking about like the way to power level blacksmithing is to build a bunch of iron daggers. Well, that's what Cree said at first, but then Cree correctly stated later, there's a faster way to do it, but it's grinding of a different kind because you're using the fucking transmute spell over and over and over again. Patrician never mentioned that because Patrician was probably looking in his notes for a blacksmithing iron dagger and didn't remember that Cree rightfully corrected, and again, not, not really corrected, I guess, rightfully noted that the iron dagger thing is actually just, you know, that's the lazy thing to do and it's actually way worse for you to do so in patrician skyrim video it makes it sound like kree only thinks the way to level blacksmithing is iron daggers when that's not the case and that's just because kree didn't go through or sorry patrician didn't go through his full notes and remember that kree actually talked about the gold and making jewelry instead which is the fastest way to level up blacksmithing yeah I, I... you have to be very careful doing that 
to also remember if the person's video, and this can be days, weeks, months after you've taken these initial notes, you need to be mindful. Did that person mention something else uh, to that? Yeah, you know, exactly. The video is 20 hours long. That's it's understandable. But uh, again, he got caught in the trap. Like he he misrepresented Cree. Like not horribly. This isn't like some horrific, awful thing, right? But it, it's still a misrepresentation. And that's, that's the danger of doing the note system if you don't remember the entire time that somebody said something else that either supported or countered that initial statement. That's, that's, the, that's the risky part with those note systems. Yeah. Um, another thing is uh, especially relevant when covering this current video. Um, being honest and genuine is probably one of the most important things you can do. Um, there's a lot of people on YouTube who come out, who come across as like really fake or disingenuous where in the way they act and talk about things and whatever else, it just doesn't feel real. It feels artificial. And I, a lot of people do get put off by those kinds of videos, especially when you get caught out for like, misrepresenting things um i mean it should go without saying don't mis uh don't mis bleh. don't misrepresent the things you're talking about like making mistakes is one thing the video we're watching now is not someone who's making mistakes because a mistake is like maybe getting a piece of information wrong maybe even making an assumption without fully confirming it I would consider maybe to be a mistake, a, a silly mistake, but a mistake, as opposed to just outright saying shit like people in the wasteland will hate you if you're evil when, like, we're talking about two characters, one of which is exclusively through the radio. Um, I've, I've, I mentioned before on stream, I've been watching a lot of, uh, Nerdrotic streams, and he mentions a quote from one of his friends, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, that um, authenticity is like the currency of the modern day, at least as far as like this these kinds of discussions go, because uh, it's the whole thing of if you're being authentic, if you're being uh, genuine, if you're being honest, uh, a lot of people are going to take that and respect that uh, for what it is. Um, because that has value. You know, if this person is honest with how they feel about something, you can trust them when they say, you know, this is good, this is bad, this I felt kind of ant eh on. Maybe if you like this kind of thing, you'll like this movie or game or whatever else. Um, yeah. You know, it, it does seem like an obvious thing to say, but then we get videos like this where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to misrepresent every single possible thing I can about this game to make it seem a thousand times better than it is. Hmm? Uh, someone mentioned something about scripting. Um, that's going to vary from person to person what your process is. It's, I feel it's kind of a difficult question. Um, what I usually do is I'll play through the game and get my basic thoughts on it and I'll start scripting that out. Then maybe I'll go through the footage or like do another playthrough, do research on like the wikis and stuff to be like, okay, uh, there's this many things you have to do here. So I get like the numbers right because... Well, I'm going to remember, like, the large overall beats. I'm going to forget, like... Oh, how many artifacts do you need to collect in Starfield? I don't fucking know. You do, like, a dozen Radiant Quests. You do uh, a dozen, like... Well, maybe not even a dozen. You do several scripted quests. It's like, I don't know how many artifacts there are by the end of the game. How many you personally collect... So that's the kind of thing I'm going to either have to look up numbers for or go through my footage and count. Um, with a movie or a video I'm covering, 
I'll have the movie up and I'll pause it and I'll like write my thoughts into a script and there's usually a lot of back and forth where like I'll play a scene a few times or a clip a few times to make sure I like get the full context and uh, I'll just go through it. So there's usually a, a previous watch first. So like um, the the Bebop flicks video, for example, I, I obviously watched through Bebop flicks on its own. And then when I'm scripting it, I have the episode up going through it moment to moment uh, to finish it. Yeah. You know, it was a big tangent, but, like, it's kind of a big question to ask, so, you know. Yeah. Like, there's probably a lot of other advice I could give, too, if I was more on the ball for this right now. more complexity to making an evil choice or playthrough. We should probably rewind because I've completely lost the context for what he was talking about. Alright. We can't join them is disappointing for those doing an evil playthrough. It's another reason why I don't pick evil. Maybe if there was more complexity to making an evil choice or playthrough, it would cause me to further contemplate my decisions. Maybe you should play games with a bit more depth than none at fucking all. Yeah, yeah, this is this isn't a problem with evil characters in games. This is a problem with the game itself. Yeah. Just like that's a thing that has to be considered here too. He he's not talking like he's using Fallout 3 as the example, but he's talking about video games as a whole. Look at the title on screen. Why is it hard to be evil in video games? Fallout 3 is not video games. It's a video game. I'm sorry that, like, your exposure to content, to, to videos, uh, to video games, is so exceptionally limited that your that Fallout 3 is your bar for this. But, uh, let me tell you. The bar elsewhere isn't lying on the fucking ground like it is on Fallout 3. There actually needs to be effort to pass it. Especially when he brought up New Vegas at the start of the video and in his thumbnail and everything, and then he just doesn't fucking mention it at all. Like, maybe he will later, but look at how much time we have left. Yeah, there's about five minutes, six minutes left of this video. And, and the uh, overwhelming majority was about nuking Megaton. Yeah. Man, how do you take one of the single most shallow choices ever in a video game and, like, blow it out to that length? A quick shove should do it. And then... Keep in mind, too, that that feels like a moment that's ripped straight out of, um... Shivering Isles, where there's a guy who wants to commit suicide, but he can't because he doesn't want his ghost to be stuck on the, the hill of suicides. So he's like, oh, can you kill me so I won't go there? And then you have an option that's just like, okay, shove. And then he falls to his death. <laughs> also, I don't even think the example he just mentioned even works for anything. Because, like, he, sh he did a zoom in on the guard. Clearly, there's no consequence for killing this man. Um, is there any benefit or any other drawback for killing him? Because that would go against the point you've spent making this entire video. Because part of... Uh, part of the whole thing is, oh, there's a lot of consequences for being evil. So it's not worth it. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Turning it down in case it's copyrighted. At least he does get around right. to New Vegas. The aren't I can't wait to see how he misrepresents oh, it. Yeah, he started. He just started. Yeah, talking. I heard him, so he's turning it back up. Okay. All our entries mentioned. Each choice you side with has its positives and negatives. The writing in the game is incredibly layered with the amount of choices you can make. I can go full in depth on Fallout New Vegas, but for the sake of the video's length, 
I'm gonna focus on the factions in the game. <laughs> Remember, he said nuking Megaton was one of the biggest moral choices in gaming, in video game history. And he spent a vast majority of this video talking about Megaton. But when we get to New Vegas, oh yeah, I'm gonna cut it for time. Yeah, and and also New Vegas is so much better at this. It's like, okay, oh, why didn't you use New Vegas as your example, you? Maybe he is gonna do a swerve here, but I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Like I, I don't. I I cannot see a swerve coming, when like the entire first fourteen, fifteen minutes of the video almost, was like, blowing so much smoke up Fallout 3's ass that it's fucking floating in the atmosphere. You only have one faction to side with, which is the Brotherhood of Steel. In Fallout New Vegas, you have four different main endings you can choose. In the end of this game, you fight for control over the Hoover Dam. Just pausing in case of uh, music. You can either side with Yes Man, Mr. House, the NCR, or the Legion. What makes this choice so difficult is that you're able to understand the faults of every choice, so it's a matter of weighing out which choice feels right to you. There isn't one option that is purely evil. Even the most moral and immoral factions have their issues. Where is all wow. this in the rest of the video? Like, you can, like, yeah. actually pick all this out and get it accurate. And you're not even doing, like... The stupid sheep thing of the, the NCR are the objective good guys and the Legion yeah. are the objective bad guys. It's black and white. That was the shocking one was that like all the factions have good and bad to them. Like, what? Yeah. That means the Legion as well. Holy shit. It's somebody that actually gets. It's like, like just for this it's, though. This feels like a video from an entirely different person. Yeah, I know. God, it is what am I gonna be that psychic? The I'm not gonna lie, he had us in the first half. When I said that as a joke, is that actually gonna come true? I think it's really unlikely. I, I think it's super unlikely as well, but the fact that he got this right already is like that's better than what he did in the first half. Yeah. NCR being the quote unquote good ending can be seen as problematic as taking over the dam means even more stress added onto the army. Their forces are already stretched thin as is before the end of the game, so by having them cover more ground leaves them and the towns they occupy even more vulnerable. It's also worth pointing out the, the stark difference in the way he's describing these two games. He's talking like a normal person now. Yeah. He's not using flowery yeah. language. Maybe he did get us in the first half. Uh, yeah, again, this is fucking more evidence I'm fucking psychic. Hold on, I I really hope it. I'm not. I hate psychic. I don't want to be self-loathing. <laughs> if he genuinely, like, if he does swerve and he got us in the first half, then absolutely fucking bravo, because you got me really fucking hard with that first half. Because, um... I'm mad started kicking. I'm going to assume kicking in. Th this is the whole thing of, like... He, the arguments he's making weren't unreasonable because they're actually unreasonable. They're unreasonable... Or, sorry, they're reasonable because th these are arguments people actually make a defense of this game despite being unreasonable. You know? Yeah. How are things? They're all fucked up, that's how things are. Everyone is either starving or dying out here. I thought to dry by the rest of the NCR. They're also a faction that is trying to revert back to the same governing way that was before the Great War. A democracy that led to the Great War and caused the death of billions. They boast on how they're going to be different though, so take that how you want to. But again, someone saying, oh we're totally different guys, trust me. Is the same thing as looking at a bill in front of Congress that says it's the, the happy puppy petting bill and not t bothering to read what's in it. It's like, yeah, I, I wouldn't trust them, you know, I wouldn't trust them to not piss on my shoes. It yeah, should be. Especially when we see that they are mired with bureaucracy and 
just all kinds of stuff where they should be making very obvious choices and they refuse to do it because oh well that won't I won't get voted. You know, they won't vote for me next the next election season if I don't do this. <laughs> so it's like it, it it's kind of like that electrician has a fantastic video on it when Britain before World War II got started and they were already starting to ration resources because they, they realized war was coming. When Britain got offered a bomber that was made out of wood instead of metal and was way faster than any of their bombers ever could be and could outrun any of the, like, Germans' air defenses and AA systems, and they turned it down <laughs> because it didn't help them win re-election and get the votes or get the uh, payday from the metal industry. Wow. It's like, mm, yes, fantastic. If you've never seen that one, watch the Fat Electrician's video on the Mosquito Bomber. From a moral standpoint, they beat out the Legion tenfold. With the Legion, one of their ways of keeping order is through sexism and slavery. They can- <laughs> Through sexism and slavery? Wait, where's- that's the first. What? What on the first one? Also, they don't they don't keep control through slavery. Slavery is a is a very useful tool. That's the unfortunate, like that's the dark part of it. Slavery is a very very useful tool when you don't have proper and full industrialization. Like holy shit, man. All right, maybe he didn't have us in the first half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this video has been so bad that the slightest hint of like quality, and like paying attention to what's actually there and describing things accurately, it it made me think. Oh wait, maybe maybe it isn't all bad. Yep. No, he's not crapping on New Vegas. He just doesn't. He doesn't understand what the Legion are or what they're doing. Yeah, he got he got the he got the very first step correct that the Legion are not evil. They are not the evil faction. But yeah, I just don't man, get the fucking like they are sexist, but the whole like control through sexism. What? Yeah, and slavery. It's like no, again, slavery is a useful tool, and, and sure, they they think men are superior, but it, again, they are a very heavy war society. And I hate to break it to you, ladies, but men kind of are really good at that shit. Yeah. And physical labor, men very good at that shit. Oh man, I want to bring up something so bad, but I don't know if it's too political or not uh oh post it has to do with the uh the boxer did you hear about that post it on chat or in discord uh i don't know where it is um, describe it in I'll... discord yeah just give a brief synopsis okay i'll do that give me one moment he's trapping on the ideas of the legion by just reducing it to slavery and sexism I'm not going to call it crapping on the Legion because, like, a lot of people do fuck this up. It's not an excuse. People should do their research properly. But I'm not going to assume ill intent purely because he's getting stuff about the Legion wrong. Because it, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff can be easy to miss. Yeah. Um, like, like, how many people who are already predisposed against the Legion to begin with? How many pe of those people actually have the speech with Caesar. Yeah. Right? And listen to what his I, ultimate goals are. I love that 4chan post just ripping Caesar apart for that big speech he does. Yeah, because, because again, <laughs> Caesar is not correct. Yeah. That's the beauty of it, though. He doesn't have to be. Yeah, what matters is that that's something he believes. Yeah. He genuinely thinks that's the way it will work. <laughs> Like, 
like it's refreshing that he created the legion through his own charisma but his ideas are are stupid yeah like his his ideas will not function our Ar- arcade is right Arcade's like no he's an idiot it's like he, he kind of is yeah all right there you go also i'm gonna grab a comment here quickly the legion literally mints a coin in your honor even if you're female yep they do that's part of one of the endings Mm, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that's political. I think that's okay. Maybe it's political these days. I think that's just basic logic. Yeah, I kind of. I feel she, like you can mention it. Okay, well, I was gonna say like she is a turbo feminist, like super. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, that explains it. she's delusional. Yeah. So this boxer chick, I don't, I don't remember her what her name is, but she's claiming like oh you know women are just as good fighters in mma and stuff as men are and uh you know like they could do just anything that a man can they're 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 better they're they're just as good if not better than the men and she calls out like oh yeah uh he owned the i I don't know the guy's name some champion mma fighter uh like oh yeah like he only won against this guy because of blah 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 and I could easily beat that that guy too. In fact, I think I could even beat him. And um I think I don't know if it was him or somebody that like was close to him or something ended up actually like agreeing and like got into like, you know, like they challenged each other and they actually had a a fight in the ring and she immediately got KO'd like two punches in and she's she's out cold. <laughs> and she then went to like social media and everything and claimed, Oh, well I didn't lose because I'm a woman. I lost because he cheated. He took the padding out of his gloves, which keep in mind that is an extremely like fucked up thing to say where it's like, you have no evidence whatsoever. That is legally like he could sue for that. That is blatant. Like if you, if you're, if you can't prove that you're in a lot of trouble but it's also like, holy shit, you fucking lost immediately. And your first go to thing is, oh, well, he cheated. Yep. Like, oh, my God. Is and rely on the guidance of one man, Kaiser. While he can be viewed as a villain for operating in this way, he backs his reason with a surprising amount of intelligence. He is in- he, Okay, he's intelligent, but he hasn't thought things all the way through. He, he's too arrogant for that. He, he's fallen into the trap of, I'm smart, therefore I'm right. Yeah. Which, which to be fair, is, is a very easy trap to fall into. I don't blame him for falling into it. People do it all the time. But it's one of those things where the, the true test of your intelligence is to recognize uh, that you might be wrong mm-hmm. and to be able to look back at that and assess what you've done. Like, assess what you feel, what you believe, what you think. That's the true test of intelligence. Like, Caesar's a smart man. The problem is that he's so arrogant and full of himself, he doesn't see the, the natural fucking flaws in the system. <laughs> uh, I just saw the voices will not stop comment about the I forgot about the football team that was hilarious retired Ben beat an entire female football team 80 to 3 yes <laughs> yeah that was the, the fucking weirdos like oh you know women are so much superior in sports and everything and then they went up against the, it was even funnier because before they went up against the retired men that are like old and out of shape now. They haven't been playing for years, and they got their asses kicked. They they also went up against a a middle school or whatever the equivalent is over in Britain, right? I, I don't remember the proper one, but they went up against a a, a kids a, a male kids uh, footballer team, and the kids whooped their fucking ass as well. <laughs> because I'm sorry, men just have that advantage. 
Yeah, they don't have an advantage in everything, but you're you're specifically going into the areas where they do have a very heavy advantage. It's like it'd be like if a man's like, I can give birth better than a woman can. It's like, hmm, I I think you're gonna lose this one, champ. I'm sorry. <laughs> from an outfit. He's a man that knows how the NCR operates and sees through the cracks of it. Through many real philosophical readings, he's learned what humanity needs in the world. A full reset where guns and technology are removed from society. Uh, again, his an arbitrary technology limit, right? That That's the main issue. This is part of why uh, Kaiser's philosophy doesn't work. Because it's completely arbitrary and at whim. What level of technology? Are you going to strip all your clothes off and just go butt ass naked? Are you not going to live underneath a house anymore? You're just going to live, find random caves to squat in and everything. Like all, all of that is technology, all of it. Are you going to? Are you? Oh, I see you using that hoe to dig in the dirt to plant your crops. That's fucking technology. Cut that shit out. Use your fingers. Also, the whole like all of the you know they they don't use guns, but they do use guns. They n like not just the assassins. The assassins have the really good guns, yeah. But the regular foot troops have like lever oh, actions and guns. yeah, and they have the shotguns and the fucking ten millimeter pistols and all that stuff. But I, again, it's just it's just more things of where he's thought of. The basics of it. Oh, modern technology led to this. Okay, all right, so Caesar, now with that, what level of technology are you going to work with? What level of technology are you going to get back to? Modern technology became the way it was was because we had genuine benefits for it. Like, yeah. Again, the automobile was made because there was a huge benefit to it. Like an enormous one. Yeah. And they ask you to get parts for the howitzer that they have so that you can fix it. And they use it. Yep. <sighs> We're almost through. Now I could spend the next hour and a half recording the script. More talking. Yay. way events the likes of another great war from happening. If we look at the Yes Man ending, we see New Vegas, a city that the NCR and Legion have desperately wanted control over, become independent from either party. While it's nice to live without any outside party governing the city, it won't be sustainable for long as the forces they'll use to protect it, the Securitons, are limited. The same can be said for Mr. House's ending. No, 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 no. There's, there's other major problems with that. It's not, not just the Securitrons. Okay, it's like where are your resources gonna come from? You, you're and like who keeps order? Who gets decided? You, you at the very tip top. Like okay, but that's only gonna last so long. Like what happens if you get killed? Who's in charge then? Mm -hmm. Like it, again, the anarchy ending or the yes man ending is very not good. Very not good ending. No, it's not evil or anything like that, but it's one of those endings that's like, it is destined to fail. Yeah. And this is part of the reason Noi House is better, is because he's actually protected in his, like, bunker. Um, realistically, one stray bullet for independent New Vegas, uh, and you're dead. And there goes all control of the city. Yep. Yeah. Or one really lucky shot, you know what I mean. Or even just an accident. You you took a wrong step on the stairs and fell and broke your neck. Oh no, now now the city's fucked. Yeah. Or you you had some food that wasn't prepared exactly correctly and you swallow a bone and it gets lodged in your throat and you choke to death. Like again, it's just the this is the the big problem with systems where there is only a singular failure point. Shit like this goes topsy turvy like crazy. It's the it's the problem with um, monarchies because monarchies are infamous for having a singular failure point. 
Now, a, a monarchy, or basically what this is, the, the Chaos Band ending is a pseudo-monarchy, you can get a lot of shit fucking done, be, and really quickly, because you don't have all the bureaucracy and red tape to go through. So that that's a benefit, that's a plus. But then, if you're a bad leader, if you're a bad monarch, like, life is going to get, get shit really fast, and if something happens to you, well, your entire governance was a singular failure point, you, and now you've died. Uh-oh. Time for chaos to begin. Mm -hmm. The thing most monarchies have going for them is heirs to take over, though. But, like, even here in yep. New Vegas, you don't have an heir. Yep. Yeah. And that's even if... Because you, you might have heir, and Even in, in normal monarchies, you might have heirs. But what if the duke is just that much more powerful? And he just says, ah, nah, fuck it, kill the kid. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking or even, uh, what if we wipe out the entire royal family? Yeah. Which is something that's happened before. The, um... I'm not a big history guy. I believe it's the Russian royal family that was completely wiped out in the early 1900s. And, uh, yep. the French royal family was completely wiped out with, uh... Uh... The French Revolution. The French Revolution, yes. Yeah. And, yeah, it was Tsar Nicholas, uh... He and his family, they don't know who ordered it or why it was done, but they, the communists executed the entire Tsar family, like, brutally. They already had them captured in prisoner, but I guess they saw them as being able to lead the whites to victory, because they, at, while alive, they acted as, like, a symbol, a rallying symbol, so they were they were horribly put down. Yep, even all the kids and everything, too. Communists being evil say it ain't so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> ...is rather morally bankrupt, as he would have no care for the citizens that live inside the city. Whoa, 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 whoa. morally bankrupt? The house ending? The one that wants to improve everything for everyone? Uh, I don't know. I, I can somewhat... I did watch a really good video on this. Uh, I, I was actually trying to find it just now. Um, yeah, there's actually a really good video going over, like, why House is... While one of the better options is still possibly not as good as the NCR, but, again, it's kind of... It's close. It's close, where it's like... Eh, you could do this with the NCR. It's like, eh, you could change their leadership. And if you were able to do that, would fix most of the NCR. And then you have the problem with Mr. House where it's like he says a lot of things. But then if you look a little deeper, it's like, ah, oh, but that's clearly not true. Because you, like you say, you're not biased or you're not prone to emotion. And then you lose your shit multiple times. So he's not exactly altogether truthful or... Uh, moral. There's a lot of things where he's like, "Oh yeah, just fucking kill them all." It's like, yeah, but but, but but no morals whatsoever. No, 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 no. Well, I, I disagree with that. Made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that I disagree with. But he is definitely like uh, pretty much a dictator. Yeah, but at least his one is one that has actual movement based off of merit, and you know, it, it's one of those like. We we're in the apocalypse. It's no longer our normal world, right? So the same standards need not apply. But the fact that he will let people have movement and flexibility and social standing based off of the merits of their work and everything, I am super okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, like I said, he's not terrible. Like he is definitely like a big rival to NCR as like the best faction. It's just kind of comes down to like, well, do you agree with this or do you agree with this more? And that that's about it. It's very close. Yeah. And again, I don't think the NCR are horrible. I think they're not a terrible choice either. It's just they have so many flaws and problems right now. Logistics yeah. being one of the main ones. Yeah, like, their leadership is fucking horrible. Yep. 
long as the forces they'll use to protect it, the Securitons, are limited. The same can be said for Mr. House's ending. But his ending is rather morally bankrupt as he would have no care for the citizens that live inside the city. Which is wrong. We know he does care. Again, he may only see them as customers, but he wants them to continue thriving and surviving because if they thrive, the rising tide raises all ships. That's, his, that's what he believes. That's why he doesn't want you to destroy the NCR, or even really the Legion. Like, he, he wants the NCR because he knows the NCR are going to be easy customers. But his ultimate goal is that the Legion will be customers as well. Like, he, he, wants, he wants as many things, as many customers as he can get. The one he's really stickler for is, though, taking out the uh, Brotherhood. Which is just like, oh man, I wish, I wish we didn't have to take out the Brotherhood. Especially if you do the path that lets the Brotherhood actually finally start to get out of... They actually start to change their philosophy, their ideology, to, to be like, hey, the old ways don't work anymore. We failed. We failed the test of time. We need to change. Well, if if you keep the elder in charge, then yeah, it, it, it's so much better. The Brotherhood is genuinely much better. I was muted. Lovely. Oh, um, I read out Chuckles Honeysuck comment. I don't get the heck Gunderson part, but uh, House's vision outlines restarting the technology sector. This means that House needs to provide gainful employment. Yeah, he might not care about the individual person, but he cares about humanity's continued existence and traveling to the stars. So, in order to reach that goal, he does have to make things at least decent in in the city for people to live and like work and survive he's not going to make it so like people are suffering intentionally yeah this isn't i have no mouth and i must scream mhm mm mhm mm also the heck gunderson is as much of a house issue as it is the ncr because if House wants to keep the flow of, like, you know, meat to the strip, then he has to let Heck do whatever he wants. And because he has money and power, he lets him. So it's not just the NCR in that regard. It's also House as well, because he directly benefits from Heck's business. So he lets him get away with stuff. he's more hell-bent on himself. As you can see, there's no clear-cut good ending in this game. No faction is entirely good. A comment on the poll said it best. Honestly, I try to choose the ending that I feel like I would choose if I was in that situation. The ending you choose is whatever you feel is best for the wasteland. It's these kind of decisions that are the most thought-provoking because they focus on what you morally believe. Yeah, I can agree with that for the most part. A lot of people yeah. do tend to like pick what they think is best sometimes and yeah like, yeah and that's part of why that poll from earlier is dumb because the answer there should have been good evil neutral and whatever i think is best yeah because whatever i think is best is different from good because good implies like well it implies nuking a city or disarming the bomb as opposed mm -hmm. to this is a conflict with many gray areas, and there's no true right answer. So I'm going to go with what I think... What I think is best. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at least he had... an accurate description of the NCR, and... a good point in this video. Eventually. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, well, just because at the start there, it was one of those wild ones of oh, almost. We almost got a had us in the first half. Almost. And then he then he crashed and burned, but, you know. There's still a couple minutes left. I I don't know how he's going to connect this back to uh, Fallout 3. And, like, making choices in video games about being evil or not. Yeah. You could win, but at least here you won't feel entirely horrible about it, because you believe in some of the ideologies they present. But then again, uh, Slither is, like, not cool. Obsidian. What? I. Okay, yeah, that's the most milk toast fucking thing ever. Yeah, sure, slavery is not cool, but guess what? Every single nation and every single people on this planet have engaged in it at some point. That's that's the issue, is because it's a useful tool up until a certain point, and then once you have modern mechanization and everything like that, what it what becomes the point of slavery? For there's fun. there's things to do all that stuff for you. <laughs> I don't even know if Sutch heard what I said or not. Mm. No? I did not. No, I didn't. You said, what's the point of slavery? For fun. <laughs> For fun and not so much profit, but fun. Fun's a big word. Idiom <laughs> made it obvious, though, that siding with the Legion is evil. Any okay. So, I'm going to tell you this right now. Death of the author, it fucking exists. Yeah, so, it doesn't matter also, what he says. Yeah, I also don't trust if that's exactly what was said, because a lot of people, like, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, Vincent Martin used the Tim Kaine interview thing and didn't actually listen to what Tim Kaine was actually saying. So, this is one of the, the other situations was I need to I need to hear it for myself in context. Yeah. Because mm. a legion absolutely is not evil. Highly militaristic, imperialistic, absolutely. But not evil. Yeah. I would say it would be helped a lot more if we had more context and depth with them. Like if they were given more yeah. content so we could actually see if it works or not. Otherwise, it you know, if it doesn't even work... Then it is literally just like, yeah, it's literally just enslaving people for funsies, basically. Yeah, exactly. If we actually would have gotten to see those Legion cities, and what if we go to the, what if we got those Legion cities? This is the this is the hypothetical thing that we could have seen, and those those Legion cities were a lot cleaner, were nicer, everything was running smoother, like. You see industry in all the towns and everything. Like, they're growing more crops and everything. That would be the most wild thing. You come over the hill and you see a sea of grain and food being grown up to the town. And it's like, oh my god, yeah, I'm sorry. The Legion is way better at this than the NCR. Holy shit. Like, compared to the sharecroppers versus, you know, a massive Legion... A city that has all of these fields all around it just with with waves of grain to be fair you could also then apply that to well well if we could go to california and see the ncr's like hub like maybe it looks similar but because they're so stretched thin in the mojave they can't do that sort of stuff they don't have the infrastructure yet to do the stuff that they can do in the hub I'm just talking a, a visual metaphor thing, right? Compared to the NCR we get to see in-game versus the Legion, where the, if their towns are a lot cleaner, better maintained, they have, like, proper roads and systems and everything, that would be fucking insane. Yeah. Just, just a simple thing of an actual paved road. Not old, old pavement that's, like, weathered and broken up up and everything like that, but no, a, a brand new, like, cobbled road of an old style Roman paved road. Holy shit. Yeah. Just basically have like a medieval looking like, like town or whatever. And boom, there you go. That's already a million times better than anything mm -hmm. in the wasteland. Yeah. That's what I mean. This just, just be fucking nuts. Yeah, it would definitely help if we got something like that. I really wish we did. Uh... 
time you have them, you gain bad karma, so it really cements where you'll stand morally if you side with them. And to top it all off, Megan Starks, senior narrative designer over at Obsidian Entertainment, emailed to Wired that about 97% of its players prefer to align with the good path over an evil one. Quite a Again. What are those statistics and what are you considering the good path and evil path? Because if you're considering a good path in New Vegas, I just outright don't believe you because there is no good path in New Vegas. Yeah, they all have problems. Like, what is the good path in New Vegas? Yeah, you can't claim any one of them is like the good path. That it's one of and, like the biggest conversations this, about the game is the factions. The thing that could make this even more fucked: what if the Legion is the only one that's considered the bad path, and then the three other faction choices are all the good path? That Which, already is going to throw your entire fucking data system out of whack. Yeah, because you've got three options for good and one for bad it's like yeah that just that, that fucks everything over what are you doing yep a simplistic compared to mine well no, we can talk not about even. which one in fact theirs is worse because we don't have the numbers ahead of this and we don't have the criteria you we could at least see the criteria and see the numbers so yours is actually way better than, than that fucking nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just 97% is a number I just do not believe for people picking good or bad options. Yeah. Especially I would, when we don't know anything, like how the data is collected or anything at all. I would assume like 20% evil, 80% good at like at most for that you know like that's the highest good can get that i would believe as a number outright without evidence yeah and even then that's a bit questionable i i think the number would closer or be closer to around 30 70 as opposed yeah. to 2080 and definitely not 397 because <laughs> that's just insanity like i'm sorry that's insanity and especially because she's talking to wired and wired is infamously uh leaning I'll just put it that way provides order of game experience for the player the biggest answer to the central question is obvious but still the most important playing evil just isn't fun there's nothing really explain yeah you're gonna have to prove that because i i have tons of fun playing evil characters in games when i can actually role play as them if playing evil wasn't fun, then we wouldn't have games like Grand Theft Auto existing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the existence of Grand Theft Auto destroys your point. Isn't there, like, a uh, real-time strategy game called Evil Genius, where the whole thing is that you're a fucking Austin yes. Powers James Bond villain or whatever, building your, like, Fortress of Doom? Yes, and they and it has that tongue in cheek sort of like B movie schlock spy movie, <laughs> dude. It is a lot of the original Evil Genius is janky and whack as fuck. Hundred percent agree with that. Like it is, it is not like this great polished game. It is rough as fuck. But my god, the the fact of like you, one of the criminal masterminds you you take to like i want I, you want to establish yourself as the evil genius in the underworld so you have to get all of these like underworld bosses to show up to your your base and one of them shows up with all like gumption and swagger so you have to capture him and they're like well now you've got to interrogate him and one of your advisors like i know exactly how to interrogate this guy and this 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 guy is a black man with the huge disco afro right oh no he's like i know exactly how to do it so you have to build a kitchen, right? And you take him to the kitchen and you throw him in a giant industrial dough mixer. And he just goes around and around and around going, what? Is the beater is like driving him around inside it. It is, it is so goofy. It's charming. <laughs> Isn't there a game where you literally play as like the villain with minions and stuff? That, that's what There's, we're talking about, evil genius. Well, he, oh, is it? No, I meant like a like a dark lord at like oh, fantasy overlord. sort of. Oh, sorry, yeah, overlord. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch that. of games like that where you just, like, literally... Uh, tyranny, people are saying in chat. 
Yeah, that tyranny. One, that one's you're not really the thing till the very end. Once you like, either fully submit to Kairos or not, and break off something like that. Like that has one of the best, uh, one of the best like <laughs> getting uh, a villain to admit you're innocent. Well, he he's completely flabbergasted. Like, like I have no choice but to declare you innocent. I, I can't. And he, like, breaks him, and he's like, all right, I, I join your side. I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will fight against my actual god, Kairos. I will, I will fight beside you. Uh, being evil just isn't fun. Me making Organ Harvester Colony in Rimworld. <laughs> <laughs> Destroy all humans, that's another good example. Yeah. Yep. I think we've done a pretty good job of proving how fucking stupid that sentence is. Yeah. yeah. It comes to the sociopathic nature of an evil playthrough. When we play an RP- I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Playing evil just isn't fun. There's nothing really attractive when it comes to the sociopathic nature of an evil playthrough. When we- Um, catharsis. Like, sometimes being the bad guy, it's just a great release of, like, hey, all those things you, you've wanted to do to, like, say to your boss and things like that. Oh, play that out. Like, fuck you, you lazy piece of shit. You always give us a bunch of fucking work. You don't do shit. And then you just shoot him, right? In the video game, obviously. But I'm talking about stuff like, stuff like Postal. Postal's a great example. The Postal series in general is a great example. Postal 2 and Postal 4. Being evil isn't fun. Have you tried bullying Creed Tosis in chat? Wow. Please do not. <laughs> There's nothing attractive about the sociopathic nature, nature or whatever. And it's like, yeah, try telling that to like 80% of the women on planet Earth who always choose the sociopath guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix it. No, you can't. Yeah. Oh. I just think it's weird, too, describing an evil playthrough as sociopathic. Like... Maybe if he's describing, like, the character. But it, it yeah. the way he words it, it sounds like it's actually sociopathic to play the path, you know? Yeah. Which Again, he needs, he needs to play the Postal series. You can play the Postal series and be a goody two-shoes. Entirely, <laughs> entirely be a goody two-shoes. Good luck! <laughs> hey, it's rough! We play, we play with the intent of putting ourselves into the game's world. We want to make decisions that we would make instead of what the game wants us to make. Arguable. Very, very arguable. Again, for some people, sure, they, they can't separate themselves, right? And they can't actually immerse themselves properly in the world. Other people can and be like, okay, this is what my character knows. This is what they would do at this time. Yeah. And um, it, it is it is hard. I'm not even saying like it's super, like common, but there is a big difference to that of like okay, I need to take out the morals and things I have of today, and think about what would the morals and everything be back then instead. Or because I, as the assumption being, it's a medieval RPG, you know, it's a fantasy mm -hmm. RPG, right? What would be the morals of that time? Well, not just that. You also have to consider, like, sure, some people make the decisions they would. Some people would make the decisions, like you said, like, if they were in universe, which there is there is a difference to that. Um, there's some people who will do a strictly good or evil run. And there's some people who just pick whatever options that they think are interesting. Yep. So, like... It just seems weird limiting it to me, you know? Yeah. Freedom that players love most that they play for. I like to think all of us gamers... Well, again, there's a difference between freedom, which is what the developers will say, and actual player agency and freedom. Like... Yeah, because some it... developers, like Bethesda, are like, 
here's a big open world. You have freedom. Meanwhile, main story is like super linear. There's barely any choices, and what choices there are don't really mean much. Um, yeah. Sometimes you can't we need... actually make choices, which is annoying as. Yeah, and you don't have the freedom to like fully engage with quests. What few options they give you, like the uh, Ten Penny Tower quest, for example, where hey, one of the ghouls is good. Can you spare her? I mean, if you don't complete the quest, you can. But there's no option to just talk to her and be like, hey, your friends were fucking assholes who are planning on killing everyone. Like, I'm sorry I had to kill them. Well, no, I'm not. But I'm sorry that you're upset that they're dead. And I'm yeah. going to spare you because you're not actually evil like they were. Or alternatively, like get Roy and his friends in there, then kill Roy so he can't kill all the um, innocent humans. But no, you can't do that. It's the three options Bethesda had, and you're locked into those three. Yep. That's not so much freedom as it is multiple choice. Yeah. The illusion of choice. Yeah. And, again, weirdly... Um... If you, if you haven't watched it, the Half-Life uh, 25th anniversary documentary is just legendary. That documentary is so fucking good. Um, but the way Gabe Newell explained what player agency actually was, and it's that the game respects what you do. I even put it like in Half-Life, Half-Life 1 needed player agency. So this is something like revolutionary that didn't happen in, in games before. So as Gabe put it, if I decide to aim my gun at a wall and shoot that wall, I better see decal I better see bullet impacts and hit sounds and things. Because then that's showing that the game is respecting my choice to shoot the wall. And it, games before that really didn't do that because, you know, they they just weren't that advanced. They didn't have that capability to do decals and everything on walls and stuff. There's just a lot of little things. And it's like, it's a great concept of what player agency actually is. The game respects your choices and actually gives you feedback for the choices you have made. Even if that choice is as simple as, I fire my gun at the wall. God, one thing I want to point out about the fucking Roy and his gang thing... <laughs> how stupid it is that when you visit the uh the tower again after you've let roy stay there for a bit and all the people have died because you know he killed them all neither the girl or the the other one notice yeah like they have nothing to comment on that the fucking tower is completely empty besides them now and it's like Okay, you would have had to have at least been living there for one day with all these people. Don't you find it a little odd that they're just all gone? Every single one of them are just not there anymore the next day? Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, how are you not mentioning this? How are you not being like, oh, it's strange that everyone's just missing? Like, <laughs> they don't even mention it. They act like it's completely normal that they're that everyone's just gone. They talk about it, Pagan? I don't remember that. I don't remember them ever talking about it. I, I remember that being something I found really odd back in the day, even back when I liked Fallout 3. Yeah, I'd have to look it up to make sure. Yeah, Anyways, I'd have to check again. We're almost we're right done here. And... Yeah. yeah. Where's our people in real life? So when we're presented with a good or evil option... Oh! oh amazing you would show this game in particular. One of the most infamously bad, like, illusion of choice simulators out there. Yeah. Holy shit. The good one. Because we all want to be the good guys. Incorrect. Also, again, you just said typically pick the good one. So, I mean, not everybody does. So why why follow up that statement with we all want to be the good guys? 
There's a lot of people that don't want to be the good guys out there for any myriad number of reasons. Again, this just feels like someone assuming because he feels this way, everyone does. Yeah. Paths are statistically rarely picked. Again, you haven't... It's not rare at all. But it's it's not a majority. I will agree with you. The majority don't pick the evil paths. But it's not an insane rarity of 97% to 3%. That's fucking bullshit. Stow me the fucking data on that. I don't believe you. Yeah. Devs are actually okay with that. Stark stated in the email, we could say, well then, why bother making a less morally good path at all? That's a lot of time and resources to develop a choice that most players won't ever experience. But having the choice itself is what's important. It's funny that this is a statement right here, right? Because Bethesda doesn't believe this way. That's why they have to make it to where you can experience all the content regardless, right? Yeah. Or damn near all of it, because you can't do a Great Cloaks playthrough if you're already doing an Imperial playthrough, right? Yeah. But um, it's funny that this gets said. Uh, when the developers, 99% of developers, I would say, are much more like, uh, if, it's not, if a player isn't going to see it, throw it out. Which is what makes Larian one of the rare exceptions with, like, it doesn't matter if only 0.1% of our player base sees that thing, that the players that see that one thing need to feel like it is the same quality of everything else because it shows that we respected their decision and what brought them there. God, what a stark fucking contrast to Bethesda. Yeah. These wouldn't be what they are if these evil choices didn't exist. If a game only consisted of good choices, the game would feel linear when that's not what RPG... I fucking hate that they're showing Mass Effect 3. Showed a brief snippet of Baldur's Gate 3 and then shows Mass Effect 3 and just like... It's also God. just insane to me that after all that fucking puffing up of Fallout 3, he goes on to New Vegas. And I don't even know how New Vegas factors into this because he was talking about how none of the factions are outright good and he didn't... kind of didn't really go anywhere with it for the rest of the subject like, related to the video. Yep. Now here we are, it's like, oh yeah, but the bad, it's good that the bad choices exist because it's important that the choice itself exists. <laughs> it's like... What? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? No. Uh, Psychomatic uh, says... Years ago, I didn't understand why Razor Fist hated video game essays on YouTube. This channel has made it painfully clear why he hates them so much. Thanks, Kratosis. Yeah. Yeah, shit yeah. like this. Like, it wouldn't be a problem, again, if people were honest and sincere. And, like, just weren't fucking accurate about the things they're talking about. That's not what we're getting. Okay, hold on. So... Polio head, do okay. So that's after you've gone into the basement and found the corpses. You can, you know, point it out. Like you can uh, address it to them. That's fine. But what about before that? If you walk in, see that everyone's gone, and then talk to one of them, they have nothing to say about it. The fact that there's no one there. That's what I'm getting at. That's part of the problem. The fact that. I feel like that is something they would immediately address. The fact that you walk in and there's no one there but them and you go to talk to them. I feel like that would just be something that they would comment on. I don't think you should have to go to the fucking basement, find all the corpses and then be like, oh, so you approve of mass murder? And then they just like write it off as, oh, well, they must have done something to deserve it. Like, that's dumb. I get that. Yeah, you can tell her. That's not what That's not what I was saying, though. That's not the issue I had. The issue I had was that you can walk in, walk right up to them, and they have nothing to say about it until you find the corpses. They're, Before you find they're, the bodies? They're... That's even worse. How would you know if the, that everyone's dead, then? 
Hold on. I, you, I don't know if you have the same messages up I do, because there is one here from him quoting her. I don't know where they are, but everything is fine. Roy said not to worry about the other residents. That's the one from before you find the bodies. I must have missed that one because I don't see it. Are you on top chat? No, I'm on live chat. Well, I, I see the I see the polio head one as well. I see the one about the basement. I don't see the one about. Uh... It's literally on screen on uh, the stream. Yeah, if you go from. Shepherd's uh, perfect chin to lip and go straight across. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Uh, weird, that doesn't show up on my chat for some reason, even though I have it on live chat. That's odd. Good job, YouTube. Good yeah, fucking thanks, job. Yeah, thanks, YouTube. Yeah, because all I saw was that, and I thought he was arguing from that one comment of like oh well you have to tell her about the bodies and that's it okay well at least they fucking wrote that in then i swear i remember them not ever fucking addressing that but i feel like I that's know. a bad way to address it too yeah that but is a whole not a great issue. way yeah that is a whole different issue so eh, i'll give that to them at least there but uh yeah It gives the game more playability and a greater sense of freedom. While most of us only enjoy the good paths, without the risk of wrong and morally gray areas, there's no sense of conflict. What? No, again, you, you don't need the you don't need an evil path to have conflict. An interesting conflict as well. Like it's not a requirement for conflict. That you don't need an an opposing force in that. You just have slightly divergent ideas, and that leads to conflict. Yeah. Like if if I decide, hey, where do we want to go eat tonight? Oh well, I feel like McDonald's. Oh, I don't want McDonald's. I want Wendy's. Oh, I don't want Wendy's. Let's go Subway. You know, again, that is conflict. You're 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 how. It's not like an evil life or death thing, but that is conflict. That can lead to drama and fighting. And it, <laughs> sometimes it does here. <laughs> yeah. Look at basically any show with like slice of life episodes, and there you go. Yeah. How is he always wrong? I don't know if he was always wrong. No, he, he got the, the, the first statement about uh, New <laughs> Vegas, right? That all the facts <laughs> have good and bad. He got one thing in this video, right? There's, there's, <laughs> not always, at least. There's there's someone in chat named Alex Jones with an Alex Jones profile picture. NCR are liberals and eat babies. <laughs> <laughs> I am never wrong. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's batting pretty close to a perfect game. <laughs> yeah. And when it's that, it lacks a purpose for the gamer to play it. Hold on, what? That's without the risk of wrong and morally gray areas, there's no sense of conflict. And when a game lacks that, it lacks a purpose for the gamer to play it. What? Uh, no, there's What's plenty the of games that don't. What's the conflict of Pong? What's yeah, the there's conflict plenty of, of games that <laughs> don't have an evil, like, opposing force to deal with or, like, morality. There's plenty of games where they're just simple, like, storylines that don't have any of that stuff that are still really good. And people play them all the time. What are you talking Minecraft about? Getting BTFO, according to this guy. <laughs> also, the clip, the clip that someone sent me and I just posted it in Discord for you guys. Oh, yeah, I, I shared that uh, with Cree <laughs> the other day. Choices are never meant to be easy. If they're easy to you, you probably need to evaluate yourself. No, 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 no. It should be the opposite. The evil choice should be the easier one. 
like to get you the gratification faster, get you the reward quicker, get you a bigger reward. It should be the easier option. The harder I... option should be the good choice. To resist taking the easy path, to resist the temptation. Yeah, that's what it's... makes the good path so much more meaningful and is that you're actually having to struggle and put effort behind it rather than just indulging yourself yeah. on like the first whim to get what you want. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of the whole thing that um, Star Wars is about before it went to totally to shit, where it's like, uh, evil is the path to, the dark side is the path to great power very easily, but, you know, the Jedi is the path to something. Yeah, yeah. able to disconnect your real life morals without an issue. If it's hard to make evil choices in a game, I don't believe that is an issue. If you make one and you feel absolutely horrible about it after, that's good. Because it means that the game did its job in providing you the freedom to do whatever you want. God, this is literally what Mahler talked about. The, the the bullshit sandwich. You start off with something meaningful and fluffy, then you end with something meaningful and fluffy, and people forget everything that you've said in between. Yeah. Oh. Terrible. I sentence you to Bailiff Wacka his pee pee. God, what a shit fucking video. That That was painful to get through. Yeah, that was really bad. That was one of the worst we've covered. I know we say that a lot, but there's a lot of really bad things we've covered. Yeah. He didn't have us in the first half. He was genuine about all... Well, I shouldn't say genuine. He was That was seriously him the entire time. Yeah, bullshitting. Yep. When I get around the cover of this video, it'll probably be exclusively the Fallout 3 stuff. Yeah. God, it's hard to believe we're only four months away from the Halo TV show. I am not or, watching uh, the Fallout, Fallout TV show, but okay. that's what I meant to say. But the, the Halo one actually comes out before that. It's even closer. No. <laughs> I'm, not watching, I'm not watching the Halo TV show. Yeah, no, I'm not either. <laughs> yeah. I don't really think it's worth covering. I think we've pretty well... I think it's been beaten into the ground enough where people know it's shit. Yeah. Um... But yeah, the Fallout TV show is only four months away, and oh mm. my god, I can't believe it's that close. Especially for us, because like, I don't know, at least for me, months go by so fast these days. It, it's going to be on us in no time, and I'm, I'm dreading it. Yeah. Well... That's the stream for today. Pagan shill. I told you about this. I don't have anything to shill. I will let you know what I do. Okay, Pagan I forgot, okay? I don't have a good memory. Uh, Re? Pagan shill. <laughs> she fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, I have a YouTube channel. I am working on things that I may eventually do a video on. Uh, the model is in the works. Once I get that, I will start doing gaming streams again as well. Uh, there you go. Yeah, then we can collab as VTubers. Yeah. yeah. Such. Yes, Greek houses? Hello. Hey. <laughs> Halo Reach video win. Uh, it is the script is getting worked on off and on, but I'm not promising anything. Um, just because, yeah, I, I just don't I just don't want to do that. Uh, good news is is uh, we are now 
uh, like I said in the start of the stream, we are officially monetized on my channel on YouTube. So, hey, if you if you want to support the streams, go to any of the platforms. I stream on four platforms at once. We have Twitch, YouTube, Kick, and Rumble all, all together. I would prefer people to use Rumble, but if you don't want to use Rumble for whatever reason, you're more comfortable going through Twitch, absolutely go through Twitch and do that as well. Um, yeah, uh, we're just going to be playing lots of games. Tomorrow I'm going to be playing some more uh, Warhammer Online because I enjoy the shit out of it. I like doing it, and it gives me a chance to talk with everybody in chat and have some uh, some fun uh, some fun conversations and good times. And we're a lot more open on my channel. Again, I I was not knocking Cree at all. If Cree doesn't want certain things on it, and that's entirely his choice. My channel, if we want to talk politics, we'll talk politics. So if that's what you want, bring it up in the chat. Otherwise, it probably won't get mentioned unless something egregious happens. But yeah. On Twitch is such topless with artistic nudity. Oh god, that is the funniest thing. Twitch immediately like, hmm, we're gonna allow tasteful degeneracy on our platform, and then that blew up in their face like immediately. And two days later, like, oh, we take it back. We made a mistake. Oh wow, you you allow for degenerates to take an inch, and they took a mile. Who could have seen that coming? Tasteful degeneracy is like nonviolent murder. Yeah. The act was... of murder itself is violence, even if you do, like, even if you're putting poison in someone's <laughs> tea, it's an Dude. act of intentional harm. Pippa did a stream about this uh, yesterday. I was talking about how Twitch, like, literally, Pippa was like, "I just wanted to do the stream so I could laugh my ass off at Twitch and how stupid they are." <laughs> it's 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 true. They are incredibly dumb. Two dollars from Gat Row. Thank you. I'd like to see you review Infamous Second Son. Probably not going to happen. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Two dollars from Waylay108. Thank you. By the way, Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get a uh, stag in before Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Hopefully you have uh, good times and good vibes with all your family. Um, as for me, I am working on three videos right now. I hope to have the Doctor Who video done soon. I don't know when. I'm working on the ML uh, writing breakdown video, which is looking to be about an hour long. Um, I want to get those two videos done before the end of the month. I'm pretty sure I can do that. The biggest, like, time sink will be the Doctor Who video, and I'm considering pushing that to after the ML video. Um, just because it'll be longer to, like, break up clips so I, it, they don't get hit by copyright. Um, after that, I'll be working on the Starfield review again, which I entirely need to re-record, which is lovely. Um, the Starfield review is taking a lot longer to come out than I wanted, but yeah, you know, but yeah, uh, I, I do hope to have the Doctor Who video and the ML video done before the end of the month. And that's, that's all I've got for now. I'm working on other stuff in the background. I'm doing VTuber streams as usual. Um, aside from those three videos, I'm slowly poking away at the Starfield analysis, which is obviously different from the review and uh the fallout 4 analysis the final two parts have started um well i've started scripting part five but there's a dlc there'll be another dlc uh, research stream at some point might not be this month yeah thank you for coming out everyone it's very much appreciated um and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Take care, everybody. And once again, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah.